PKA 582 with our guest didn't show. Taylor? This episode of PKA brought to you by Lock and Load and Blue Chew, two of the finest dick pills on the market. I would go so far as to say the two top dick pills on the market. Combine them and see how far you can you can uh, go in this great world. So no guests tonight, uh, unfortunately, but that's okay. We can, we can always talk about dumber shit when there's no guest because there's yep. never a time where it's like, Oh, also tell me about that journalism you do before we go back to talking about like retarded cowboys or something. It's yeah, true. Which is it's nice. true. We can get really stupid. We don't it have is. to pretend we like things. Speaking of really stupid things, Taylor, I was taking a shit this morning <laughs> and uh, I got my phone out as I do and I, I flipped from left to right, which brings up some sort of Android news or something like that. And yeah. it, it showed me it showed me six images from Amazon's Lord of the Rings long awaited tv show and and as i was scrolling through them i noticed a few things can, it was can I interrupt you? yeah hey zach can you find these images for the viewers while kyle talks oh wondrous and uh as i flipped through them here's what i took from it um i the dwarf looked really good the dwarf the red-headed they, like gnarled nose dwarf yes that yeah. was perfect i was like aha they'll make that gimli's aunt uncle cousin or nephew or something cool I'm fine mm -hmm. with that. I can stomach it. And then the next one, um, there was a big fat black elf. Um, I hadn't seen one of those before, but but now there's a big flat fat black elf. Um, I remember that photo? It's it, yeah, having a big fat black woman in your in your show is very hot right now. All my favorite shows have them. If you guys want to check out um, Peacemaker over on uh, on uh, HBO. Great yeah. big fat black woman in that show too. I my favorite shows have them too. If you want to check out the Ghostbusters reboot, oh, <laughs> it's skip the better than the original. <laughs> I think. Oh, there's oh, there's, oh, there's well, big fat black elf. No, that that's not an elf. Look at the runes. Look, she's underground. That's a dwarf. Oh, that's right. That's that's what they're except that's there that's is the no beard, beard on that dwarf, which is not canon. That's the mm. first. Let, let, that's the first black dwarf we've ever seen, and it's the only lady dwarf without a beard we've ever seen. And look how fat her hands are. Healthy at any size, my ass. Look at her fingers. <laughs> look, at those, look at those sausage fingers. That that dwarf over there to the left thinks they are sausages, and he's hungry. And then we've got. <laughs> I think that's the exact same guy from The Witcher over there. That. Uh, that is like the, the the warlock or whatever, right? Now the, like, the elves, the they it, it looks like the, the same character. They switch to the ears up in a stupid generic way. Those aren't what the ears looked like in How are they the different? Rings movies. They're they're, 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 they're longer, more exaggerated. And uh, Zach, can you scroll up to those pictures again, real quick? Uh, see, can, uh, Taylor just doesn't know Lord of the Rings very well. He's a Vulcan. Oh, he's a Vulcan. He, he looks a lot like a Vulcan. <laughs> and then, like, now, Wolf, uh, if you told me that was Tuvok's like great great grand ancestor, I'd be down to watch that show because that makes sense. Black Vulcans make sense to me. Yeah, black elves don't. I just want to make that clear. The issue <laughs> isn't that the fantasy character is black; it's that there aren't any black elves and there are black Vulcans. Yeah, there are no Vulcans or elves. Just to Wait, be there clear are, as well. They are all made Vulcans, up. True, or are there? <laughs> there could be they could all be based on something if but you caught a fucking uh, all right sorry yeah yeah no no, no. so these so photos why these, these pictures well it's not these ones in the in the lineup there's other there's ones more. we'll go through there's, there's a more. lot more show me the so, frat boy with the short hair yeah keep going down because and like if you if you all right if you look at Lord of the Rings, like you rewatch the old Lord of the Rings, it's very gritty. It's very dirty. You know, people's outfits, it's not perfect hems. It's like exactly the kind of looking shit you would expect from a fantasy world based on medieval Europe. You're not getting like perfect hems and, and tight, you know, magnificent outfits unless you're the elves or something. Like, but the men... Mm -hmm. Like that are living in the woods or the dwarves and going through the mines. Like it's gritty, it's earthy, it's real. There's a passion for it. And all of these pictures are so sterile and so generic fantasy and so uh, overproduced. It's going to be all green screen. Like another, I saw someone talking online today complaining about it, being like, a reason that Lord of the Rings, the initial series, was so fucking good I is, is right. there were there were so many people who were passionate about it. Okay, okay. Like millions, or not, well, millions of people, but the the actors themselves were passionate about it. Viggo Mortensen convinced them all to sleep in tents so they would feel closer to like 
their environment. Like they're they're rugged. They're fucking feeling shitty. He 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 carried his sword around the whole time. Christopher Lee, who played Saruman, read the book Lord of the Rings every year for like sixty years. And Peter Jackson would sit there and have ten hour conversations about it before filming started. Like, and what do you think about this? And Christopher would be like, Well, I I knew you know him and I knew what he wanted, and that's not what it would be. It would be like this. Oh, that's great. That's great. And so it was just a, it's a huge passion project. And that lady it was there, great. And like, this just, this feels generic. It feels clean. First of, all, first of all, I just want to say like, this picture looks awesome. Like, first of all, she's beautiful. Her character looks amazing. Like, like her, the armor looks great. The sword looks great. Everything about this looks cool. I just don't think it looks like. Lord it doesn't look like Lord of the Rings. It looks like the Witcher or any other generic fantasy show. Yeah. Like, like, like I think this, I, I want this chick to be uh like, like uh, in the Witcher. Like she looks awesome because she should be in some tattered clothing armor. Like well, this is hard maybe, to come uh, by. Not, not, look, look, I, I got no problem with that. I don't know. Who I'm not. This character is. She's probably like, the fucking queen of Gondor oh. or some nonsense. <laughs> She's got, I don't know. I see that like thing on the center of her chest. That, that reminds me of that, uh, Evan star thing that, uh, or something. I, I don't know what that is. Taylor, like, is like, that I'm, I'm not saying that chest mean anything to you. I, I don't think that everybody should be dirty either. Like, 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 like they, they, they wash up every now and then. I think you know what I mean. Dirty. I like her armor is fucking sick though. Look at the elbows. Yeah, and I mean that does look pretty close to the Gondorian armor. Some of the designs do. So I well, it's a different this, time of, of the like, of it, the it photos. So this is not actually the gallery I saw. I, th I saw those three on top. I'm trying to find the one hey, I Zach, saw because I find out who this photos. actress is and find out if they're in nudes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm changing my mind completely. I'm, I'm doing a full back backspin on this thing. She's really hot. Is she that hot? Backspin. Yeah, I thought I think so. She's, I, I find her attractive. She looks nice. I like. Woody, her. under the armor, she's got a lot of hair. Oh yeah. Yeah, very hairy girl. <laughs> I, yeah. I stay fuzzy, corrected. fuzzy. You would say. I just find her regular Hollywood pretty, like, like all the others. Damn, I yeah. wish I could find the other photos from the show that were like, even more witchery and, just. I don't know. It, you can tell it's going to be so fucking expensive, and I doubt it's going to feel real the way Lord of the Rings did. And I, that's definitely some prior bias talking, but also like it's going to be green screen shit. It's going to well, be an Amazon show that's pumped out. It's going to lose money. It's not going to be popular. Uh, I I'm just annoyed by the, the 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 black dwarf queen with no beard. If I'm being honest, but I'm going to watch the show. And dwarf I it's good. Females are supposed to have beards. That's that's a thing. Why couldn't they do that? Million billion really dollars can throw beards in. I really don't oh. mind. Are you sure that's her name? Oh, uh, Zach. So apparently there's no nudes of, of the, the blonde princess. Dude, I, can lady. I interrupt? Yeah. I searched for Markella Kavanoff nudes. Nothing comes up. So I'm like, all right, just Markella Kavna, whatever her name is. She's like 11 in all these pictures. Is she? How old is this girl? Who did you Google for nudes? I copied and pasted his <laughs> word there. You Googled the wrong person. You Googled the wrong person. Yes. Yeah. I, <laughs> just to be clear, there are no nudes of this girl oh. who is... How old is she? Uh, uh, this this woman is clearly of age. Well, there's no date of birth on her Wikipedia. So I, she could I'll be anything. She's that. definitely of age, though. Like She looks she like 20 to oh. 30. She's 20 to 25. Now, okay. if you bing her, she's like 11. <laughs> well, don't bang her, you fuck. Jesus. Well, you you think I'm here for her fucking Wikipedia page? I'm big bitches, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> Rookie, don't give me that look. Like, you don't know whether... If you want to see the nudes of a person, it's big. It's not Wings of Redemption, or Redemption taught us that. He did. Yeah, he was right. Actually, I think was he the one who told you guys that? That's yeah, you guys yeah. Told me and that. he was right because Bing Bing used to have the mark. It's a little out of date now. He was right. But now, in jokes aside, Google finds nudes too. I think I think Bing is less discriminating. Bing will Bing will find you some crazy shit. Yeah, Bing will, is it, Bing will index motherless or whatever. Is that's that what I want. I'm I'm, I'm switching yeah. to Bing if it's going to index the more fun sites. Like yeah, uh, I think it will. Like <clears throat> I never like World Star is like I think it's just World Star now, not even World Star Hip Hop dot com, but it like. I would only see videos from World Star like hosted on other sites. 
like it'd be like a world star fight on Twitter or some shit. And so I went yeah. to worlds like I was just wanting to watch Street Fight videos the other day randomly. And so I was like trying to find like fun sites to watch them. And World Star is one. And then I saw like some comments on a World Star video that like some guys talking about like fights and they, they're like, you got to go to chaotic. Chaotic is where it gets real. K- <laughs> <laughs> like chaotic with a K. And it's it is like I go to World Star and I'm like, okay, that one, oh, guy gets curb stomp. That's too intense. That's scary. That'll give me nightmares. Oh, a bully gets what's coming to him. That's what I like. I like that one. <laughs> and then it's like, oh, 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 I hope like he like raped your sister or something because he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> and and then like yeah. you go to you go to chaotic.com and like the featured video is like mass murder in Nepal. Like from from gunman's perspective or like oh, no. uh, uh, like stabbing in London uh, guy tries to escape, but he and his girlfriend don't make it. And it's like, those are, uh, and I'm trying to find like a bully beat down. And I realize I've come too far and there's nothing like that on this site. Every single video is gruesome, brutal killing murder or maiming or harming. Like the kind of shit that you see on world star, like the chaotic fan base would be like, what is this bitch made nonsense? Like, wow, that guy's, there's still a shape to his skull. (laughs) (laughs) It's got some rigidity. (laughs) I I don't need to change that. Do you know the TV show Euphoria? Are you guys familiar with this? I've been told um, that it's uh, children having sex, so I I haven't really watched it much. Well, you're missing out. I mean, they're almost of age. Uh, So, (laughs) yeah, Euphoria, turns out it happens in California. And if you're 17 in California, that's like child porn. So I, I guess it's that technically. I'm sure these are they're, they're adult actors. Don't get don't get it twisted, I think. But um a couple things. That, one, a lot happens. So much happens. Every episode is a season's worth of plot line in any other normal show. And even for me, who fusses when like you watch 60 minutes of a show and nothing's been advanced, it's like this is a lot. This is a lot like these guys, he pines for her. They get together. Then they break up. That is like two years of new girl. And it's 15 minutes of euphoria. It, it, it could be too much, but it, you brought my, it, you jog my memory. There was a fight scene. This dude's mad at that dude. He decides to fight him. He wins outrageously. Like it, it, it starts with hitting him with the bottle and then he grounds and pounds the guy. And then he keeps going and then he keeps going and then they break up the fight and he gets mount again and keeps going. And I'm like, it, is this permanent, irrecoverable, <laughs> irreversible damage? He's got, this isn't like any high school fight I've ever seen. He beats the dickens out of this guy. <laughs> and I, I, I don't know Euphoria, it has my attention, but somehow like the nonstop adrenaline rush of it by the beginning of season two, I'm already a little numb to all the things like at first it's like oh my god she did that she od'd she did this person got with that guy or whatever you know that that woman's not a <clears throat> wasn't always a woman you know like and, and these the, the shocks happen then after a while nothing shocking mm-hmm. uh, is it show, what, what's the what's the age this is aimed at because it, you Adults, said it's like for sure. for sure. yeah it oh. is clearly an, a, it, a, a, the adultest of shows yeah, Do you guys have trouble that. like getting in to shows with like the protagonist being like like a, a teenager or something? Like unless it's a fantasy world like Harry Potter or Frodo mm-hmm. or something and there's some magicry that immediately puts them on the same level. It's like I don't really I, I don't really empathize with this character that much. Like, oh, he's a stupid 16 year old. Yeah, I was a retarded 16 year old, too. But then I don't want to relive it. I, I... This show is hooking me a little better than most, but sometimes what happens is like the, all right, there's an apocalypse and now all the adults are dead and this (laughs) crafty band of teenagers is going to try and survive. And it's like, I have no faith it would go down like this at all. There's a, there's a show now where all the men have died. Oh, I watched a little of that. It's on Amazon. What's it called? Like, but like every show, like it's, it's called last, uh, every show like that, like there was a show called like the last man on earth, right? Yeah, that it's was like a comedy show. meeting people. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I think I think that's probably the situation with um, the show where it's all women. There's definitely going to be a couple men. I would think so. Otherwise, the population will dwindle in not long. 
there is absolutely a theme now that I'm thinking about like scrolling through Netflix series of foreign TV shows being about like only 2% of people can join the elite after their test or only one in a hundred go to the island to survive. And it's like, it's all like very gamified. And I, and I like the idea of that. Like, it's kind of fun. There was, there was a horrible, horrible show that I started on Netflix on my tablet when I was driving to uh, Mayo Clinic for my wife most recently. And like, I was watching all of it and just, just something to occupy my mind and because my i wasn't getting good enough connection in the car to play magic it's a real reason and I, it's called three percent and it's in spanish i think I and and i and it's a really it's very poorly dubbed and it doesn't mm. look like it's acted well in, in spanish either the, the facial expressions <laughs> aren't really there and it's the whole thing is like oh everybody in this little like uh mini world lives in this shitty hole it's literally a crater and they all live in this horrible hole and then it's like they got tatters and, and all a bunch of shit and when they turn 20 they go and take a test at like this really nice facility and everybody who passes which is only like three percent of them get to go live in paradise don't know where woody went i'm sure he'll be back but they get to go live in like this really nice paradise with everybody else from previous years who passed the test and it it started off like kind of neat, like, oh, I wonder what the test is going to be. And then it's like puzzles and, and like half of the tests weren't even like saw tests, like fight with a bat or figure something out. Or, you know, they were literally like, how many cubes can you make in three minutes? And then it's like intense music of watching like 20 year old people's hands fail to like do a Rubik's cube. And it is. It, it, they they can't keep a plot going. The first thing is they need to destroy all the rich. There's a terrorist group. And then they decide, no, they don't like that. They want to actually be the rich people. Because once the terrorists infiltrate the rich people, they're like eating shrimp. Like, this is fucking gangbusters. I love this. I don't, I'm don't. i not reporting back. And it is, it, it's it's one of the worst shows I've ever seen in my life. I, I got an entire season in. Over, no, I got a season and a half in. Uh, the most popular character that I liked at the end of season one, he got a better acting gig. And so he disappeared. He died in the off season. <laughs> We're like the one, the, the black guy in the wheelchair, the one character that I liked, like the next season started. And it's like, oh, that's so terrible. What happened to Rodrigo when he fought the guards off and we escaped? And it's like, he's in a wheelchair. Like we, we no, that, that doesn't even make sense in your world that he fought off the guards and died long enough for you to survive. Like, just just a terrible show. Couldn't recommend less. But it is in that pot of Netflix shows where they are just throwing shit at the wall to try and give the illusion of a content catalog when 80% of it is garbage. Some of those Japanese and Korean horror movies are good, though. Gotta give give the good credit. No, I don't like those. I, oh, I like them. They're, they're spooky. They're spookier than our horror you. movies. Is Netflix actually worse or, like, what's better? Is Amazon better? No. All those shows on Amazon are shit tier two. Mm -hmm. Try watching a random HBO show. Does, does HBO have some winners? Yes. Yes, it does. Does HBO also produce Room 108 or whatever the fuck that thing was? That was awful. Mm -hmm. That was hard. To, I watched all of those. I don't know what that is. I, I, good for you, Kyle. Good for you. <laughs> If you had endured what I did, you would still have the scars of being emotionally poorer for having sat through these things that you hope would go somewhere and never did. All right. Well, mm -hmm. I, I, I gave you both an amazing suggestion last week for something to watch. You you gave me one. I what went and watched it? every episode of Ozark. There we go. We got to talk about that. Did you watch any Peacemaker? Yes, I'm caught up. Oh, no. I haven't seen the most recent episode, the one that came out like midnight last night, or like you know. Oh well, morning. then I'm not but, caught up. I thought. Yeah, I neither of. Yeah, I'm yeah. not caught up with that one. All right, what do you think of Peacemaker? I like Peacemaker a lot. I didn't know what it was going to be, and and oh by the way, Kyle, to your credit, Kyle has told us about Peacemaker. He sells it right, and Kyle has a uh, special knack for this. And uh, for example, he's telling you about the character. You sort of want to know who he is and the nature of the show. He says he's looking at his X-ray. And he says, man, can you like increase the contrast? I look like a guy that doesn't, <laughs> that only focuses on bulk. And I spend a lot of time on my smaller muscle groups. That happens like six minutes. It, <laughs> it, it, Kyle gave no spoilers yet pulled me into the show. <laughs> um, and then and, and I, I was just watching. I was like, man, like this is the thing Kyle said. This is the thing. Kyle, I've hit all Kyle's notes and I'm only 12 minutes in this show so far. Like it really well done. Uh, Peacemaker is a blast. 
They hit genuine comedy. I'm genuinely intrigued as to where it's going. Um, I'm thinking before I talk. Uh, they unveil who the um, antagonist What's the opposite of protagonist? Antagonist? antagonist. Yeah. They unveil who the antagonist is slowly. You know, the little clues drop. And I'm sucked into, uh, you know, what this is going to be and who they are and, and what we're going to learn about this uh, the, this enemy. And, uh, um, yeah, I did that well. I didn't, I didn't spoil shit right there. <laughs> no, yeah. Nailed it. Nailed it. So, uh, so what I'm saying is I'm genuinely pulled into the core plot line. I also enjoy the silliness that sits on top of it, the, in, in the, the writing style and the character and this and that. And if you like seeing naked women, there's good sex here and there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I agree with all of that. I, uh, everyone that has reported back to me has agreed. They, they also liked it. Uh, it's, um, it's that James Gunn style of humor with an R rating. And that ter- it turns out that's pretty good, even if you don't give a fuck about the characters. <clears throat> so anybody who's like turned off by the superhero shit like you don't need to watch anything else you can just watch this because like this is a standalone thing where superheroes are less important to the plot than anything you can imagine mm-hmm. like like they're, they, they, they're like openly mocking aquaman and batman yeah there's a there's a part where like so like peacemaker is this like c-tier superhero at best, most people consider him a C tier super villain or maybe something in between. They're like, Aren't you that racist super villain? It's like, No, no, I <laughs> get... oh, he's got be- like he's con- he's always concerned about his PR. Like, like, like right. he just got out of prison, you know, uh-huh. for, for God knows what. And uh, he's so he's kind of bad, bad mouthing like the real superheroes. They'll be like, Do you have a coterie of of uh of supervillains? They're like, No, I don't have one. Batman does, <laughs> you know, he's got like the Joker and the Riddler and this guy and that guy. He's, he's like, Let me tell you about Batman, he's just a weak little punk, okay? And if he had the balls to kill some of those fucks, they wouldn't be getting out and murdering people all the time. You ever think about that? And Aquaman, let me tell you. A guy at the aquarium told me he slips him 50 bucks to come in there and fuck the fish. <laughs> he he, <laughs> yeah, he made a, a good point fucker. about Batman. He I was I was giving you time. He's like, How many people, how many people do you think that Batman has indirectly killed by not killing the Joker and not killing the Riddler or whatever? Yeah. Thousands of people are dead because he doesn't have the balls. And I'm like, Is he That's Batman? that's so true. Like yeah. Batman, Batman's a pussy. He really is a pussy. He's afraid of bats, first of all, because of what one f- one did a, fl- a low flyby at one point. Is that is that the story? <laughs> our, our, is that the lore about mocking I, my hey, favorite? I don't know girl. anything about Batman, and I'm going off. <laughs> <laughs> Batman, he's a pussy. He's a bitch. He never kills his foes. He can't one solve riddles fast enough to to bat. like. Who are his big guys? I'm not the even Joker. sure he's afraid of bats. <laughs> no, that that's true? why that that's his thing. He's like I, I name myself after what I'm afraid of. Bats. And now he they can share fear. In, in my fear. He took his own fear and he weaponized it against those who wow. use feared as their as their tactic against the weak. I'm gonna it's be- me, leukemia man. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm terrified of blood cancers. Uh, I'm, I'm like, it's Halloween, I'm gonna be chilly, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. Uh, yeah, Peacemaker's great. Um, he's got like a cool sidekick who's basically Jeffrey Dahmer. Um, he's got um, a big fat black woman friend who's really funny and great. Love her character. Um, she's even a lesbian too, so she's checking like so many boxes. It's woke as fuck. And uh, there's this character called the Judo Master, <laughs> who's, who's like this tiny little Asian man in like a green suit, and he's just like he's just like you know he is what imagine the Judo Master. Yep, you got it. He's going. Kia! and yeah. like 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 beating people up and is he a hero flips. or is he just very good very good at judo it doesn't matter if he's a hero or a villain it, it really doesn't matter what anyone is they're just uh, people um dressed sillily and uh and, and they're fighting it out to, to the death mostly i'm curious kyle because i know you you know more about batman than me barely uh <laughs> what, what is the rationale for him to not kill the Joker and because my understanding is like, he's kind of takes a, a pussy way out where he's like, I'm no better than the Joker if I kill him. And it's like, he's trying to terrorist bomb two, you know, transport boats right now. You're definitely better than him. If yeah. You kill him. 
Yeah, he just has a code of honor there, right? He's got like a, yeah. a he, that he doesn't break. And um, <clears throat> I'm not sure. It's almost like they have to keep the code of honor intact for Batman because it seems like he's so much more powerful than his foes on like a toe to toe basis. Like Batman versus the Joker toe to toe. Does the Joker, is the Joker going to catch him with that knife in the boot? Really? Like, no. And he's got no armor on. He's wearing like a fucking Goodwill suit. He's going to get his ass handed to him. The Riddler. He just kind of but, like has you, but but do but, their, coups, but their advantage is, is 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 that they're so much more devious and evil than him, because you just talked about the thing about Batman. He is he doesn't kill, and the thing about his villains is they love killing. They like killing the people that Batman loves. Yeah, you got to kill people who love killing. You know, the, the Joker kidnapped Commissioner Gordon's was it her, his niece, I think, and like raped her and then shot her in the spine and crippled her and then took pictures of her and stuff. I don't know if he raped her. Maybe I added that. Some of that happened though. Like, like, like he's got some truly evil villains. That happened in the Chris Nolan movie. Yeah, that he shot a woman in the spine and paralyzed her, and he raped her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, that movie was dark. <laughs> it's called The Dark Knight for a it's reason. It's not baby. rape if she can't feel it, Batman. <laughs> oh no. no. <laughs> You're oh. a fucking disgusting animal. I'm going to kill you. <laughs> That's what he should do. That's what he should do. But then he's going to go there and the Joker's going to throw three of those dollar store smoke bombs and then run away. They should do that storyline where um, Superman kills the Joker. Yeah, that would be a way better one. And then he can kind of, they should start a new Batman storyline because I know they all go concurrent. Like th there's a million threads and stuff. Yeah, they could do one where it's like Batman, like hardcore, like he doesn't take prisoners. If it's if it's like a corner store robbery and he's got time, he's not going to kill them. But like the hardcore <clears> guys, and then he starts running through the list. The Penguin dead, Lex Luthor. No, that's Superman. Uh, Doctor Freeze, the uh, fuck Joker, Riddler. What are other ones? The Crocodile guy. Just Octopus, run through them. Um, Clayface. Clay. Oc another classic. Two Face. Two Face. The least threatening guy ever. He's like just waiting to get septic. Penguin and then die. might be least threatening ever. <laughs> penguin? The penguin has that umbrella, and that's like it, right? Like, I've never understood. Well, uh, no, he has money, right? Isn't he not, super rich? I, he wears I, a tuxedo, I, so it checks out. Yeah, checks I mean, out. Checks out. If you but have, I think that's any, just a, yeah, okay. to look like a penguin. I think mean, that's just the penguin theme. Does, and he doesn't have powers. No, he quacks. Penguins don't even quack. Yeah, but he does. He sort of does this sort of thing. The, Danny DeVito? Yeah. Yeah. Scarecrow. Is it, is it Dr. Freeze? Mr. Freeze? I think, is it is it Victor Von Freeze? Dr. Victor Von Freeze, I think. This is Arnold Schwarzenegger's character? Yeah. Not only his the character that he portrayed, but it's a longtime um, Batman villain. Yeah. that I, I remember being young enough when and I watched he, that. He's one of the his... ones. Um, Dr. Freeze is, is one of the ones who's like totally relatable. Like, like he's not a bad guy. His wife, I think, was like dying of some illness that he couldn't cure. So he froze her. Mm. And I think he cured the disease. But now he can't unfreeze her without her dying. And he's mm. like, I, I think his whole thing is he's trying to find a way to thaw his wife out. So he's like stealing a diamond for his research. It's not right. even that bad, you know? Like, yeah, like, yeah. He's yeah. actually a hero. Like, like B Batman needs to be like, yo. I can fund this. Let's get let's work together. Like the guy's making space lasers. Like like n n Batman could totally use an ice laser. That I want that true. comic. You Taylor, you would like the one called like the Batman that. Who Laughs, I think. And it's uh it's this like multiverse concept with a bunch of evil Batman and uh, like like different kinds of Batman and 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 uh they're they're pretty hardcore. That's a good one. The Batman Who Laughs. Yeah. Bruce Wayne and Earth negative 2020 or negative 2020 this is so stupid, man. Yeah, I know. So it, so he's the. It's just an inverse reality where now the penguin's a cool guy and the, the Riddler is like, teaching kids to read with fun games. Dude, I've I've invested myself into so many fake realities. I can't even tell you anymore. That sounds good enough. Yeah. Yeah. I like the way I'm imagining it. That's better. I, oh, I wanted to. We were talking about it on PKN. I want to talk mm. about Ozark. I want to get Kyle's. Oh tape. fuck yeah, dude! I thought it was tremendous. All right, should we do spoilers or non-spoilers? I'm only a few episodes in, but I'm... Uh, okay, well, then we can do, like, a few episodes in non-spoilers. Basically, just, like, set up, like, wh how the this season begins, um, you know, and how that relates to how last 
uh, mm-hmm. season ended. Um, mm-hmm. And we'll talk about like how it's a seven episode thing here and then we're getting the other seven episodes. But we won't give like major spoilers and, and plot points and stuff like that. How about that? Okay. Okay. And, and for the audience's sake, you should really get into Ozark if you never have. It is like, like we talk about, you know, we, we, we like TV here. We're three guys who have mm-hmm. a lot of spare time on our hands. So we're into TV. I get it. But Ozark is legit one of those top tier, like gold star, mm-hmm. you know, it really is the acting, the plot, like it hits, up. hits it out of the park. Like, like it's, it's in the, it's in my top five all time TV shows and we're three seasons in or something like that. It's incredible. Yeah. I, I love it. I think it's as good as breaking bad, maybe better. I think it's better than Breaking Bad. I I I do. It's getting there. This new season, maybe it's like uh, recency bias, but yeah, it's, I, I'm enjoying I'm it just others. as much. So you said recency bias. I'm a, I'm a scanning myself for like nostalgia bias. Yeah, you know, it, was Breaking Bad really that good? If you rewatch it. Will you be upset at fucking cinematography masturbation where they just fucking film a handle on a car for 13 minutes? Here's why I prefer. You're, you're watching <laughs> the you're watching the goddamn show through the reflection of a chrome door handle. I like that stuff. So so I really like that, and that's one of the things I appreciate about it, appreciate about uh-huh. Breaking Bad. I, I do like cinematography, and how, it's it's more it's like how the food is presented uh, mm-hmm. versus how the yeah. food tastes. Sometimes um, some people don't give a fuck. It's like mush it all together in a bowl. Let's go. But but I don't know. Sometimes it's nice if it's presented in a kind of a fanciful way. Mm-hmm. I think that the parts of Breaking Bad that are the best thing since sliced bread are when Walt is getting hardcore. When Walt says, "Your God, what's my name?" Heisenberg, you're goddamn right. Yeah. <laughs> or when he tells her, "You think someone knocks and they and, and they answer, and they get shot, and that's me? That's what you think of me? I am the one who knocks." it's like fuck yeah what am i watching or when or when he runs those fucking guys over and kills them in the fucking street and he looks up at jesse and he just goes run like those moments or or when gustav friend comes down there and doesn't say a fucking word while walt is basically begging for his life takes his suit off slowly puts on the fucking lab coat and slits the other guy's fucking throat while they watch and never says a word like you can't beat moments like that. That's where that show like kills it and, and blows shit away. Very but true. Ozark does something that that show never could. It they have that criminal mastermind thing where a family's involved with cartel money laundering, very similar to what Walt was doing. Also involved with cartel, um, like drug business and money laundering, very similar mm-hmm. premises. And 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 in both situations, your your main character. If, if you want to make Jason Bateman the main character of Ozark, which is being generous because there are a lot of good people in there. Yeah. They're both experts in their field who are required to make the drug business money cartel thing work. And they're both geniuses. The problem with Breaking Bad is I can't fucking stand that crippled ass son. I, ho- <laughs> I wish they'd aborted that baby and that <laughs> wife, that chunky faced wife. I wish that the cartel had tortured her like, like fucking cut her. Okay, I'm on board with Skylar. Skylar was one of the most annoying characters in TV history because Walt was just being cool as can be, and she would be just raining on parades left and right. The sun was such a minor part of the show for me. Like, all right, well than, then that's a personal thing for me where I just hate that crippled fuck. I did, I did and hate that, when he when he wrecked that beautiful Pontiac Aztec in that in that open parking lot, scratched his dad's car. That was I, I remember like reading some seeing some article where they're like, we wanted to give Walt a car that says loser. And so, oh <laughs> so they picked Pontiac Aztec. I always thought that was a cool car when it came out. Like it looked it looked fun. They're apparently all right, terrible, we're not talking about Pontiac. Anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're talking about, we're um, talking about uh, Jason Bozart. Bateman's family is all fucking down. Not only are they down, but they're good at it. Like his his like 17 year old daughter is 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 great. Already master manipulator, well spoken, beautiful, charming, well dressed, well spoken, like all of the above. She's already like a mm-hmm. little miniature of her mother, ready to be plugged in to any societal like junction, any like position of like quasi power. Oh, I run this foundation that's over these big, yep. and yeah, of course, we influence the Southern Trade District or whatever the fuck. It's always something, some strings are being pulled. Like she's already. Uh, like like ready to be plugged in to that position of power. The son is some kind of a servant, 
and he's just so smart that I don't know what to do with him. He's a millionaire already. Did they call already. him a in the yeah. show? Yeah. They, For a second, I thought you did. I'm, like, Ru- I, I'm sorry if that's <laughs> a minor Ruth spoiler, but it, I think yeah. the joke will still hit the same. They say he, he's some kind of servant, I think. He's some like, kind of servant. I think he's one of them servants. Or yeah. Something like that. <laughs> um, and, and his wife. I love Wendy. Wendy can Wendy Ruth. Ruth is the little blonde girl. Mm-hmm. Uh, Wendy Ruth and Jason Bateman's character, Marty, I think, they compete with, for, for, for my like favorite. Um, you, you know, we cut between a lot of characters. Mm-hmm. And I remember when when Game of Thrones was on, Jon Snow time was pay attention time. Mm-hmm. Um, there were some times it was it was like, oh, this it's it's the hound. Okay, I like this, but I don't really need to pay too or much. it'd be like, oh, it's a Sansa scene. I'm gonna go to the bathroom. Can skip that one. Can yeah. skip that one almost. There, but 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 when it's Marty or when it's Ruth or when it's Wendy, I'm paying fucking attention. I'm For sure. I, I'm entranced almost. They're so good and their scenes are always so good. Mm-hmm. You can't tell which one is better at what they do. They're all just so good at what they do. They're little and I like the way that Ruth have is... you gotten to the part, Woody, where Wendy sits down with her father at a diner. Mm. I don't think so. Okay, well, I don't want to like fuck this up for any, for anybody who did uh-huh. watch it or anybody's going to watch it. When Wendy sits down in a diner to speak to her father, listen to her accent, her character's mm-hmm. accent throughout the whole scene, and 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 see if you can catch what's happening, because that's some of the best acting I've ever seen. What? It was I thought you were so gonna complain good. about the accent. Okay. Her father, no, she's good. Her, her father is a more rural guy, and he's telling her, "Well, I I talked to the church, and they said I should come on in here and see about things." She's like, "Oh, well, if the church, <laughs> if the church all got together and they said that it was okay for you to go see about your dead son, well, then I'm glad that you checked with them first. She has that. That's her." thing that's her cadence that's her delivery right and she's got this very eloquent way of speaking and she's she's nailing all of her and then but after a while she starts talking to her dad and she's had just about enough of him Mm -hmm. and she falls (laughs) back into her real accent the one that she grew up with the one that she left behind to go to chicago and to become Mm -hmm. the person she is now it's it's not even mentioned nobody brings it up it's just it happens and then it it goes back <clears throat> she goes from her Chicago accent, the one she has 99.99% of the show, to her southern accent and then back up into her real accent. And it's never even spoken of. No one notices it. But I did. I, I, I noticed I, that, too, because I, I, I pay attention I to how characters like, speak. And she did a really good job of that. Like yeah. the you're exactly right. The I'm so exasperated. I just can't, you know, put on an air or keep the walls up mm-hmm. like I'm aggravated. She for me, like. Wendy is a, is like a Ramsey or a Joffrey character where like every time she's on screen, I'm locked in, but good God, she might be morally as despicable as the cartel guy. I disagree. Like she is, she makes some, some rough decisions. I disagree. Uh, I, I, I like all of her decisions. I agree with them. Um, hundred <laughs> percent. One of the things that I don't like is, is I feel that way about Marty. I feel like so, Marty's got it all under control and everybody else is <clears throat> fucking it up. Yes. yes. Wendy has this thing where I can't tell sometimes whether she is. Actually, here's what's happening. Wendy can't tell anymore when she's lying and when she's not. Wendy has telling the same lot. Wendy is telling so many lies that she is starting to believe some of her own lies mm-hmm. and she's snapping in and out of that. And it's not surprising to her. She's just like, oh, yeah. Yeah. OK, that's the reality that we're in right now. OK, let me shift realities real quick over to the one that's. That's, mm-hmm. that that fits this cur- current moment. She shifts realities and characters so much, um, and I love that about her. I, I dig that about her character. But she um, does, like, there are times where she, because she's obviously more emotionally driven than Marty is, where she'll, like, lash out at a partner. I'm not going to say anything specific, but she will do things in anger that then give, like, Marty a huge workload of, like, trying to undo or a deal that doesn't pan out because she was... I don't think it's anger. I think it's all calculated. I think she is actively. Well, those seeking... are some bad calculations a couple of times because they lost business and it took them way longer to launder the money because of what she did. I think she's okay with that though. Like, like anything to like damage uh, those people she doesn't like. Um, we're, yeah, we're talking, she is vindictive. We're talking to too many layers here, but but just to be clear, like fucking amazing. Uh, I I I. The you first season like? was the first season of Ozark is like 
an eight out of ten. The second season of Ozark is like an eight and a half out of ten. And so far, this is like matching that. What's, this is staying right on par with it. What's mm -hmm. cool, and we've alluded to, is that everyone's competent. And it's interesting to have plot lines that run around competent people who are mm -hmm. pretty good at what they do. No one's an idiot. There is no ah, dad yeah. from King of Queens in this show. Maybe there's some idiots. What so the have? interesting there's, thing is there's there are idiot. only two types of people. There are only two types of people oh, in the okay. show. Geniuses and idiots. There, there's, there are very few characters in between. And the ones in between are almost like the, the, the ones that they can't, if they can't be manipulated or and if they're not smart enough to be manipulating, then they're not characters in this show. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the one the stupidest guy in the show is the dude who's just getting manipulated up and down and now is running the motel. Yes. Like Agreed, he's, 100%. he's a dummy. He's um, also I hate that guy. He every mm -hmm. time he's on screen, he's boring. I know his whole job in that acting role is to be a boring schlub, a clueless idiot. But like he annoys me. I don't like that. <laughs> Yeah, it's a tremendous show. I really, the, really uh, enjoy the it. son from the K the Kansas City mob. That character, um, he's a bit of a dunce. He's got his own show on like some other show. It's been advertised to me a couple times. He's some kind of like badass or something. I need to look into that because I do like that actor. Uh, he got his dick blown off last season. Uh, yeah, you know, with a shotgun for beating Ruthie, and this season to see like how that relationship has changed <clears throat> is really interesting. Um, yeah, I recommend everybody catches up. Uh, avoid those spoilers because you know some big things happen um and, and this is one of those shows where no one s is seemingly safe when yeah. whenever there's a few times in this season where main characters literally get like whisked away in black suvs to go meet with a, with a cartel boss and i'm worried for them the same way i was worried when like I don't know, like like mm -hmm. in Game of Thrones when there'd be a big battle or something. It's I like, disagree with you away. on the everyone safe. Who's not safe in this show? It, since the beginning, I can't think of a core character who's died. I was really surprised when they blew Helen's head off. Yeah, when they blew Helen's head off at the end of the third season, that, that oh. really surprised me. I did not see that coming. Uh, I didn't think that... Fuck, what was Darlene's husband's name? Um, all of the Langmores like, that, that have been killed. Okay. Like, yeah, right, a right. bunch of Langmores. But uh, Darlene's husband, I thought, like the heroin guy, I thought he was going to be like... And, and Woody, for a while. I'm, I'm, and, and, I want to murder the wife. And Woody, right. again, I'm not trying to like spoil anything, <laughs> but but watch the rest of this season and and maybe okay. you'll think that, maybe you know, I'll feel like someone uh, someone didn't expect to die dies, perhaps. Sure, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe you never know. Um, good season, no, great season. Uh, remains one of the best uh, shows uh, that I've ever seen, and is currently the best show airing on television. Yeah, um, it, it, if you're giving it some sort of like you know, real measuring. Like, like, look, I love Peacemaker. I'm going to watch the new episode when I get off of like, like here, but uh, Ozark is killing it. So good. I like, uh, you talked about how there was like that kind of triad of battle, like Wendy and Marty are ostensibly, they're on the same side, but there's so much sniping that like they're, they're not truly holding a united front. Yeah, and then oh Ruth, God. and you would think like, oh, Ruth and this kind of, you know, competitive thing, she's kind of taking on Wendy and Marty. And then it's just her, and you would think it'd just be she'd be getting trounced all the time and outthought and outsmarted and they're just too clever. Like she plays that character of like street smart, knows how to wheel and deal really, really well. Like Ruth just keeps going up by by my estimation, she like in my life. That smart though, right? No, I guess she no, did. She did. When, he, when he first yeah, she, hired she was her, always she was, very clever. Yeah. Well, she's yeah. learned a lot since then, but she was always she because had the, I, the raw materials to to I think she, what she happened was, was like, from, like, like low level. Marty time. Was, I could be wrong about this, but because it's been like year, I only watched it once. But I yeah. think there was a part where like Marty was like, "I'll give you a hundred thousand dollars just to forget about all this." She's like, "No, I want a job. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I work for you now." He's yeah. like, Wait, "What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we all do." It's <laughs> <laughs> like, but yeah, she she basically well, right, like then. seamlessly transitioned her low level like crimes with her uncles and dad and into you know, using that thuggery and manipulation in the services of someone for a much higher level crime. Yeah. So it's, and, and it, I like all the moving is, pieces. Like, she is someone who can get shit done because she knows mm -hmm. all the local scumbaggery. So if Marty really needs something, Marty is in a position where he has endless wealth at his disposal. He can call the cartel and be like, look, it costs an extra hundred thousand. So if Ruthie's like, all right, it'll cost you 400,000 and a hundred thousand for me. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what'd you say? 
A hundred thousand for me. <laughs> Say it. A hundred thousand for you. <laughs> like, what's Marty going to say? He needs this thing done, or everyone dies. And she yeah. says, "A hundred thousand more dollars." Well, and if you have a billion-dollar yeah. deal, so hurry back. And like, if you haven't noticed, Marty hasn't made any friends in the Ozarks. He's not connected to any of the locals. Like, she is her his only kind of reach into the community to get stuff done and it's an it's a cool community they've built a nice web so sometimes what shows will do when they're this good is they'll start thinking about a spinoff right about now um, i hope they do that because the kansas city mob yeah could be its own thing you know i'm interested in that i'm interested i'm interested in what's going on in mexico with the cartel and uh, I, I think that the next seven episodes or however many there are, are the last of ozark so i'd be interested in a spinoff uh, if it was by the same, you know, creators or writers or something like this, because this is just really fucking good stuff. I don't know which direction I'd want the spinoff to go in more. Ruthie, I want I want to see Ruthie do stuff. That's what I would I would I would I I I can't decide whether I like Ruthie, Wendy, or Marty more. When Ruthie is on screen, she has my fucking attention, and and when she is sad, mm -hmm. I believe it. When she's angry, I believe it. There's a scene where she gets angry. And this season that you haven't gotten to, I love. She, she's just. This isn't a spoiler. She, but but someone is trying to calm her down. They're like, no, you can't do any of that stuff you just said you were gonna do. She's like, if you wanna stop me, you have to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> and she's got a shotgun. Like, yeah. <laughs> and they're, I, everybody's just like, well, we're not gonna kill you. <laughs> <laughs> I like her just as much as you do. I do find her world where I guess she's a rich person living in poverty uh, to be less interesting. I, I, I like someone who can buy a car, you know, someone who can. Uh, let me, oh, I, I like I like did you that see her dingy do a big business existence. Deal yet? Uh, does this have to do with the motel? Yeah, come on. That was pretty slick. I Well, where I am, we don't know if it's such a good move or not yet it, where uh, I am in the season. I don't think it, we ever figure out if it's a good in the, in these seven yeah, that, that, that hasn't seven come episodes. to be revealed that, that, that's a small plot point at this point there's so much i mean like i could have gone in there and paid too much for a building like did you see her did you see the way that she offered well above market and got him to say yes well he was, she was buying well something. but, but you, you have to think about like time sensitivity for them like an extra buying something an extra 50 sale. grand like to them is nothing like she's basically acting like like she's got so much money that Marty's handed her that like, but she needs it in like a legitimate business. And so yeah, like, yeah. it's more it's, of like, a, okay, before anything fucking happens, she can afford a pedicure and a <laughs> manicure and whatever. Like, would, she doesn't want it. That's not her personality. She's an Ozark girl. She just wants to hang out in her trailer. And, I really like that. And drink her. Miller light. The fuck Why does she need more than $16 a day. <laughs> like, I don't she see wants, she doesn't. You could support her on one of those, like, you know, Kenyan commercials from the nineties. <laughs> like <laughs> the problem. So, so, this, this is some of the stuff I like about her character, right? And she says this at one point this season. She says, why did God make me smart enough to know um, how fucked all this is, but not smart enough to get myself out of it? You know, talking about like the, the world she lives in. And, and, and that's where she is. She's smart enough to know, but she's dumb enough. She's too dumb to fucking leave. And, and she's got her family there that she doesn't mm -hmm. want to leave. And she keeps asking her family, like, we've got enough money to do whatever we want let's leave and they're like i kind of like being a dumb hick living on the living on the lake here with the fbi and the cartel trying to kill me <laughs> it's fun and well but and those so, are, those other guys are, are trying to do? convince they don't know the full danger they're in like there's well, no way she she's too shrewd to be cutting them in with all the info and how much money she really don't has. you that and, and that's that's that gets back to my point earlier ozark is populated by two types of characters those who are People with 145 IQs and people with 85 IQs. There are no 100 and 120 IQs. <laughs> There's no one who's just like, well, none of this makes sense. This is not adding up. <laughs> no, sir. Like the private detective, they describe him workaholic, d d leaves nothing unturned. He was the best. He solved a murder yeah. a week, sometimes three. I, I liked, like, I really? liked that character. <laughs> They got shaft on the case, like fuck. <laughs> yeah, they were talking about Carl like they, they were talking about like his his crime solving ability, and I'm like, it's 
it's a danger to society that they took him off the beat. Like get him, <laughs> get him, get him back in the game, guys. Like come on. <laughs> they literally like like the private detective who happens to be snooping in on them li- happens to be Sherlock fucking Holmes. He's traveling the country. He's driving hundreds of miles on hunches and and like. <laughs> asking like pointed questions and manipulating people to get where he needs to go and he's being paid pennies <laughs> oh yeah and like something like, you're talking about How the driving stuff it'll it'll be something like i got a clue about something going on in uh eastern tennessee mm-hmm. so i'm gonna drive over there and it's like like that's so far away to <laughs> just just to be go clear talk, that's just a, to go that's talk about, to a guy it's about a 19 hour drive Rough. <laughs> that's uh, not Rough. that long, but it, it's a long drive. Check it. Our, our, no, no, you're right. No, you're right. Oh, of course it's not. No, it's um. It would take I me made, two and a half weeks by motorcycle. <laughs> no, no, no. You're absolutely right because I made that drive to Paducah, uh, and that's like, or to um, Southern Illinois. It's like eight or nine hours. Eight yeah, hours eight from hours. Ozarks to. It Nostra. is not a whimsical drive that you make out of. He, he was just checking on a hunch. Yeah, everybody yeah. in the show is a uh, genius or an idiot. And I don't mind that because it means that like the idiots are often manipulated very well, and the geniuses often come out of come up with magical ways to get out of mm-hmm. crazy situations. I even liked that uh, that the cartel boss is not like not like a stupid thug. Mm-mm. Like like he's a very calculating businessman, yeah. which is what the reality at the top of a cartel is. Like it's a, it's it's not some guy. Yeah, it's not a man with, with a snake tattoo across his forehead. It's a guy who's like running yeah. numbers. Yeah, you know, if he's going to do it for very long, anyway, you would imagine. Yeah, mm-hmm. I like him a lot. I, I I like his style. Um, what did he say to Marty? Um, he's he's like, you win when I win, and just like keep that in mind the whole time. And, and Marty's just like, yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Okay, I get it. You're right. You're right. Oh, yeah. He's I like, can't. No, and, and, and let, Marty says that later on. He said, like you said, I, I win when you win. He's like, no, it's not what I said. I said that you do not win until I win. Yeah. <laughs> there is a difference. Yeah. yeah it's that such was a, a scary good situation scene. where, like, I can't tell what's the scarier aspect of it. Like, like he's got so many guns pointed at him all the time, and there's so many wild cards in the show. So many people who are just like insane. The cartel mm-hmm. actually seems like good people to do business with because you can take them at their word. The FBI seems terrifying to deal with. They, they'll just lie yeah, and then just like kill you. <laughs> and some of the people they deal with are so insane that they might kill you for the fun of it. So you should uh, watch Euphoria, mm-hmm. Kyle. I know you described it as like pedophilia or something, but this shows. I, I think you might like it. I yeah, you might like it. There's a Wings lot of has been saying it's good. Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ! <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> poor Wings. I, I, Wings has his character flaws. That's not one of them. No, it's not. Is there something? Um, is there anything going on with him? He just has uh, bad taste in shows well, like I'm it. a week out of date or two, but it, his trolls have been trying to. You know, shut him down and uh, make him look like a pedophile. Oh, dear. I, I had no idea I that was that. still going. I, I didn't either. I was just figured that would die down because, like, well, maybe it has. I'm a week or two at a date. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, haven't watched Euphoria. I might check that out someday. Uh, I, I'm, I'm longing for the return of Barry. That uh, that that show that uh, we we like so forgot much. Forgot about that, that show. Yeah. Forgot about it. It's been so long since they made an episode. Um, and uh, other than that, I haven't really really been watching anything. I've been sucked into fucking Tarkov, playing a ton of that. Uh, but Peacemaker and uh, Ozark have are you been my two gonna, favorites recently. Are you going to jump back into Tarkov with Kyle, Woody? No, I'm not. I'm doing <laughs> great. I'm living a, a, a good actually, life. I'm not that great a life, to be honest with you. I'm a little sad. I got outside, enjoyed some sunlight. But I know Tarkov doesn't make it better. No. No, there's no sunlight in Tarkov. <laughs> yeah. um, I even play it at night in the game. I don't even, <laughs> I don't even I want like, do. like I don't song. like playing at night in the game. I like to I play in the daytime. Oh, are there are there other PMCs? Yeah, that's what I'm here for. Come come get your bullets. I'm, I'm keeping like them in my sneaky. magazine. I like to be sneaky and stab them. There's a you can use the cultist knives now and poison people. Ah, oh, how quickly does it kill them? It takes forever. Yeah, that's what I imagine. Like, this is not Call of Duty knifing. But people don't know that, so they're just, like, real concerned with the fact they're they're poisoned. I think it takes, like, seven or eight minutes, maybe, to kill them. But they got to extract, unless they got an antidote, which is 
people don't. Not. Well, now with the is there a needle one? Yeah, but nobody care. I actually carry it around because I want to be the guy if anybody ever gets stabbed by the poison to be like, I've got the antidote. <laughs> yeah, plus but, is uh, that if people don't know, in Tarkov, the things that restrict you are how much it weighs and how much space it takes. Your backpack will be like whatever, 20 blocks, cubes, and um, you, know, you only have so much space. But needles store very efficiently, and uh, you can put them in such a way that you don't lose them. And I don't see why you wouldn't carry one if you're rich. Yeah, I've been having a good time. Good game. But, it is uh, a very good game, but it's... <sighs> it's time-consuming. It's time-consuming. And um, you benefit in the game by how much you play, right? So they get the same me early in the wipe and late in the wipe. You know, it gets more kills late in the wipe. Why? Well, I've got a better gun. My character literally runs farther, shoots with less recoil. His footsteps make less noise. His hearing hears more. <laughs> like, like I'm playing a different... I'm basically running cheats because I'm yeah, level... Yeah, it's an RPG. It's an yeah. RPG uh, shooter. It's it's cool that way. That, but you know, if you played all those thousands of hours of Call of Duty 4 and Modern Warfare 2, and they're like, yeah, you're the same guy. Like, really? Because yeah. I've been putting hours in, bro. Like, like... I'd have worn out several pair of boots by now. Like <laughs> you, you pick up some perks, but by and large, like once you hit, once you get creative class in Call of Duty, historically you should be competitive. Yeah, you, or at least when you max your like n- numeric level. But I'm talking about like thousands of hours. Yeah, like like you would like it if like they recognize that, but they don't in Call of Duty. But in this game, they're like, bro, did you actually, did you actually spend thousands of hours of like your real life in this game? <laughs> Okay, man, you're fast now. Get out of there. Go yeah, get yeah. him. Go get him, yeah. loser. <laughs> yeah. You can sprint for longer than you need to. And if you run out of sprint, we'll give it back. And it, that's how the game plays. You can carry heavier shit. You get like it. Uh, I don't want to join. It must be halfway through the wiper later by now. Oh, no. I think we're about two and a half months in. And I think they're talking about wiping in five months. Sort of third ish. Yeah, something like that. So. You know, uh, but but who knows? They could they could do it anytime. Uh, they're, we're, we're hoping for Streets of Tarkov next. If you're, I don't know how to be an asshole. But if you're me, and you're starting in the white night now, there are some advantages because all my friends are rich. I mm-hmm. bet I could run good gear. <laughs> in my oh first yeah, great if I really want to. Oh, it would be no problem to like put you in like U locks and level five like plate armor. Like like that's 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 pennies. You know, I've got, we've got all the traders now, like everybody does. So it's yeah. everything's cheap now. Um, oh, I heard the solar farm still broken. This probably not fixed a it show today. Topic. Oh, today I I, I read re- I not read I watched a video recently that said it was broken, and I was like, st- it's been months. It has to be a quick fix. How do they not prioritize it? Uh, it it took a while for people to get there. You know, it's it's a oh yeah, not everyone. You could only get to it about a month ago with with any real sense. Uh, like, and, and then I guess nobody noticed. They were like, like, like if you're such a badass that you've gotten to solar panels like in two weeks, you probably don't notice your fuel costs. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. In any case, though, um, it's it's a good game. I, I can't decide whether it's better than Rust um, for like greatest game of all time or my You've favorite been game there of all for time. Years now, like it, it. Oftentimes, you like the one that you're playing. You yeah, know, you, this is the one you call the best. Yeah, maybe so. I think. Um, they both have that that thing where they just make me make me uh, really nervous and make my hand shake and uh, freak me out. I get, get that so adrenaline scared. rush. Yeah, I get really scared when I play. Uh, sometimes, like like if all my friends are dead and so all of their loot is on the ground, and then like I just need to kill one more guy to like secure all of my friends' loot and profit from all of the dead enemies' loot. It's there's a lot on the line in that moment, and and then I'm streaming in there, so it's like I really yeah. want to win. My hands will be shaking. You don't want to make a big or an easy error that fucks yeah. you up. And then oh, I make plenty watching. of those. Yeah, I make plenty of those. It's fun. Hmm. Well, I, I already used, I uh, just used my Tarkov bathroom break. I'll have to save UFC for, for later in the show. Oh, UFC talk. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, we, oh, we, Anytime we, I have to piss, <laughs> it's a three person right show. How's that? Tarkov? <laughs> How's UFC? <laughs> 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 no. Um, I uh, have a. I want to lead UFC talk. No, no, not so, yet. I don't have to piss again yet. No, it's good for a couple hours. There, well, you brought it up. <laughs> there is a fight this weekend. Israel Adesanya versus Robert Whitaker. And Israel Adesanya <sighs> competes for most interesting guy in the UFC at the moment. 
right? A lot of guys would say Connor, but he's not winning. I don't even remember the last time he won. Some guys would say George Masvidal, but they're wrong. Who else is on the list? Uh, um, Black Beast, Derek Brunson. Or whatever uh, his I name is. That's not his name, though. Whatever his it's name is. Big Lewis Black Beast or something. Derek Lewis, yep. Yeah, I... I think you're in the minority by putting him in the same league as those other guys. So anyway, but the point though is that one of the biggest stars in the U.S. No one knows what it's called. UFC is fighting on Saturday, and I'm barely watching. I don't know who else is on the card. Am I alone in having drifted from MMA a little bit? No, I, I think that I don't think it's that big of a fight. It doesn't seem like they're like promoting it very much. Like, Name like, a bigger fight. Then, like, Whitaker, it's a rematch. That makes it a really big deal. They were both champions. That makes it a really big deal. If people don't know the backstory, this guy, Israel Adesanya, was a kickboxing champion. He kind of entered the UFC old. People think he's young because he's into, like, anime and internet memes, but he's not. He's, like, 33 or something, 34. And uh, uh, anyway, but he's really young at heart. He's young looking. He comes in. He just whips on everybody. He's this great, great, great striker, which is fun to watch. And apparently his grappling defense is good enough because no one can hold him down. And he beats everyone, including our champion, Robert Whitaker. If I remember right, and I might not, Whitaker was hurt. Like he had like, it's like his intestines came out or something ridiculous like that. He healed up, but he came off an extended break and lost the fight badly. No one watched that fight and thought that Whitaker was like doing well. But, uh, since then, Whitaker's been on, like, he's beat Murderer's Row. He's earned a shot at the title again. This should be a giant super fight. I don't know why, but it's just not. And I, it, it's not for me. It's not for anyone else. It, did the USC forget how to promote? Or uh-huh. did we just get numb? Is it anyone but know. Connor's not interesting enough? It, it, it is possible they forgot how to promote or they did something different. I will say the the... Um... The artwork they used for like the poster that they like put on the banner on Amazon looked completely different, and I noticed it. I went, "That looks like shit." Uh, I haven't heard anything about the fight outside of the Amazon banner, and mm. uh, you know I'm on the MMA subreddit occasionally, and uh, and like Bloody Elbow or whatever. Like I, I go to those places, and so I know that it's coming. I've been talking about it. I made some bets last week. Uh, I got money on on Whitaker because you know Whitaker. I like him and I dislike Israel. Uh, I really want him to win. Uh, is Whitaker the underdog? So you'll, he, uh, he yeah, almost certainly. Is. Yeah, yeah. Gotta be. and he's very likable. He's Australian. He tells the truth a lot. Yeah, and uh, I don't know. He's just he's a charismatic dude who laughs easily. And um, I was in the gym, and at late night at the gym, they replay. They ESPN is on the TVs, so mm-hmm. like they replay these like. The promos that they do, those big long ones for UFC events on ESPN late night. So there's like this hour long documentary that they have made that's basically about like the first fight between them. And so you get like 30 minutes of like what Robert Whitaker is like. And so I watched that at the gym and I came away from that just really liking him. He just seemed like such a good guy. And I hate Israel Adesanya so fucking much. Why, I just, why do you hate him? Did he beat just, up somebody I, you liked? No, or? I just don't like him. I just I don't like any of the things cocky. he does. Cocky, cocky guy. I, yeah, but that doesn't bother me. I I, I kind of like that. I wish I wish he's just fucking weird. And uh, I thought that was funny when he's he had just like fucking weird. <laughs> it's fucking weird. And, and I thought it was funny when he had gyno and he and he like his his, his, his they were like, why do you have gyno? And he was like, why are you looking at my titty? And it's like, because you have gyno from your performance enhancing drug abuse, sir. That's why I'm looking gyno at your was? titty. Does everybody know? Yeah. So everyone knows. Okay. He has one like female titty. And when you're low body fat, that really stands out. Do you think it's gone? Is it yeah, gone? Yeah, it's gone now. I don't know. It's a cute little tit. I'm looking at it. <laughs> um, the it's reason cute. he has gyno, aside from performance enhancing drugs, like Kyle mentioned, is they test for the things that suppress the performance enhancing drugs too, like that, that prevent that from happening. So when you're being tested at the level that these guys are, you can't do the things that normal Mm -hmm. people do. Like you, you you can't take that like estrogen suppression and stuff. Look at that. So he's got a boob dude. And that's not the most egregious picture. Hopefully I use that right. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, There are pictures that make that boob look even worse than, than why would you, his his other side looks normal though. 
it's asymmetric, which is another indication that like oh it, it's ped based. It's not. It's like not like a hormonal it. like imbalance. It's. PED. Well, it, it kind of oh. is. Oh. Like he's it using hormones to as a performance. I, I didn't. I didn't know if there was a thing where they're like, well, if this Look naturally it. occurs, it, uh, it's in both breasts. Is that Photoshop? That's the worst one I've. That's ever definitely seen. Photoshop because it's the same exact. <laughs> it's the same exact photo. Look at the. the it's just photoshopped bigger. <laughs> he, that that looks like a fucking like the you know when they discover the yeah. tribesmen and the women don't wear tops. <laughs> like, That's him when he was pregnant. <laughs> yeah, when, <he's, laughs> when he was producing, you can see a little but, white spot on his nip. It looks infected. But your random gym bro can like prevent that from happening. I don't know what they take. I have clomid in my head, but I think that's wrong. But they take some sort of suppression. Here, if you take too much tea, I guess your body converts testosterone into estrogen. And then if then you have a lot of estrogen because you're taking so much tea that it's excess and that happens. And you get shit like that. Boobs. I think okay. I have my science right. We'll need Derek on here. Well, does it but, does it pop and, up out of nowhere, like very very quickly? Because I feel like if that's, problem like, is this was a it's couple not months cured before. without surgery. So oh. he has a surgical problem there. And if he's in the middle of a training camp, if he's coming into a fight, like he can't just whip up a quick surgery. Yeah, I didn't know that. You say they need to physically go in and remove whatever tissue showed up, whatever breast tissue started to form. I. I mean, can, I'm exhausted. Uh, yeah, I, I, can, I suppose uh, that's what maybe they, or something. they can go in there and like cut it out. Or um, I think there's some drug treatment that will shrink it as well. Uh, I remember there was some YouTube, there was some guy on YouTube that like cut his own out. That's hardcore, huh? They gave himself a gyno uh, a uh, mastectomy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <a> mastectomy. <laughs> no, that's Did horrific. It turn out okay. Like how could it? Yeah, it, right. Because the stitches alone like need to be done well. Yeah. And like, was how do you get a good look? Like, imagine you're oh, operating on the underside of your nipple. You get a couple of mirrors, you're good. Just a couple of mirrors. Where you, where you do? Do you do it standing in your like your bathroom? No, oh, I do it in bed. Uh, it's, it's gonna ruin my mattress. I got rubber sheets. Oh, I do too, actually. Yeah, we're gonna be fine. This is gonna work. Yeah. When I start to grow tits, just take a knife in there, slice them off. So Let me know. <laughs> Let me know. <laughs> yeah, that's horrific. Self surgeries are. Have you ever seen that old photo? I don't remember the backstory of it, but it's like in black and white. Like the guy still has like the the doctor cap, like the olden day like paper looking doctor cap, and okay. he was operating. He removed his own appendix. I think it was oh, like yeah. military related or something. Maybe he was no, out in the field and they couldn't do are it. You I don't wearing know. A robe. I am. Yeah. Have you been wearing the robe all show? Or did you come back with the robe? No, I've been wearing the robe the whole time. That's pretty Hugh Hefner of you. I oh, mean, boy. I decided <laughs> there's a new type of guy. I want to be a guy who wears a robe. <laughs> so, I, I thought about getting a pipe also. Corn cob, I hope. <laughs> I've tried I've tried pipes before. They don't taste good, and you get little bits of the tobacco in your mouth. I don't like it. But robes, whew. Like the real thing is there has been a wrapped robe in this like this office has like some some storage stuff in it. And this I got for Christmas 2019, Christmas 2019. And it was still wrapped up and it looks so soft and nice. I just walked in today and was like, it's, I've been looking at that for so long. Just be a robe, man, like pull the trigger on it. And so I did. And I'm loving it so far. No it's looking soft, back. It's comfortable. What? No looking back. There's no looking back. When you're a robe man, I can't wait until like I'm just gonna have it hanging outside my shower now. When I finish showering, no underwear, no pajama pants, no t-shirt, robe, and then I go on my morning jog through the <laughs> through the neighborhood. The least, the <laughs> least believable part of all of that <laughs> is the jog. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right, fine. Well, then I go get my mail with the tie undone. Whatever is believable. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, robes are great. You should definitely invest in robes. And that invest is in robes, investment huh? advice. To invest in robes because <laughs> uh, they're soft. Yeah, they I, they only this appreciate one, in value. Used robes. <laughs> the used <laughs> robe market? Look at this economy. It's going gangbusters. Everybody, uh, it, it's like, it's, all the idiots are in crypto and NFTs. Used robes. Dude. Uh, I, don't, I still don't get NFTs, I, and I, I and I and I don't well. I don't want to ask Taylor, someone else who Taylor, comes on look, again look. about it because I'm gonna go oh okay and then afterward I'm gonna I'm here's, not, I'm still here's not what gonna matters get it. Taylor here's what matters 
It's a scam, so you've, right? You've seen they've got those little pictures of like lions with hats and shit, and they have ugly apes. They're worth yeah, a yeah. lot of money because yeah. they're the only ones who can have it, right? They're mostly like monkeys or like eight bit. Yeah, whatever. You know, zombies. But you understand that part, right? Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. the, only yeah, they okay. can use it. Right, you understand that, that as well. That but I don't true. understand how that's no, 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 no. no. Use so it, so only I, they own it. I have cracked that fucking coat. But I've right clicked. Okay. I've right clicked okay. all of them. So, Zach, would you find like a very expensive uh, NFT and show us a, a picture of it? Uh, uh, maybe like like, like this one we know the the numeric value for. Like 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 oh, this is a one million dollar one, or this is a two million dollar one. Could you could you show us something like that? Is this a way for rich people to launder money? Well, like art. So you think that, but 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 that's just that's just. I mean, it's literally just the taking the art money laundering thing and making the art worse, right? Okay, perfect. Uh, what's the <laughs> what's the value of um, black dude with backwards cap? Ten, that $10 can't be ten dollars. million. That can't be true. The hat's okay. not no, even. No, 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 no. He's absolutely right, and it's worth every penny because only the owner owner can use that. But look, Taylor, I will do a thing for you. We just used it. Twenty five dollars. $25, I will draw that for you. It will be an exact <laughs> copy, and I will give it to you. Only you can use this. Really? Only you. Yes. That's really the generous that of you. You know you, what? Make it an even 30. You know, I it the, the standard is 30, um, so I appreciate <laughs> you stepping things up. Yep, that was a discount that I was providing to you. Well, what the fuck? Um, do, do, wait, do you, Kyle, do you actually understand it? I just explained it to you. No, thoroughly. not the, no, but like, I understand what you just said that you pay and then you're the only one who's authorized to use an image. But yeah. what is the incentive Taylor. of an individual to ever purchase this from you at that price? Like in the same way, like what's the incentive to buy a piece of art that's sold for $30 million, but is shitty. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, Taylor, you don't get it. I, I think it's, I think it's definitely a scam. I think it's also a scam. I think that there are a lot of really can, can smart I be people honest, though, making NFTs right now. It's the thing where I draw the pictures because I don't even draw them. I just take the money and block the people. <laughs> it is so, even take the time. It, it would be so, so easy. Obviously, like uh, uh, not a Ponzi scheme because that involves many layers. Just mm -hmm. a, uh, I don't know, snake oil. It, it, so obviously, worthless things. That you just hope someone else pays more for your worthless thing than you did. Yeah. And, and the bottom is going to fall out. It's the, what is it? The Denmark tulip market or whatever that was, the Dutch yeah. tulips. And, and everyone who tries to convince you otherwise doesn't have the words to explain why. Or yeah. they're selling NFTs. Now, I am <laughs> willing to to accept that maybe I am too, and, and, and always, like I'm willing to accept that I am too stupid to understand the value of this. I saw someone... I scroll on Reddit and someone posted a conversation they'd had on Tinder with a woman. And, uh, and, and she was like, what do you do for a living? It just says finance, but that's just like saying I'm an account. Like what yeah. the fuck do you actually do? And he's like, well, I, um, I re he works for a bank refinancing homes. Um, like, I guess he's the guy who, who like does it for him. She's mm -hmm. like, see, you're just putting words together right now. Like what you look at houses and decide what they worth. He's like, what do you do? She's like, I'm a stripper. <laughs> <laughs> this is a situation where she's not smart enough to understand the words he's saying. He yeah. literally needs to dumb it down and explain it like, like it's five because she doesn't know what the word refinance a home or the phrase refinance a home even means. She doesn't know what refinance means. And, she yeah, doesn't get yeah. it. She's There's no entry point. The concept of a, mortgage, of a mortgage and then refinancing. None of that's ever. Mortgage. Very heady foreign concept. language. Foreign language to her. It just is. And, and and like maybe that's happening here with NFTs. Maybe when um um someone explains it to me, I'm sitting there like, yeah, you're just saying words right now. Like <laughs> like 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 what you figure out what pictures cost, and they're sitting there like, this guy's a fucking retard. He's never gonna get it. This is why I make millions on NFTs, and and he doesn't. And he's on I, EFTs. <laughs> it, it seems like yeah, it's, it's it seems like the people making huge amounts of money are the people selling these and like making them. But oh who's, no, it's who's, the buyers. Who's going to the buy the this sellers shit? are fools, Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> Don't they know that they were the only ones who could have used that okay, image? Kyle. They it had them all. It doesn't make sense. Like like Woody, let's say why I'm a tell anyone. Let's say here's I'm a the, popular. Why did why did the people who invented these things tell anyone? They had the they exactly all. Oh, yeah, they stole trash. the words out of my mouth. It'd be they like they could have owned the whole industry. Everyone would have been like. 
you know the guy who has every NFT? Yeah, he invented them, so he has every one of them. Wow, he was so smart. That didn't happen. This isn't electricity. Yeah. <laughs> it's because until people start buying it, it's just a picture in a folder. And so, yeah, a ton of people are going to be caught holding the bag. But again, the same as these like circle. these poo coins. But again, coming full circle, I'm fully willing to accept that I may just be too stupid to understand why why they are valuable. It just I, seems I, so it, dumb. Who's going to buy it? Other. It's not good. Like you, you just hit the nail on the head a million percent. Kyle, you find all the NFTs, these inherently valuable things, and you have all of them for yourself. Like if I have all the most valuable NFTs and I go, Kyle, I'll sell you this for $100,000 in a few years, it's going to be worth millions. Isn't it kind of uh, suspect that I don't want to keep these hundreds of millions of dollars of ill-gotten gains for myself? It's because I'm scamming you. It's because I'm it's because I am ripping you off. It's because you, if you buy that for me, are the same person who would walk up to a fucking oil cart in 1796 and ask for something to cure their cholera. And then he'd give you a half an apple core, you know, pureed, and then you'd, <laughs> and then he'd be in the next town by the time you figured it out, and you'd be like, ah, oh, never again. Like, no, like I, and I maybe I'm 100 percent wrong, but this NFT shit, it stinks. And even when like uh, we had a guest on who explained it to us, but he also had explained crypto to us. And when he explained crypto to us, it made sense. This was years ago initially when we asked him about it. I don't recall the guy's name, but he's kind of an expert. And it was like, Those okay, okay, too, right? yeah, Doug yeah. Holt. Doug Polk, Doug that's Polk, who it is. Yeah. Thank you. But he explained uh, crypto to us. And I remember like joking, you know, uh, mostly like at the end of the episode, like, oh, I still don't get it. But like, it makes sense. This right. does not make any sense. I, it does Zero sense is to be had in this whole thing. Why are they all zombies and monkeys? <laughs> There's so many things to make pictures of. And they're every single one I've seen, like 80% monkeys, 20% zombies. And that's all I've seen. Every so often I see like a famous meme sold. Like um, you... you I hope I can describe it. The girl's young. She has short blonde hair. She's in the foreground. In the background, there's a house that's on fire. Do you know this meme? Maybe Zach can yes. find it. Uh, I saw that NFT sold for some stupid amount of money. I don't know how much. It seemed like it was millions. And I was like, who sold it and why did they have it? I'd like like Can I ask you this, Woody? Here's something I'm not I'm not clear on. Where where is the NFT registry? I don't know. Because, because, and, and this is, I'm being honest, I'm not even joking around anymore. Like, like, like for you to tell me that's the that, one. Yeah. Okay. For you to tell me that I can't use the pixelated, shitty version of this for my business or, or for transactions, however the fuck that works, someone would need to, in, there would need to be a, a registry somewhere where, where yeah, they had a know. list of names and, and pictures of silly <laughs> shit next to the names. They'd be like, oh, <laughs> hang on. Let me Google. Okay, clown with a dick up its ass. That's Taylor's. All right, Taylor. <laughs> yes. Did someone use clown with dick up its ass? Yes, they did. They, they once again, it. no. <laughs> <laughs> but wait, right. Kyle, you keep saying that other people can't use it. I think they can. Other people can use the images you own. It's not a copyright. It's yeah. just a flex that you own the NFT. What does it. that mean to own it? I don't know. Here, means, here's one woody here's one it means we all agree remember that, that, that monkey we saw earlier that was 10 million dollars i own that when you own what it means Did to own the that? nft is that you're walking away with a handful of magic beans excited <laughs> for your next nope. adventure bullshit taylor <laughs> bullshit you're walking away with an empty hand and you're saying I have magic beans in my hand, and they're saying you have nothing in your hand. <laughs> you have <laughs> a like, picture no, no, no. Of a I have beans. <laughs> I have beans that you can't see, and they're magical. And only I have them. Yeah, and you can't see. Yeah, you're right. But here's it's even the dumber funny than thing. Not All you have to do to anyone who looks at you and says, "I have an invisible magic beans," you can just say, "Mine are better." I have stuff. <laughs> I've got a double fucking handful. Oh, of did you notice my uh, my radioactive magic beans? <laughs> <laughs> my invisible wheelbarrow full of beans, <laughs> <laughs> or this huge convoy? Bring it in, boys! <laughs> <laughs> Pretending to, to have trucks and <laughs> fucking cargo freight. Yeah. I just and, and look if, if 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 you could go into the court of law and you could argue that someone, someone look ownership implies that someone else can't fucking do stuff with it. That's yeah. what ownership means. I own this. You can't fucking come take this from me. If you That's did, true. I would call the police and they would come talk to you about it. And because it's only like $85, there'd probably be nothing done. But like, 
They're and then because you're a, then because you're a felon, I'll like say that you spit on me and they'll take you away. <laughs> and I'll and I will out. I will hold back the charges if he lets me get another goddamn hit from his vape. You know. Like, <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like 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 you cannot come take something that I own, and you yeah. you can't trespass in a place that I own. There's all sorts of laws that 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 say so. I don't understand how you can say you own an NFT if I can do whatever the fuck I want with it. I don't get it either. If I can, like, draw pride of having paid for it. Woody, you own your house. (laughs) Woody, you own your house. If I come there, you can murder me. You can kill me in your fucking living room because I've intruded. Right, right. I I can't sell your house. I can't say, hey, that house over there is mine. But I could. Give me some money. All right, move on in. Those people, I don't know who they are. Get them out of there. You you could sell a photo of his house. None of these things work. Could you sell an NFT of his house? I could sell photos of your house, just like I can. Dude, have. you should. You can make some, I wonder if any idiots would buy them. <laughs> just tell the NFT photos of to the house. photos of just, my house. Actually, just, just send Kyle's Woody. iPhone. All you got to do probably is like send Woody a package that's got a Polaroid camera in it and, and return postage. <laughs> <laughs> New Polaroid <laughs> for Woody. <laughs> yeah, I have just a putting them on a shelf. <laughs> look, look, you, you don't say anything. You just start stacking them up behind you. <laughs> <laughs> send it, send it. I'll make a video of the fire. <laughs> it, You're getting you... high off the fumes that come from burning a Polaroid camera. God knows what's in there that makes images. Do you guys think that these NFT things are going to be They're around kind of for a while, or do you think it'll be like a like? I think kind of the bottom is going to fall out. The people are going to move on to the next scam oh oh we talked about <laughs> can i play oh i gotta play. i sent um so we talked about ice poseidon on oh yeah uh, oh, PKN. On, on PKN. if you guys haven't caught pkm this week again. i highly recommend it check Jerry, out the it, link it, to it really the patreon check out the link to the patreon below you can get another the, there's another hour of us retards what, talking every week the, what's happening right now is, is pretty good i'd say we're about a seven and a half out of ten we had a nine on pkn it was real funny Anyway, I uh, we talked about Ice Poseidon a good bit, um, <laughs> and uh, I sent Taylor and Woody this this little audio clip. Uh-huh. Were you or someone you love affected by Ice Poseidon's crypto pump and dump pull the rug out money scheme? If so, call Cliff Hutchinson and Law, the Law Dog, one eight hundred Law Dog. <laughs> <laughs> 100 oh, no. I was sitting here after the show and I was just imagining like the class action lawsuit against Ice Poseidon head, headed up by Ooh. headed up of course by the head honcho himself Cliff Hutchinson mm-hmm. Uh, noted video game attorney and class action well, lawsuit I mean uh, we're in the we're in the middle of litigation I'm not at liberty to discuss anything but oh, uh, uh, yeah. oh will you be bringing any of um the other nefarious characters in the Ice Poseidon well, Cottery. The uh, <laughs> the 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 goal we're going for the death penalty. Oh, yeah. I was yeah, going to talk about some of the witnesses that you were going to call some character witnesses, perhaps that might know Ice and, and oh be yeah, called for. yeah. I was yeah. going to call all his his gang. You know, or, I, I have no idea. A- who he Asian called. Mike. Fire Asian Mike. Poseidon. Only Fire use Poseidon. me blade. Only use me blade. He's my key witness. Character witness. <laughs> Except like every time I ask him a question, he'll be like, I do not recall. And it's like, damn it. I believe him. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't. This was, this was like the worst blade. key evidence ever. Like, <laughs> blacked out at the like time. Blade, God damn it. My key witness point. is pissing himself. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, half his foot's left in the aisle. This is a trap. Is he still streaming? What's Blade up to nowadays? I have no fucking clue what that guy's up to. Kyle knows something. <laughs> yes, he does. Let's let him finish his laugh cough. <laughs> Did we talk about? <laughs> Did we talk about when they made him Hitler on here? Did I tell you guys yeah, about them making I, him Hitler? I think you sent me like the video clip. Yeah. Okay, so last time I saw Blade and Fast Forward, then was. He was so passed out drunk that he could barely resist mm. them gluing a Hitler mustache to his upper lip and a wig to the top of his head and making him into Adolf Hitler. And then like <laughs> seemingly like the next day he got blacked out drunk again. And you know how you'll like take like a can of beer and, and like shotgun it, right? You'll take like car keys, and, like pop it, yeah. like kill the thing. They did that to him 
but with a can of spray paint. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Dude, anything to catch a buzz. <laughs> Which so, is me. So the goal, the goal is to make him into Pepe the Frog, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they take this whole can of spray paint and they're just like, boom! <sighs> And they like insta paint his whole face. I think they could have used the spray part. They wanted. He's resisting Woody. We don't have time. <laughs> I don't just, know. The spray part is pretty good at painting. But... They are essentially raping his face with paint. <laughs> <laughs> he wants no part of any of this. And they wow. are and they are live streaming it to the audience. And he is begging them to stop. And it sometimes sometimes he'll like get enough energy in him to like really go to town on one of them and like and like. You know how it's like to hit a heavy bag. Like even mm -hmm. even like when we're in shape, it's it's like whoo. Oh, you wear out quick. Couple minutes and you're dead. Couple he's got seconds. a couple seconds. Yeah, he, he's got one of these in him, and he'll rough him up a little bit. But then he's like down for the count again. They're <laughs> on him. They're on him like fucking uh, like like Andy Dufresne. I'm very dangerous for ten out of ten seconds out of every five yeah. minutes. Yeah, like like every now and then he's like this like gorilla who's been who's been tranquilized and he just comes out of it and, he, <laughs> and he's on one of them. And and when they've accepted it, they they go don't hit back, don't hit back. Because like they'll let him beat on them a little because they know he's gonna go back down and then get right back on him with the paint. So they, when they're done, he is full on Pepe the Frog with like big white silver <laughs> outlines around his, and, and he wakes up and he's just like, "What is this? What is this?" Oh, looking back, the silver I think was the spray paint, and maybe they they I think they used like the glue you use to like paint a construction model <laughs> to like paint his face green because he wakes up and you know he's all green and shit, and it's all, all over his clothes. And, and like we, I know we've talked about his Pepe face before, but like <laughs> he, thank God they used green because <laughs> they gave him some big red Al Jolson nineteen seventeen lips. Yeah, in did. that. Yeah, brown would have been a bad look. That would have been, dude. Imagine like, like that being a prank you play on someone is like he's gonna wake up and it's gonna ruin his entire life. Oh, no. he's, gonna, he's gonna wake up with black. We used sharpie paint. It's it's acrylic. Paint, it's gonna tear. It's either this is his look, look or he's got no face skin. <laughs> I don't watch a lot of Blade. Um, every now and then someone goes, "Have you seen what happened with Blade?" And I'm like, "No." And like, and then they send me the link. That's this is how it goes down yeah um <laughs> so like i don't i don't know what he's been up to lately but i would bet real money that he has done blackface before actually let me google only use me blade blackface oh, wait, let's take not. bets let's take bets i i have two and a half dollars says he <laughs> not the full five don't go nuts two and a half dollars say no blackface oh, hold on i'll say five dollars uh if if someone else painted it on him, does that count or no? Oh yeah, it counts. Oh, that makes this way harder. Uh, I'm still gonna go. No, it has to be a different answer. No, he hasn't. I think he's done it. I think he's done it. So two fifty to each of you is what I'm going to do. All uh, right. That way, I'm out five dollars. Only use me play blade black face. Only use <laughs> me blade black face. This is a black fun game. <laughs> Come on, no. Come on. I, I'll look up and see. I, I'm looking like I'm I'm digging through the the internet. Nope. I'm I, seeing a lot of pictures of Blade, and a, and some of us reacting to him as well. Oh yeah, I, yeah this is weird. Isn't that crazy where that happens? Like we watched the Ice Poseidon like uh, pump and dump scam crypto thing, and then there's like me talking to him about it. Oh yeah, the, I, when uh when Kyle. Was like, uh, oh, he looked like Pepe. I looked at only Easy Blade Pepe face. The third result is a PKA highlights video with the photo of, <laughs> of Blade there as we're all laughing and making fun of him for it earlier. Oh, poor like, guy. Well, I, it doesn't look like he's done blackface. I will. Yes! I, I only have to pay. I only have to pay you if no one puts blackface on him this week. <laughs> no, no, this is bullshit. You can't. You can't conscript an Taylor? army of racists. <laughs> To do Taylor. this for you, tell that oh. to the tell that to the president of the United States, Taylor. You can absolutely constrict conscript an army of racists to do your bidding. Damn it, you're right. Speaking <laughs> of blackface, did you guys see the Joe Rogan N bomb compilation? No, I did see oh. some of those. It was dude. Let me lay it out there for the audience. Um, 
it seems like people are attacking Joe Rogan. I don't know this. I'm not a big conspiracy guy. It almost seems organized. Like like every it week. It's they're, obviously they're, organized. Uh, they're, they're frustrated about him platforming some cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs anti-vax person. And uh, one of them in particular, like he was on Joe Rogan's podcast and he sounded pretty credible. Who he was has it? A pretty, I can't. I'm terrible with names, but he sounded pretty credible and he had like a real respectable academic background. And you're like, shit, maybe I should listen to this guy. Same guy was on Alex Jones podcast the week before. It was all new world order elites, fucking vampire pedophiles trying to get you. And then he goes on Joe Rogan's podcast and he really kind of had me you know, convinced for a second. All right. Anyway, everyone's mad at Joe Rogan. Well, someone put together an N-bomb compilation of Joe Rogan just N-bomb, N-bomb, N-bomb. And it, it seemed to be 80% storytelling other people like then she said and bomb and he said and and then they come along and start calling me and bomb and and it really wasn't him using yeah. the the n word in a really like in a in a way that is attacking instead it's him like relating times he's heard the and I get it I get it I've learned that you can't tell a story of what someone else said oh you can you can you just have to be black to do it and not you know get fired. Uh, it, it's against the rules. You can't use the N bomb if it's in the song. You can't sing along to the N bomb. Can't sing the song. N no, you can't do can these we, things. We... All of these N bombs Hang were on, taken out of context. Kyle, word, I'm word. trying to tell you this. Kyle, wait. If you were half as smart as a white person, you'd understand that this was taken out of context, and that he's not the racist they're making him out to be. What? <laughs> What did you just say? <laughs> I'm sure he delivered it wrong, Kyle. I'm sure it was a longly delivered joke. It was stepping <laughs> on my punchline. I'm like, <laughs> stop it. I mean, I, yeah, I, I saw that compilation too, and it's so just like just grasping at straws. It's like it's either telling stories or like being like, I'm gonna say it. And like like a like a joke thing. Like he's not like, and then this blank came into the store I was in, and it's not for then it's like, no, that didn't happen. Cause mm -hmm. if that happened, no one would like him. Cause people don't tend to like people who act like right. that. But yeah, just just a railroading of him. It's it's so funny. Where they're like, dude, you jump. And I'm not even like a big Joe Rogan fan. Like, I don't, I don't listen to I listen to maybe two episodes a year if I see someone interesting. And it'll be it's just funny when like Anderson Cooper, someone who curates their guests and who has, you know, it's a it's a manufactured dialogue where they know what they're going to say prior to it. Nothing's really discovered. Nothing is is hashed through. It's just clips for three minutes. And their hatred of him is like, oh, he's, he's pushing all this stuff. And it's like like he's he's having open form conversations with people for like four hours. And like, that's the, the problem. Like, it's it, it's I'm ridiculous to go after Joe Rogan, of all people. Like, he's a fucking UFC guy. Oh, I don't I. That, well, the you podcast is bigger the than the yeah. You lost me in the end there because Joe Rogan does make news and Joe Rogan does influence opinions. That's um, fair. Yeah. And and he does do it irresponsibly. I watch him. I don't actually watch the full length podcast. I watch a lot of highlights. Does he have any? And What's I, his responsibility to not talk to people that he finds interesting? I don't know. It is very difficult. He made a pretty effective counter argument when he was like, you know, what's true and what's not? There was a time when... If you said that cloth masks don't work, you were an asshole conspiracy theorist. No, Zach, we can't show Joe's video. <laughs> now, now you can't. There was a time when if you said, that, I don't know, he had a couple good examples of like, you know, things that we all agreed were indisputable truths. And now they're not. Oh, uh, that it came from a lab. There was a time that if you said that COVID came from a lab, you, you were get banned off of the Twitter. Room. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> sure. Now, I, I don't know if it came from a lab, but I know that it seems like there's legitimate uh, evidence agreement amongst honorable people there, right? It's not just a weird conspiracy anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, you know, Joe lists all these things like, you know, you couldn't say this. I said it and now you can say it. Who's the, uh, what's the truth anyway? I was like, all right. Um, I don't know. Joe's a newsmaker. I am in don't yeah. understand where his responsibility should be. He, he doesn't have, he doesn't have a responsibility to do it. And like if it, anytime there's a battle, we were about to have a crazy person on tonight. All right. We're not responsible for any of that nonsense. He was going to say, he, you know, he was going to say some crazy shit. 
yeah. he's a crazy person. Uh, probably. He probably would have said some wild stuff. Like every platform for being a crazy person. He was going to say something crazy. We're not responsible for that shit. No, we just want to talk to someone that's going to give good content. Yeah, and that's what, and Joe, that's Rogan what does. Joe Rogan does. That's his fucking job. Uh, the rules for Joe Spotify, are different than us. Spotify yeah, paid I mean, him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, really, think of it like Joe, this. What Joe you like, actually what has responsibility because they paid him like a hundred million dollars to like make good content, and that's his job. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but I mean, Shane, I, they removed how many episodes of his did they uh, pull down? I heard thirty-eight, but we there's, couldn't land on the. There's number. dozens of episodes. There, a lot of episodes. Yeah. That's a lot of episodes to remove for wrong think. Wrong think. I, That's I what haven't it heard is. that term before. Yeah, uh, he's, it's, it's Orwellian. I I really do struggle with it because Joe takes wrong think, I guess, a new word for me, and elevates it to a uh, like an I don't know an honorable place on his platform. It they've it, removed 110 episodes. 110. 110, dude. That's like how many episodes does he have? It's Over in the thousands, thousand. but like 110, yeah. that's a shit ton. It must be. Oh, but thank God it'll at stop at 110. <laughs> 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 thank God there won't be a whole new crop of things to remove. And they won't remove episodes of Sonny and they won't remove Simpsons and Family Guys. And like they already do that. I don't want to be the guy that uh, that's like the censorship guy. That's never seems like the good guy. It's always the bad but, guy. <laughs> yeah, right, right. You know, the book burners are never the people that go down in history as the yep. good guys. <sighs> I still worry that like irresponsible information can hurt people. And I, I don't know how to get it all right. I don't think there is a way to get it right, but you need more independent voices and shows like who decides that. Decides what's irresponsible information. Well, who decides it is the mainstream media and big tech platforms because they can decide unilaterally what is and isn't allowed speech. And so if something they find, not over like, on like chaotic.com, the, uh, not over on chaotic, but like, <laughs> but what sponsors, like Taylor, let everybody know that chaotic.com is our, no, like, wait, <laughs> Woody hit the nail on the head with it. Like, like the, the censorship shit is, but well, I, I don't even want to get into a big, big thing. It's not that far. Oh, if only we had time. <laughs> if, if only we had time for it. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's annoying seeing like, it's one, it's a dude with a podcast that is wildly popular. Fair. But the mainstream media, big tech, like all of these platforms, like use their weight to push, like as they always have. Like they they've banned people ideologically for for years. That's nothing new. But like this whole, and then the and then those same parties will host conversations on CNN and Fox or whatever about how do we how do we make sure that the stupid peons who aren't CNN uh, correspondents how do we make sure that they believe what they are told and they're not looking for things outside of uh, their purview like that's the, the 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 vibe I get when I watch that shit where it's like these stupid peons are too dumb to think for themselves they can only be allowed to have a restrictive diet of information can I change topics <laughs> yeah, okay. of course so my friend Mitty, as some of you know, is a crab cop. He is uh, <laughs> one of the men and women of crab the and seafood law enforcement cop. over at a uh, rather large store. Um, he is in loss prevention, and uh, he puts his life on the line every day uh, to make sure that seafood does not get uh, taken out of the store without being paid for first. Thank God. He's keeping those he crab put, prices down. He's a hero. He's ready to throw hands, and he's authorized to do so. Uh, so... <clears throat> he has moved up. I, I don't think that's true. <laughs> I think he's not allowed to touch it, but he can hold your shopping cart. If they th if they strike him in any way, he is allowed to unleash the full fury upon them. If, if he if he kills them, Kyle, is it like that whatever that Nicolas Cage movie is where his hands are deadly weapons? And so yes. he has so he has, air. To, he, has air. Air where he has to go it's to prison. Con air scenario. <laughs> yeah. No. Mitty is look, you, you joke. Here's the best part. So Mitty has, he is a rising star amongst the crab cops. Okay. He has been plucked out of the choir as, as they say. And, and, and is he's been elevated. Skills? Huh? Is it his gaming skills? His ability to watch all those monitors at once and detect yes. small movements. He's, it, he, it's also his profiling skills. He says the other guys will be watching some little old lady who's clearly trying to decide between like two fruits uh -huh. instead of like the guy with like the oversized coat. Over Midi, there, like, like peacemaker knows a profile of a person who might steal. He knows he knows the nefarious Young characters Asian in the neighborhood. Men. Mostly mostly Taiwanese fellas. Yeah, the the 
the Bangkok boys. Um, they've been coming <laughs> in. <laughs> um, uh, also, a, a you different cannot Asian stop us gang. from stealing your crab. <laughs> yeah, they, they love God, seafood. Uh, they got a hankering for it. So crab is very expensive. I didn't know it was this, that that expensive. I really didn't. I don't eat a lot of crab, I guess. But it's it can get a shopping cart full of crab is like thousands of dollars, I guess. Anyway, Mitty's so good at crab copping laying his hands on these folks before they can get out of the parking lot that he's been mm-hmm. elevated, plucked from the choir. They want him downtown, main office, head store. They want him heading up security down there. But first, they're training him up, all right? They've sent him to crab cop school. He's being trained by this ex-special forces guy who's, who's showing him, like, <laughs> all sorts of, uh, like, judo and jujitsu. They're doing holds, pressure strikes. <laughs> pressure <laughs> like, strikes. Yeah, chokes. Really? Yes. He's 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 like he's like if their neck's bent like this and you hit them at the base of their skull, you can render them unconscious. <laughs> like he's showing them all this crazy shit. <laughs> he's like, I don't buy it. I don't, I don't either. I don't either. I don't think it's Mitty true. Like, Mitty's, Mitty's like, but he threw me on the floor and like, I mean, I'm a grown man, but I needed to gather myself for a minute. <laughs> you know, like like he just moved along like like nothing had happened. And, and, but but I needed a minute. Wait, was this this was in so a class? Hard. Yes. Okay. He demonstrated on Mitty. He like slams Mitty to the ground, and Mitty's huge. And like he the is. rest of the class is like, that's probably why he picked Mitty to like show the whole class that like, um, you could slam somebody bigger than you because the teacher isn't as big as Mitty. Mm-hmm. And so like Mitty's big le- right now. He's learning hand to hand skills. Right, he's already got his profiling down. And I was, but I was like, Mitty, you need a weapon. He's like, oh. They're giving us batons and pepper spray and gas. He's like, I'm gonna have a whole belt of things. Like we're get, they gassed him today. I, I haven't heard from him, but they gassed him today. Nice. Wait, it, like that conversation. <laughs> 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 the conversation with instructor, and he held it. <laughs> yeah, I would. So I would love once this show's over. I'm getting into the the crab defense game. Dude, I, here, I told Mitty that yeah, right. every time they try it or for good. Every time they ask for a direct deposit, I just insist in being paid in goods. Like from, from, <laughs> I'll take the crab. I'll take the crab. It's like, like you're, no, no, you're, you're, you're like a dirty up cop. the bathroom. It's terrible. <laughs> you know when like the dirty cop makes the big drug bust, but he's yeah. gotta like punch that bag up with his knife and get a little bit of it. That's you with the crab. You're at the- just it's raw, Taylor. It's raw. <laughs> you take a little bit of the crab, you put it in this fluid, you mix it, and it turns blue. It's the purest crab you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> <laughs> I like to put a little bit of chili powder on my crab. <laughs> I was going to say. Yes, are you retarded? <laughs> 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 what was, what's that meme? Like, Jesse, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I, I need to rewatch Breaking Bad so I can give a more accurate appraisal of it compared to Ozark, because it's been years since I've long. given it a full watch through. Yeah, Dude, way it's long. Six, it's it's, it's, long. I just looked it up. It's it, earlier sixty-two hour long episodes. You know what season it is when that thing happens where Walt runs the the guys over the gangsters? That's like season three. That's like three years into the show before something crazy hardcore happens. Oh, I thought it was earlier than that. Three years into the show, and he's still like getting competent. Yeah. No, no, uh, th- there was uh, Paco or Pepe, whatever the fucking yeah, yeah. Mexican oh, drug dealer in the first the, season. That yeah, 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 that, that was, was that was a violent thing. So that was the first yeah. kind of intense thing that happened. Yeah, Snake, I, what was his name? I don't fucking know. Gapo. Paco? Paco? Pancho. <laughs> yes, Pancho. And Austrian. maybe his name was Taco, eh? Wait, wait, wait. And Tanya. Actually, in Better Call Saul, the guy's name is Nacho. Nacho uh, Vargas. Well, Nacho is a name Sophia. in Mexico based on uh, Nacho Libre. Have you um, seen that? I've, you know what the problem with nachos is? I've never yeah, had... Yeah, there's no Mexican... good distribution. No, every time I get them from a Mexican <laughs> restaurant, it's just like a lasagna. They've like made a Mexican lasagna. Like Those chips are, are all sog- soggy in there and like... Just it, it's like well, a lasagna. Here's You're my problem with nacho I, I, I want to grab a chip with some stuff Let me on lay it. this out. It feels like when they want to make the nacho grande bigger, they go taller. But that doesn't increase the amount of toppings you get. It just increases the amount of chips. The toppings is the whole point. Yeah. If you want to increase the size, you need to go wider with this thing. Then you'll actually have a meal that more people would want. Hmm. It's an interesting idea. I yeah. don't like it. You don't like it? What makes you not like it? I just don't think I've ever had a good 
nacho ever. This they're, is they're, the nacho they're, grande with like the salsa and the, the really complex toppings on top. Olives and I want some olives, some onions, tomatoes. That's it. That's just I mean, I'm, 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 just go go wide with it. Don't yeah, go. Throw, throw don't, all... don't give me a foot of chips and then some topping. What kind of bullshit is that? You just I, I didn't know yes. a cup of tostitos. Yes. No, I want a fucking thirty six inch pizza dish full of nacho grande. That is this how is you increase the volume. this is the strongest point you've ever made. <laughs> look, <laughs> look at that, that bullshit look at that right trash. there. Look at that's you. Can, you can't even begin to count the number of chips on the bottom that have nothing there. Ex nothing. Dude, the whole center has nothing. Is that supposed to be at a party? This is a, this is a commercial. That's a screenshot from the commercial. They thought this looked good enough to be in a shot. I guarantee this is in the nachos commercial. It's probably a beer commercial or something. <laughs> what the fuck is this commercial for? You must be eighteen or older to enter. Oh, then what? then it's probably like a foreign booze commercial or a nicotine one. I don't fucking know. Delaware, Hawaii. Okay, well I don't know how. But regardless, the nachos clearly Taylor led us astray. No, no Was nachos. It? Not I think about it, if you put it in a big giant dish. And then you had someone dedicated, you know, if you go to a nice place and you order nachos, they should have kind of a fucking you know, established rule of every piece gets a little meat and then a little thing and a little something else. Like, I don't care if it takes longer. You I don't know, care if it does, costs a little more. Make sure every piece does is that. even. Socialism a, among nachos. You joke, but there's a place that does that. Yeah, I'm not joking. It would be a great idea. It's called Chili's. Chili's does that? Chili's nachos. They take a big chip. And they make each chip a little tostada type thing where they like put the perfect amount of like refried beans and cheese and sour cream and everything. It's like every chip is loaded down. And then there's like 25 of them like on the plate. So you just like pick them up ready to go. It's yeah, awesome. that's, a, that's a great move. That's I didn't know Chili's movie. did anything. <laughs> I got... They won't wear gloves no matter how much you ask, though. It's Do they disgusting. finance? Because I'm no, I'm kidding about that I'm part. But yeah, yeah. So like, ready to go. See, like that's. You know, that's not the amount of food I'm looking for, but it's it's, <laughs> right. it's kind it, of like it, it's wait, a nice wait. even distribution. Hang on, Taylor. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sure. Did you want more than that? Yes, obviously. Two that's a dozen one. large nacho chips. How big are these things? That's not big. large. Are those Look slice of pizza size? Because if not, I'm going to need a little, <laughs> a little more. <laughs> Look at the drink in the background. Those aren't large. Those are tiny oh, size. these are that's these like are a little... bite. This is what I get. This is what I get before my appetizer. Wet it's my whistle. <laughs> <laughs> this is oh. my pre-appetizer. And I'd send this back to the kitchen. I'd be like, these are these aren't the right. These aren't fresh jalapenos. Give me the ones with the seeds in them. Give me the ones with the heat. I can see seeds. Look, those are good. Where? Nachos. I can see one fucking thing with seeds. No, two. I can see two with seeds. How many seeds do you want? I just I wouldn't mind if they sprinkled some in afterward. Because that, you know, there's there's more spiciness in the jalapeno seeds. I know there's more spice in the jalapeno seeds. Well, what's wrong with my point then? You didn't have a point. You're just randomly pontificating about <laughs> not at this point. Uh, no, it, I did make a point. It's just it's so thorough you can't disprove it. So that the even distribution of not so top nacho toppings would revolutionize the or the uh, appetizer game. Think about it. Because what's your now favorite appetizer. Oh, recently I've been on a huge potato skins kick. Every time I go out, I hope they have potato skins. That's a That's healthy a one. one. Yeah, no. no. <laughs> I, I, uh, I usually go with the shrimp co cocktail. Um, it is hard to uh, be be shameful after eating a shrimp shrimp cocktail, mm -hmm. other than the fact that you just ate twenty four dollars worth of shrimp and you are not full at all. Yeah, uh, they are good though, and it's a nice little healthier yeah. pick. Yeah, it's just shrimp, boiled shrimp, and like tomato sauce, essentially. Yeah, very sugary tomato sauce, but I mean... I don't think there's sugar in there, is there? Oh, I don't know. I cocktail thought that sauce? cocktail sauce had more sugar than marinara. I think it's got some sort of like spicy shit in there. I didn't think it had sugar. I don't care if it fucking does. Either it's way, a, shrimp cocktail, that's a solid pick. That's one I'll... I like when I go to a, like a party or a get-together and they have shrimp cocktail. cocktail. Yeah. yeah. I, you know, I like that line in Ozark when um, he, he's like, enjoy the party. I spent $10,000 on crab alone. <laughs> I, I thought that was that was such a cool flex to me. That was such a cool flex. I, but in the I was they the acting is so good. I'm sorry we're drifting back into Ozark, but in that <laughs> moment I remember thinking like I would have no appetite. I would have no there's no way I could eat a bite of food. I just picked brains out of yeah. my wife's hair. I, I I I was I I might still die, but probably not. But I thought I was gonna die like 10 minutes ago. 
I, I couldn't eat a bite of food. I'm not going to eat it all day. Tomorrow I might eat. Maybe. I, I, I would have. I want I some tea. <laughs> <laughs> I would have used that as an excuse where it's like, just, just, you may as well die full, you know? What? <laughs> you're like, you depend like, you're like, Oh, believe yeah, me, I'm going to I'm going to eat. I'm going to eat good stuff. I'm going to eat a strong point. If I'm afraid I'm dying tonight, I'm not counting calories this afternoon. No. It's fucking ridiculous. It's time I'm for talking. me to like try hard drugs. You guys, and, like, yeah. your, you guys don't lose your appetite oh. when you're like in super stressful situations. Oh, like, super like when stressful I was, situations. When I was about I, I want to eat more the night, like like the night before I went to prison. I did not have an appetite. Oh, uh, <laughs> no, dude. if I'm I, I if hear... I'm stressed, I, I just like ritually just keep eating and eating like as stress a stress eating and stress fasting are both things hmm. uh i have definitely done the stress fasting thing before mm -hmm. i've done the stress fasting thing but it always goes like one day and then the next day it's like you know catching up and undoing all that but yeah my stress response is definitely more to like just sit and kind of eat and try and take my mind off it than sit there with no food which yeah. would be a much healthier Sometimes weight response. I, I've been so stressed that I can't eat because I just feel nauseous all the time with stress. I can always eat. <laughs> <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> I can, man. I can. I can. I, like, can't I, I, I was. I was I going can't to like imagine uh, what that's like. <laughs> I, went to, I went to like a like I obviously like besides the family split up and everything. So I had to go to like multiple Thanksgivings, Christmases, and everything. And like this year, like went to a Thanksgiving or no, I was like. Yeah, it was like a Christmas celebration. Ate full meal, and then like immediately went to another one, and like some like some aunt there. It's my wife's side of the family. Was like, oh, you have to eat something. I'm like, ah, I just ate, and she's like, we made a plate for you. It's like, oh, oh shit. Well, <laughs> I'm not gonna. It's etiquette. I have to eat all the toasted raviolis she put on that plate. <laughs> <sighs> oh, some of these have cheese in them. You're not just doing pork meat. Oh, dude, oh, yeah. I I get so tempted by that. I, I don't think I've ever had like a pre-dinner dinner, <laughs> but sometimes it's like, man, dinner's not till six, but I got the makings of dinner. Like I could reheat a chicken breast and mm -hmm. and I don't know a potato, and then I wouldn't be hungry at all until dinner. I I could do both. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then pass. Then you get to dinner and you're full <laughs> of potato. Probably would, but I. It, Man, the pre-dinner dinner sounds. Silly. There's a point where, like, the cost of candy isn't what stops you from buying candy. Yeah, and it's it's weird to live there. How did fuck? There's a point. You know, I it, it's weird. <laughs> that's that's like, such a funny way to put it. <laughs> yeah, that that happens. And um, I guess I remember for some reason when I when I turned sixteen and you know I had a car and money, I didn't immediately go candy shopping. Mm -hmm. Now that I think about it, like, like, right? like, like there's this weird thing that happens between like 13 and 16, where like at 13, if you gave me a car, <laughs> we're going candy shopping. <laughs> <laughs> that might be top of the list. That's probably number one. When I was 10, I figured out that I could uh, hop on the side of the train as it went by and it took me to a 7 Eleven. And it was like, <laughs> I'd like hear it coming. <laughs> Start running for the train, <laughs> jump on the side. They, they have these ladders on the side. I, yeah. I couldn't run as fast as the train could go, but I could run fast enough that I could grab the ladder as it goes mm -hmm. by, like close the speed gap. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you, like, you run, 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 you hold the ladder. And then, while it's not smooth, my memory of it is like suddenly you're gliding. You're gliding along the rails. You're no longer running on the ballast, which are these mm -hmm. little rocks next to the train track. And it's like, fuck, little Woody jumped on that train and now he's on his way to buy candy. It's a glorious <laughs> moment. What, what was your Came candy? A box car child just to go get some candy. That's my point. Fuck, I but forgot about 16, the box car children. At 16, I'm thinking like, let's see if I get some pussy in this car somehow. Yeah, and then candy uh, later if there's time. <laughs> <laughs> I remember like when I first got my license, like the, I, I was the, like opposite of you, not with candy. Like candy wasn't really, it's never been my thing, but like the ability to like, I remember like every M &M. day on the way to school, it was like just knowing like, cause before that it was like, dad, mom, can, I, can we pull off? Can I get a soda? Can I get a snack? And he'd be like, no. But like, then it was like, no, every day guys, like with my carpool, like I'm going to get in my diet, talk to pepper. I'm going to get my little bag of like peanuts or something. And it was great. It was just a, a fun little thing for like the first year of my license, just being like, 
mm, I want a snack and you'll get a snack. You'll get free if you want. <laughs> <laughs> and I would like, I just show up back home. Like, I would just go drive for the sake of it. You know how it is being 16. So yes. I just like go out and drive around, hit like three gas stations for no reason, just like in a big loop and just come back with six mini bags of pepperoni pizza combos. And in a bunch of Arizona iced teas, which I thought were not bad for you at the time. <laughs> <laughs> because the can was attractive? Yeah, no, because, because, it, is, like, because, because it had leaves on the can. <laughs> so, <laughs> you, think of like, you think of like herbal tea. You don't yeah. think of like, you think of and, something that's like some sort of like Chinese herbal mm -hmm. medicinal tea. What and it was only like, a dollar. So cheaper than everything. And you got more liquid. So. Arizona iced tea is cheaper? Yeah, it was a dollar years ago i don't know what it is now it's I haven't cheaper had one than so water yeah yeah water's not as cheap as it should be individually bottled like i can buy for like four dollars 24 of them or for three dollars one like what the or a dollar and a half one yeah what how is your math so off i, I, I remember I, I, I was oh never mind no do, do you remember <laughs> those arizona iced tea arnold palmers yeah I, With, I order on uh, our Palmer's. That's my um, go-to restaurant right now. They're great. Yeah, I love. Good. I haven't had one in years, but I remember Why? like think. I just I haven't thought of it, but I was I looking up Arizona take. iced tea to see if they were still a dollar, and I saw the Arnold Palmer one, which is for people that don't know, that's half iced tea, half lemonade, which is a tremendous combination. It tastes great, and I I can still remember like picking up like five. 24 ounce cans of those and like going home and playing whatever game I would probably cod four at the time and like getting like ill while I was playing because I was drinking so much Arnold Palmer and I was like you can oh why do I feel sick it must be something I ate last night it, it can't be that that's tea that's that's tea that's what all the Chinese one of my good for one of my favorite drinks is to take um I it's like lemonade light or something it's like 25 calories for eight ounces and mix that with unsweet tea and like sweetener and make like a mm -hmm. an Ar like arnold palmer's i'll stick those in my water bottle and take it to the gym sometimes they're so good really i'm gonna good. damn i don't have any iced tea here or lemonade so i'm over two <laughs> <laughs> so lemon? you keep saying iced tea you're having unsweetened iced tea, right? Yeah, it's unsweet yeah. iced tea and uh, lemonade. Well, they yeah, I buy when it I at the restaurant. They ask me, you know, sweet or unsweet? It's like unsweet tea. That's the point. Mm -hmm. It tastes good like lemonade, but it has the calories of lemonade and water. Pretty mm -hmm. much, yeah, yeah, absolutely, it does. And it's got ca uh, some caffeine in it, so it's actually burning some calories. You're making money on this thing. Making money. <laughs> <laughs> You're they should advertise good. it that way. Like, like sir, that Coca Cola. Will add 175 calories. This espresso <laughs> will subtract eight. <laughs> I guess this it's cocaine. probably something like that. Oh, I have you bouncing? I wonder what the the calorie burn of cocaine is. It's got to be pretty substantial, right? Ooh, yeah, I have no idea. The the, the substance oh. calorie burn is is interesting. But before we get to that, we're going to hear from a wonderful sponsor. A couple Chaotic. of wonderful sponsors. Yeah, chaotic.com. When you want to see some, this episode is brought to you by chaotic.com. Are you tired of watching people nearly killed on YouTube, not getting off? Go to chaotic.com. You can find people murdered, shot. No mere maimings. No. Lathe accidents <laughs> abound. Read. Go to, no, this isn't a real ad. <laughs> yeah, lathe accidents. Blue Chew. Uh, fall is here and we can all use a stiff breeze. Talking about your dick. That's right. This episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. Guys, confidence can take you far in life. It also helps in the bedroom, especially when it comes time to step up to the plate. That's where Blue Chew comes in. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. You can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever an opportunity arises. The process is simple. Sign up at BlueChew.com. Uh, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. The best part is it's all done online, so no visit to the doctor's office, no awkward conversation, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA and prepared and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package. So if you could benefit from extra confidence when it's time to perform, Blue Chew can help. Also, we've got a special deal for our listeners. Visit BlueChew.com and use our promo code PKA at checkout for free. Just pay the $5 in shipping and you'll get three free pills, if we all remember correctly. That is BlueChew.com, promo code PKA to get your first month free. Uh, just pay the shipping. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. And thank you, BlueChew, for sponsoring the podcast. Thank you so much, 
for, for sponsoring the podcast. It's so funny they put that in there. But, um, that in there for us yeah, to that's read. in there. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Yeah, but thank you for the. They're the highest quality dick pills you can get. Wonderful. They work fast. They they even they they taste nice. They taste kind of like candy Dude, when you're eating it. I, mm-hmm, yeah. A little candyish. And so go on, <laughs> go down below, check that out. Uh, code PKA. Get the first three pills free. Just pay the five dollars in shipping. Get a very hard dick, and you know what is. You know what hard dicks are the best at doing? Busting. And and you're going to need that extra bust potential. Your cock is at is at magnificent proportions now from the blue chew. Let's make that load mirror the enhanced proportions of your cock. Let's get you some lock and load. Let's get you some lock and load. Check that out. Link below. Use code PKA 20% off. Also 20% off any of the other wonderful products on Derek's website. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, oh, one of the th- my favorite things about lock and load that I'm discovering, the pre-cum. The pre-cum. It, pre-cum used to be a drop, barely a, a thing. Now, it's a squirt. Oh, now I'm fucking leaking. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I Kyle, like you're muted. <laughs> I, 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 like, I, I don't know. I, I, I am legitimately super physiological with regards to this, and uh, it's kind of neat to have like a, a, a little squirt. Like, aha, a thing just happened right there. No, oh, yeah, it's... it's... <laughs> It's weird because I've never had that. Like, and you're just like, and I think that's the Pygeum that Kyle and I insisted that we include <laughs> because it creates it. We did. I remember, I remember the, t- I think Kyle, am I wrong? Can you correct me? I think it was the Pygeum that he was like, I don't know if we need this hundred percent. And you and I were like, the Pygeum has to be fucking in there. I, I know we're working on getting the pills down, but we can't get rid of Pygeum that gets your prostate going. It creates pre I'm be honest with everybody. overall volume. It's nine pills a day. Four of them are Pygeum. Four of them <laughs> every day are nothing but Pygeum. That That's you probably taking. not true. Okay. It's, it's, it's 100% not true. <laughs> true. Four of the pills you're taking a day, half the fucking formula is Pygeum. Okay. This is black this root Pygeum <laughs> mind. No, we have to pay abos to go into that area of the outback where they, they used to like farm the asbe- asbestos, right? You ever seen that asbestos uh, mining thing they had out there in the outback where everybody got cancer and died? That no. is where the black root. <laughs> is that where it comes from? That's I don't think it, it does. From. I think it comes from the safe area of Africa. We all know and love. <laughs> the, <laughs> what, what's it called again? Uh, it's it, hard goes, to it goes by many names, and it is hard to pronounce. <laughs> oh, they, they, the natives of there say it's disrespectful to say it on podcasts. Yep. It's true. So Only a native of, of that land may speak its name. So get the lock and load. Get yourself your vitamin E, your zinc, your selenium, your vitamin D, Dude, your it's lecithin. Make sex more it's a lot of selenium. all the other ingredients in this wonderful thing. You're gonna bust, and you're gonna. You, I for me, I can't. Out. I can't make claims. I can just speak from my experience, and that is my orgasms are longer because I'm coming longer. You know how like. I remember when I used to do Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, our, our um, warm-ups were fucking ridiculous. All the crawling along and running and whatever. And some of the people I was with are like, our warm-ups are harder than their workouts. Bitches, my pre comes better than your cum. And and now you're getting shit talked by a 49 year old man on the internet and so what are you gonna do <laughs> about that for a few, days, <laughs> for a few more days <laughs> hold on to 48 for dear life. <laughs> 48 the last year of youth my birthday <laughs> presents are showing up in the mail <laughs> like i'm not 49 look at discounts for getting your prostate checked <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, i do need to do that <laughs> have you do you do that every year or do you bounce around with like, do like, you you commit to it three to five times a week? Maybe three to five <laughs> times a week. That that's a really funny bit. A guy that just won't <laughs> stop going to the fucking proctologist or whatever. <laughs> I'm I'm telling you, Doc. I'm worried. No, get two in there. <laughs> Sneak um. one. <laughs> you just want that finger. Oh, it's like uh, bring your own lube. It's like fucking. <laughs> imp- it's like fucking impractical jokers when they're giving myrrh. <laughs> multiple of those oh my Pushes god back on his hand that's so <laughs> brutal I w- i've been watching more of that show kyle have you watched much or are you on plot shows now i've watched a ton of it um good like, like and woody have you sorry kyle i just want to get woody have you watched impractical jokers yet no it's disney on hbo disney? max hbo oh. Max. yeah oh, that's why i couldn't find it on disney yep it's it's Crap. so funny hbo max i uh <laughs> There's a 
guy that works for us who logged in on our TV on HBO Max. So in one room in the house, we have it. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you got to watch it there. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know why I don't buy HBO Max. (laughs) Are you out of your goddamn mind? (laughs) (laughs) Just get HBO Max. (laughs) Dude, dude, this isn't one of those. Richest person on the show far and away. Buy fucking HBO Max. (laughs) How how in the world? (laughs) It's been like a decade now. (laughs) He's been free balling it since HBO Go. No, <laughs> HBO <laughs> Now. Literally, literally. <laughs> literally. Oh like, like it was, it was, it was Game of Thrones season two when Woody started ripping off. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally true. I don't know how I got it. I think back then I Googled for emails. I, I don't know. It, it way in the did beginning. You steal an identity? Like, what did you do? <laughs> you Google for you literally Google for like HBO Max logins, and you, oh, there'd wow. be like thirty-eight of them would come up. And by the time you got to nineteen, one would work. Holy shit! That's the cheapest thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> you, wait, wait, you could like I gotta. Instead of purchasing something that's like twelve dollars a month, you Googled free HBO Max, <laughs> and there was a list of, of of like emails and passwords, and you tried like 30 of them till one of them worked, and you were like, ha! Beat the system. Alright, all right. you really... No, I said there were 30 of them, and I hit on like 19. Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> what was your time worth? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's incalculable, really. I, I don't know. Time worth nothing. I've heard that phrase about like computers like linux like linux users oh. the phrase were like linux is only good if your time is worthless or something yeah like linux that. is only free if your time yeah it's only value. free <laughs> so yeah. there you go you know you're the computer guy <laughs> i'm like linux not good at keys because it's not, <laughs> it's not computer. i was uh I, I was watching more impractical jokers kyle and you know how they have like uh episodes where they'll collect the uncomfortable punishments and and put them together like it's so simple, and I thought of this one to bring up to you because you're an ex smoker. Murr, one of his punishments was he had to go into like the middle of New York in like a smoking section in the streets, and he had to walk up to people and steal their cigarettes out of their mouth and put them out in front of them. Oh, and then like, like a cup, like you see, like smokers, they're addicts to nicotine, and he just took their drugs, they get fucking furious. Like so mad. One guy wants to fight. Uh, he gets to one guy who's like, they they tell him like, if you get that guy's whole pack of cigarettes, the punishment's over. And so Mur <laughs> and and Mur is wearing like a seven hundred dollar, eight hundred dollar, like nice uh jacket. Yeah. And they're like try and tr-. he's like I don't know how to get the cigarettes. And so he goes, the guy's like, hey, we're about the same size, right? You give me your whole pack of cigarettes, you get this nice jacket. I'm not ripping you off. It's a very nice jacket. I don't want to do this. I just got it. And so then he, this is one guy's like looking around like, are you, you going to rob me back or something? Like what's going on? And then, no, he just got a random dude for a half a pack of like parliaments, got a $900 wow. jacket or something insane. How would you have responded though if someone if came up to you randomly, out mouth, took the out? cigarette out of your mouth and then ashed it on the ground? It depends so much on how many more cigarettes i have <laughs> because if i've got a full it's your pack, it's your last let, one let, let's say this i have an extra pack like like i, I did the two pack special right and saved yeah. the 222 and now i've got an extra in here hey what are you doing man uh yeah it's, <laughs> it's bad for me i know but gotta have them like that's how that goes <laughs> yeah. down if it's my last one and i needed that one Oh my God! We're screaming. <laughs> We're screaming in public. We're screaming in public. I'm trying to think of a way that this is theft somehow. <laughs> like, yeah, like, like, you're like trying to contact your attorney or something. Like, like I, I don't know what to do now. I'm not gonna throw hands because I'm a fucking felon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, but you know, you know what I mean. But but like Jesus, that would be like if, if you've ever smoked and you know like how stressful your day can be in work. Maybe and like like finally you get to go outside. Mm. I'm I'm picturing like a nurse. Like I know a lot of nurses who smoke. And like that smoking break is a big deal. Like, like they see some rough shit and then they go downstairs and they need a minute. And you take that cigarette out of that person's mouth. Like that, that, that little pressure release valve that they had. Yeah, that could go real poorly for you. That's a hard, that's a hard one. I would that's not a very want hard one. I saw I, even the ones where there's little things that are like weird with like men and women. 
Like there's there's some where they may, they get more points the more they touch the other person. Yep. But if you do it just right, you can touch a stranger a lot. If you're just like, yeah, 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 you're like, you know how it is, man. You like 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 touch them on the shoulder. Look, look, mm. look, you've been there before, and you sort of like do that thing where you like reach over and put like your palm on the like their shoulder like that. You're just like, hey, you've been there, right? Like like you're here, you're there, you're, and you can kind of like work that into a story. And and like, look, you're not gonna like love it, but like you can if the guys like. He's not going to respond violently, probably. Yeah. Right? If, if, the guys... if somebody did that to me, I would like, I'd be like, man, this guy's animated. He's pumped up. He's like trying to pull me into the story. I like this guy. I'd be okay with it. it. It's a friendly yeah. thing. But like one of them, they were like, if you touch his face, you're done. <laughs> and because he's already touched me on the shoulder a few times. And the guy is like trying to get away from him. And like, uh-huh. and he's just like, oh, yeah, yeah, I like your beard. He's got like a goatee thing going on. He's like, I like your beard. I want to grow one out, but I can't. Oh, can I? T- oh, yeah, it's really nice. And he's just like in this guy's go. <laughs> he really is in there, huh? And look, whether it matters or not, it's a black man's face he's touching. <laughs> the it black guy like goes, he, does. he smiles and doesn't move a bit. And he's like, yeah, it's nice, isn't it? While Murr or whoever it was is just like yeah. really giving it a like tug and, and like rub. And that, that's like, an easy like a one. Beard. Like he's like, down here. But touching the face is even easy by what they do. I remember they gave Sal. It was, it was just a, a challenge. They're like, all right. And they do it all in the middle of New York. Like mm-hmm. middle of New York, very social park areas. People are walking around, lot high density. Obviously, it's New York, and they were like, "All right, Sal, go out there, and we'll tell you what to do." And he does, and he's like, "All right, you got to find someone, and you got to kiss their abs." He's like, "What?" He's like, "Yeah, you got to find someone, and you got to get them to pull their shirt up and let you kiss their abs." And so, like, he's going around asking this people, is what and it's I train for. It's so uncomfortable, and he eventually finds someone, like some old man. Like, I think it's the old man's like face is even blurred out, which meant they approached him afterwards. Like, hey, do you mind being on the show? He's like, no, fuck <laughs> off. And so he's like, can I kiss your abs? And so then he gets on his knees in the middle of the park and <laughs> kisses this old That's man. How he did it? Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> they have to do it in the middle of the park. And no, because they, they, they know it's embarrassing and they do humiliate themselves, but they also make it more embarrassing to like yeah, that's for the pump show. it up. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the one of the most, one that I genuinely don't know if I could do. Because like if put to the test, like I could skydive, they could push me out of a plane. I would hate it, but I could do it. Mm-hmm. Like they put Sal as a punishment in an escape room, and uh, it was a fake escape room. And the escape room leader, like the worker there, before they went in, was like, "All right, we're gonna pick a leader for the group. Uh, <laughs> Sal, you're the leader, so you kind of organize everything." And it's him and like nine other random or eight other random people. Some they go into the room and they're like, "All right, Sal, you just keep finding clues, but at some point." You have to piss your pants. <laughs> and he's like, what do you mean? He's like, at some point, you need to figure out how to piss your pants because this punishment isn't over until your pants are soaked in piss. And so, and so he's like walking around, clearly stressed out as shit. Like, what What do you think about that clue? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Ugh. And so he, he like just goes and stands there and they're like, draw attention to yourself. Draw attention while you're pissing. And he's like, everyone, I have to go. Ugh. And he's standing on a chair so everyone can see him. And you can see him like trying to piss because your body doesn't want to piss your pants because it knows you're not by a toilet. And you just see like an afternoon at a baseball game beer amount of piss just soaking his khakis and then as soon as he does that he like tries to be like all right is that it and they're like no bud you got to solve the puzzle (laughs) (laughs) and so then they made him go around they're like we want you to be really involved see that woman see see that woman working on that puzzle i want you to walk up right behind her and help and so he's walking (laughs) behind people soaked in piss it is it is so goddamn embarrassing, but it is so <laughs> it is so fucking funny. Oh my god, I haven't seen that. Are one. they still making episodes? They so they, they are still making one episodes. One of them is leaving the show. Yeah, Joe, my my favorite guy on the show, one of the four. He, he's my Joe's favorite. Joe's bulletproof. Yeah, when, you look, can't humiliate that guy. The only time Joe loses is when the game is rigged against him. Mm-hmm. Because if they tell Joe to do something, he just fucking does it. So it, they'll be like, uh. Find a woman with a parakeet on her head. It's like, wait, what? <laughs> you lose. And it's like, well, all right, I guess. I guess, I guess fuck you because the game's yeah. rigged against me. Okay. Oh, what are you going to do to me at the end? Oh, you'll make me do a fashion show? I Tricks on you. I brought my own bikini. Like, like, he just doesn't care. Yeah. Like, 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 like he, he's, he's the one. He, he always care. reverses 
the punishment until like the audience no who's supposed to be cringing is like laughing with him at like the the absurdity. He's the one. He's what the one the that I told you had the fan rub him down with lotion, and the fan didn't realize that he's being recorded. The fan yeah. thinks he's recognized a TV show host in a park <laughs> sunbathing. Meanwhile, they're filming an episode. And he's and he's like, hey, would you rub me down with a suntan lotion? And it's SPF ten thousand. So he's painting him white. <laughs> he's it's white. like it's like zinc oxide. It's like, yeah, it's, it's, it's that stuff you only put on your nose when you're like fishing or like a lifeguard out yeah. of the water. Um, oh, who has the tattoos? Uh, oh, every my God. everyone. But so there was an episode. It was so that it's Sal, Murr, Joe, and Q. And Q, Sal, and Murr, they all tied for loser, which means that Joe won. So he got to pick the punishment. And he chose tattoos, and that was that one, which is the most brutal thing. And they kept but one of them to, has both. <clears throat> one of them has Jaden Smith on both thighs, though. That's the, who has that. That's Sal. Poor fucking Sal. He's the and, and like like it's funny. That say, reveal like, is is one of the funniest things ever because yeah, <laughs> like, 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 the they're in a unique position because because he just happens to have those two tattoos. He's he's a the the the, the trick the the way you win is you get someone to. You read an email out loud to them, and they and you have to get them to say, this, this is good to go, right? I should send it? Yeah. They have to say yes. So first of all, the email is like threatening someone's life <laughs> and telling them that he's not going to put up with their shit, and he's coming for them. And, and, and she, he, he's like, do you think I'm good to send it? Because hang on, let me explain. I, was, I tried to get a tattoo of my son, and I got this, and it's Jaden Smith. Yeah. That is not my son. This is my son. And it's just like, fucking pure like white blonde eyed <laughs> or blonde hair blue eyed kid handsome little kid and he's, she's like that is not your son i would be mad it's like you think it's worse they threw in a free tattoo if i go back they did this <laughs> he's like oh no <laughs> and they're both so the James. email's good to go right they're, they the other one's up. Smith he's too, like, by yeah, the way. Yeah, they're it. <laughs> oh, and like the, the email like... mentioned threat it, i think the email was like just so you know <laughs> I'll come for you and your family. It was something like that. It was like a scary yeah. threat. It'll, yeah, it, it, it'll, it'll, it's so disjointed always to be like, I'm coming for you. Watch your back. Take care. <laughs> like something like that. The, the, like the, the, funniest, the, the funniest thing about the tattoo reveal was they did it in the right order. And so like Q, who was at the time 38, lived alone and had three cats. His tattoo was a cat with around it. 38 lives alone, has three cats on his, <laughs> on his arm. And then Murr looks like a ferret, and so they put a ferret skydiving. And so it was like, oh, it has to do with you at least. And then Sal goes last, and he rips it off, and his response like Viscera is like, what's this have to do with me? <laughs> <laughs> it's so well done. Too. It's so, it, is, it is such a under-the-radar show because it's on True TV, but it is so fucking funny and when you're watching season one and the punishments are mild <laughs> like they even talk about in later things like interviews they're like yeah we the, the studio had so much control over season one they wouldn't let us hardly do anything and then we got more control over it uh i the the simple uncomfortable ones i think are more funny in some ways than like the intense ones like it, it was funny watching Murr skydive because you can tell that he genuinely had so, a true fear of it he talked about how before that in an interview crying. he was like yeah it, 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 we didn't show this in the episode but i locked myself in the bathroom at the skydiving location and i cried for about 20 25 minutes and then i came out and did it and yeah. but like one that was like worse for that like that i could imagine myself having a harder time doing was like having to walk around a cafe and close people's laptops I didn't mind that one at all. That's that so seemed, uncomfortable, dude. To me, to me, it, I, I would absolutely pull that one off. Like, like, like that one seems easy. Oh, it, I, just, the the, the really rude, it. uncomfortable ones are hard. You, like, like all you got to do is like shake your head, apologize, and 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 mention some vague rule or something, and walk away. And and there's not going to be anything said. You could just be like, "I'm so sorry." It's the new rule, and you could just like well, close their laptop gently and walk away. And no circumstance does anyone, even like a crazy person, have an issue with you. Oh, the, the, the I would only not have time, a problem with that one. The only time I saw them get Joe really good was when it was in like the Chinatown. His punishment was in the Chinatown area of New York. And, you know, they they told him the punishment was we told them that you are a classical uh, 
oboist or whatever the fuck. And so the, we told them, you're going to go up there and you're going to take that oboe or that you're going to take that clarinet and you're going to bang out a bunch of songs and stuff. <laughs> well, it was really, you know, the situation going on, which it was it was a made up situation. But the audience doesn't know that they were in Chinese talking about the death of a young prodigy and his clarinet was up there on display in remembrance of him and that no one will ever play it again out of respect (laughs) for for this young savant. And so they call him up. He's like, and the person's like, and then he like, he's like, he gets up there and walks up and they're like, all right, buddy, time to play. And so he just grabs the clarinet from the ceremony thing and starts going, (laughs) and like, you can see all of the Chinese people in the audience, like livid at the dis, like, the, the, the disrespect it's just the disrespect and he keeps because, going because going. they probably think that this guy is playing it poorly on purpose as a mockery to a dead yeah, man they have no idea but like that was and it's not as bad because at the time you just think you're making an ass of yourself but like afterward it's like oh, oh there's God. a lot of them where they think they're there to do one thing and the rug is pulled out so like mm-hmm. like i saw the one where he's dressed as dracula like like full on Dracula, and, and they tell him that he's going to be part of like some a, sort of a like a, a Dracula musical, and he's like, "All right, fuck it," you know. I, so I, I'm a performer. He's not though. He's in a Christian black choir, and he's <laughs> leading them, and, and he's and, dressed, and, and they're all in their church robes, and he's Dracula <laughs> in the middle of it. With he's the in it. Inexplicably Dracula amongst uh-huh. a bunch of black church ladies who are singing and clapping. And if you watch that one, there's like two of those ladies who are not having it. It seems like they did not know what they were getting into. And they are just like fucking honky ass bitch wearing that fucking Dracula shit. Disrespectful cocksucker. I'll take your money. <laughs> give it to the church ladies. I, I clap and I ain't singing. Like they, these these ladies are not having it. You can tell how upset they are with Dracula over there because he's da- he has to dance and sing and they don't know why he's dancing and singing. I like that show a lot. I gotta here's find the, the two uh, punishments real, real you quick, mentioned. Here's the here's the picture. Uh, um, Zach, Jayden. if you could if you could show the um, Kyle's finding the Jaden Smith one. You'll have to scroll down a sec, Zach, when you put it up. But it's what Murr looked like as Dracula with oh. all, the, all the black singers. It's oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Oh, but it's it, so uncomfortable. It, yeah, you can see a gif in the top right over there. That's the one I think where he has to read maybe the wedding speech. Oh yeah, where he like is making a bunch of sexual innuendos he, about the the married couple. The he, no one knows him. He's like Brittany's beautiful inside and out. I should know. <laughs> <laughs> and they get all those close ups of like aunts and uncles. Like what the fuck is going yeah, on? Like, like someone's whispering to the bride. Do you want me to stop this? Like they're ready to go beat the shit out of this guy. Like it's it's incredibly awkward and it's a great premise for a show i i hope that it's still good after uh what's his name i, I really hope it's still good after joe leaves because i, I and the cool thing about it is it's just like such good each episode is really short like like they're over before you know it they do like yeah. two or three bits and then a punishment and that's it so every episode feels like these popcorn bites that you can just do mm-hmm. one after another so I'm, i'll be sitting there like eating lunch and, and and watching and like i'll i'll watch six or eight of them before it's over um they're really good they're they're, they're really so fun, fun. The, and there's a lot of them on there like when you, uh the when catalog. joe when joe has to go to a mets game and when the players are throwing the balls up to the kids he has to intercept and keep every single ball for himself and openly talk about like another one for ebay and like all the players <laughs> <laughs> and, like the players are mad at him he had a mom chase him down <laughs> like you that is not yours you stole that from that boy he's another like another one for ebay <laughs> he's like he's like that's seven for ebay he's got it he had like a giant uh, a fanny pack full of baseballs because <laughs> he would walk over like there was a kid that caught one he's like that's really cool that's really cool can I see that yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, just, he just took it from the kid put it in there and walked away and like adults were like that's the kind of thing that'll get the shit kicked out of you in public oh, like, yeah. if, if that kid's parents saw that you can't like, you would be in deep bully trouble. children no you can't bully children uh, that's well, uh, cruising for bruising me. oh you can't it's <laughs> <laughs> that's the especially best especially after we've been working out right like i thought about the other day i saw some punks at the gym i was like mm-hmm. fuck you all up <laughs> old school bully these kids it'd be it'd be it'd be great but probably not a good idea again because felon felon 
Yeah, yeah. You should, yeah. should they, it's like bullying. they suck all the fun out of life once you get they the really felony do. charges. Yeah. It should I be want, a five strike go, and you're out. You should be I, able to beat up kids. If they're shitty, yeah. I, what, I love that scene from Bad Santa where Billy Bob Thornton just beats the shit out of those kids. And like, <laughs> That's like, such an underrated like, movie. I love and it. And later on, he, he's like talking to the, the, the his partner, you know, the little black midget guy. He, he's like, beat the shit out of some kids today. It felt good. Felt like I was doing something right for the first time in a long time. And the black guy just looks at him like, you, your soul is a black pit of shit. <laughs> <Or> something <laughs> like that. It's always something over the top awful. Uh, that's an excellent movie. Um, I can't think of the the, the lady, um, who, who the, the the girl in that in that movie. I like her a lot. She's got like the Santa, Santa kink. Didn't, it didn't work for me. Dude, it's great. It's got the I little snot-nosed was... fucking kid. He's great. He's visually disgusting in some. Yeah, much you don't like film. that. You don't like when, uh, when like uh, uh, the kids got the snotty nose, or in uh, Rick and Morty when he's like, like, like dripping the the drool. Yeah, I don't like it when Rick has what vomit drool or something on him. Yeah, and belching. I don't like it when Bad Santa's beard is like super beyond dirty. It's <laughs> gross. Oh my fucking lunch break. <laughs> <laughs> Spitting salad all over the place. I remember that movie made me sad for the fat kid. Really? Yeah, like it. It made me sad for him. It's pretty sad. I, I mean, guess it is sad, but you know, it's supposed uh, to be mostly funny. But but Billy Bob Thornton's really good in that. Um, I, I all those guys. John Ritter's really good, and um, Bernie Mac's great too. Like the, all, all, all the stuff between the three of them is, is, is all funny shit. It, like, Billy Bob Thornton is is fucking some lady in the ass in the big and tall section, and 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 John Ritter overhears it. And he's trying to explain this to to his head of security, and he's just like, "She was saying, he was saying that you're not going to s h i t right for a week." Bernie <laughs> Mac's like, "Oh, eating these oranges all loud, For ass fucking, huh? Another criminal about that. Wouldn't want to lock a man up if it was. Nope, nope. It's just <laughs> it's it's so good. I love that whole movie. It that the, I need to I rewatch think of the it. Black Midget's name." I kind of feel bad calling him a black midget over and over, but no, no, but that, that guy is super funny. Yeah, he's an excellent in the movie. I haven't seen him in anything in a while. Hopefully, he's still alive. Yeah, th- those guys, M- midgets and giant people, midgets and giant people. Like if you're not in like the normal range of height, your life kind of gets screwed. Yeah, it's yeah. like longevity gets fucked. Yeah, you would think like, it would be like with dogs, where like the giants would. You get that, but like you think the little people would live like extra long. You'd think so, but like apparently, like dwarfism and shit fucks your organs too. So like they don't grow right. That sucks. You would think they would have like, I don't know. Yeah, the, the organs would work, wouldn't have to work as hard because they're tinier. You'd think so. They have incredible mining abilities. I've heard that. Puss <laughs> 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 no. <laughs> actually sending dwarfs into mines. That Why would wouldn't we? I mean, we could we could make the, the you're not plentiful lower. enough. That's why. Yeah, I mean, when was the last time you saw a dwarf or a midget? Orlando, Florida, 2012. No, you're on a 10 year streak almost. I haven't seen one since. Don't Holy know where shit. they're keeping them. I don't know. Part of it, part of it, Super to be small. fair, is they're hard. They're easy to miss. Let's be real. Yeah. I mean, but when you see one, you're like, oh, like like like. I swear to God, I remember very well. I think we were by like Bubba's Bubba Gump Shrimp Company or something down there in Orlando in like the the little amusement park area. Saw one walking by, you know, as best he could. Damn, little fella. I can't even. I can't remember the last time, but I, it was definitely not ten years ago. But you would think you'd see if more I've of seen them one since. It's not. It's not occurring to me right now. Yeah, but like, wouldn't you think you'd see more of them at like supermarkets and stuff occasionally? I, I, I do go to the supermarket a fair bit, but like, I mean, I might have seen one of those ones in like the chair, one of those little club footed fuckers, but those don't uh, even count. Those are just, no. that, that's, yeah. that counts as a wheelchair sighting. Not a, I, I want to see a, I, if they're not, if they're not walking around, I don't, I, that's not a little person. That's, you know, I haven't seen any though. Not, not in 10 years, I'd say. Didn't uh, Peter Dinklage say something recently about like Snow White and the dwarves and like how he didn't like it? I, I, I didn't read it. He'll have to speak up. Um, I, I could, can't hear him from down there. 
I, I, <laughs> I, I, I don't care what, what Peter Dinklage has to say about a fucking fairy tale animated by Disney in the 40s. Well, he's hoping people care because he's lost all relevance since Game of Thrones. Yeah, and all those movies he's, he's been in, except for the, Mar- the Marvel ones, have been awful. Oh, he was in Marvel? Yeah, yeah he, he plays a giant. He was awful in it. He was absolutely good. awful. Like his he, acting? Yeah, that yes. was very good. He played, he was like a midget playing a giant who the whole thing was just like a silly MacGuffin quest and it was stupid. And it's literally one of the worst parts of all the Marvel movies. So, what yeah. is, I'm looking at the scene. He He's in some, uh, he's a blacksmith. So Thor goes to him and asks him for an axe. And I guess you need to harness the power of the sun. So Thor proves how durable he is by, I guess, manually holding the magnifying glass or some sort of bullshit. And he gets hit with the sun, but it doesn't bother him because he's Thor and they make an axe. Okay, that's so- that's real close. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. The fuck? It's so stupid. It's so stupid. It. It is like the worst casting decision in the history of Hollywood. Why, you know, they why would it was, they pick a dwarf because for they a thought giant. it was cute to you know, you just answered your own question. Oh he was yeah. Really first of all, he was really hot at the time. Like the show was super hot. I'm sure when they were producing that that movie. So it's whatever. I just didn't think he was very good in it, and it's it's kind of silly. But you know, Thor was there to get a magical axe, so I probably shouldn't complain too much about the midget playing the giant. I'm more concerned with black elves. <laughs> Dude, I'm watching Things this scene really right now, not. and it is so distracting that it is Peter Dinklage. Even because he runs like a dwarf. He runs. Like he doesn't he doesn't bound like I would imagine a giant would. I think he's essentially handicapped. I What's think his name? Has- Thor is is doing the he's he's you yeah, know, he's holding doing the some, some some peck deck shit and and he runs away. And when uh, Peter Dinklage runs away, you can see how little he. All this whole scene, you can see how little he is. It doesn't make sense. I, I, this is terrible. My God, what a stupid movie! It's that's <laughs> actually one of the better ones. That's that's just a bad scene. That's an oh. excellent movie. That's what a is real it? tearjerker at the end. That's uh, that's uh, End Game. I think not End Game, but that's um, the one before it. Does uh, Peter Avengers. Dinklage help uh, help the team, or is he like a one? He's just okay. a blacksmith hanging out on in a ship. All right, so I guess we've got time. I guess so, I mean, is he a main character? Or no, he's not a main character. He's a side character. Basically, Thor's uh, needs a needs a weapon to fight Thanos, and so him and his pals fly through space to the space blacksmith. And when they get there, they find that Thanos has beaten them there first. He has forced this man to make a gauntlet for him, uh, a very powerful weapon. And afterwards, he has like ruin this man's hands like crippling his hands by like mm-hmm. put putting them in like blocks of metal or some shit and uh so thor's like oh it wasn't your hands that made the weapons it was in your heart and i'm thinking like it was absolutely this artisan's hands that made the weapons that's that's how weapons get made you know and but but he's like oh you're right um open that and and he just starts telling them how to make the weapon which kind of makes it seem really easy to make these weapons when you think of it that yeah. way. But that it's really just... Uh, did, it, it sounds about like making a microwave burrito. Open did, it! Uh, put it in! Did, did you guys... <laughs> Three watch, minutes! Did you guys watch this in theaters or no? Oh, yeah. I did. This is so, Endgame. So no. when... Or no, it says Infinity it's War the on the side. Infinity War. Uh, it's one yeah, so when, when the when the wooden creature lifts it up and, and snaps his arm off, did yeah. all the nerds like cheer audibly? I was well. It was. It's a big, you know. He's he's giving his arm, you know. So he's a tree. It's gonna grow back. He gave his life earlier, and it. And How first, it came back clearly. Well, he actually sort of reincarnated. Doesn't seem like this guy's given much of he anything. Didn't come back. It's he his didn't come back. Yeah. Back. He sort of re, he, he was. He left it, a seed behind. Yeah, he sort of like you can think of it as a I, reincarnation. I just I I just want to know. Don't don't bolster it by saying it was dramatic. Did all those nerds clap and yell? Yeah. Oh, cool. that's so gay. You know, it wasn't like a big. It, it, that's it was so like, embarrassing. It, it was more like it was. It was more like that is so, that is so fucking You're embarrassing. So elitist. <laughs> elitist. First of all, every played, time. Played first of all, every time. Gathering. You can't even picture Theoden wearing that helmet without crying a little. First of all, 
Okay. Yeah. Yep. See. see. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah! no, no. I'm not the one who's gay. It's the Marvel guys. It's not me. <laughs> uh, no, it's just, I, no, that's just uh, good, I, I, I don't like when people cheer in theaters. It's distracting. Oh, I don't mind. Um, there's some moments that are clearly like made in the movie to like they leave a a, a pause there for the cheer, and, and and like this was a time where they did when like when you know when Captain America does the thing, and and like the camera like whips to him and he's just like sata. It's just like they like they're like all right, give him like two beats here because they're gonna freak the fuck out, and then we went because the whole audience is just like. <gasps> Yeah, you know. You're- oh, oh, they're they're gonna make it, guys. They're gonna make it through this PG thirteen movie with no blood. <laughs> they're gonna barely pull it together in the end through through commitment and friendship. All right, all right. First of all, Taylor, tree- Taylor. To be fair, like three or four of them died. Like like oh. like like a, like a quarter of the team die in that movie. I don't care. Who who died? Well, Iron Captain- Man was the only Bane one, right? Captain America also essentially died. He, he, he like, you know, he, he he's apparently reincarnatable. So next. Also, no, he, well, the man, you know, died. And, and then also uh, Black Widow, she died. Oh God. How are they going to continue to win? <laughs> who's going to be, who's going to be hot? And, uh, you know. Well, no, keep the list. Who else? I mean, the black guy died in real life. Does that count? Wait, what, what's that character's name? That really integral guy? The Black, black Panther. Black Panther. Okay. Well, I'm sure they picked someone else for him, right? Just put the mask on him. Nobody's going to know. What if they did a white guy? That would be so funny. That would be, dude, like, as a, like, you were saying that, like, the the black elf bothers you in Lord of the Rings. That would be so funny if you, if, like, all the same people who were like, what, you don't like the elf in this medieval story based in Europe fantasy, like, being black or whatever? You're like, yeah, I think we should get, uh, I think we should get Jason Momoa for Black Panther. No, Jason Momoa's already, uh, uh, no, um, who's the whitest person? Get Jim Gaffigan. Seth Rogen. <laughs> I want Seth. Seth Rogen to be the new black uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> He's like, dude, they've got way better weed here he's, in Wakanda. He's using, he's using the little Black Panther razor claws to hold a roach while he smokes it. <laughs> <laughs> this Wakanda shit just hits different. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. The bong's got... By, get vibranium bong, like the whole thing. Like, like have fun with this. Nobody would mind yeah. that, right? Right? Jesus no, fuck. no. Of course they would care. That would be called. Of course they would care. You don't make it's... a white Black Panther. He is the Black Panther. Hitler has returned in the form of a white actor playing a black person in Black Panther. <laughs> they say that Peter Dinklage passes muster because he has one category of discrimination, but we don't. <laughs> it's like no, we just go by categories. One category discrimination: black dwarf. We got one of them. <laughs> he's just a dwarf from now on. Are they ending that that movie series until they, I guess, find someone? What movie series? Black Panther. Black Panther. I think they're making. They, oh. I thought they were going to make multiple. They do multiple for all of them. Yeah. The, Has there been? One? There's only been one Black Panther, right? Well, well, it made a shit ton of money. He was so involved with like all the following movies, though. Like every every Avengers movie, and even like the Captain America movie too. Like like the Captain the 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 Civil War movie. Like he was a part of like. Several but they movies. they have to oh, replace. Taylor, him there's an point. answer. They've oh. replaced him, and the actor's name is Winston Duke Maku. Sounds Winston like a Duke and Winston Duke Mbaku. Winston Duke Mbaku. Yeah, uh, rolls off the tongue. He Six looks five, like, so oh, he's going to be a this lot. This guy was in Black Panther. I know him. Well, we're not friends, but <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I know this. I, like I'm looking at him. I, I know this. So I guess they're taking someone from the Black Panther universe and, and elevating, elevating him to get the role of Black, like the job of Black Panther. Yeah, because it is a job. In Marvel. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah. What happens um, is the most competent fighter. They they strip your powers, they make you fight, and if you win, you become the Black Panther. Yeah, and you that's get your their, power. That's the whole sit. That's no, a no, really so stupid. You, you drink. You drink like this magical fucking drink, and uh, and then they also hook you up with like this super cool armor that that's uh, uh, like absorbs energy to and get all the powers. Stuff. I, to get the powers. Yeah. I think you drink a drink, lose your powers, fight the other dude, and then the winner gets to drink a drink. See, that was a unique situation. Does, does right everybody? Think, you already had one Black Panther, and you had someone challenging the current Black Panther, so he had to relinquish his Black Panther powers to do even combat with the challenger. 
But I think normally they just they're just like, hey, you're the new Black Panther. Have some Black Panther drink. Oh, maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. I always thought there was a little bit of a competition to be. So so Black Panther is not a superhero like Ted Stevenson, whose name is Black Panther, like his moniker. It's like a suit. So or a spell that they pick their king. It's a to moniker. Play. So, so one thing you have to keep in mind, like at this point, all the superheroes. So it's have, kind of more Iron Manish than like Spider Manish. Yeah, no, like it, it's more Batman ish, and and, and that like oh, like Batman-ish. the the, 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 the torch. Well, Iron Man, Batman along. come out. They're, they're both normal guys. In well, no, there's only the one Iron Man though. Like, like, yeah. like there's only one Batman okay. too. Yeah, no, there's lots of Batman. Oh, Wait, well, what? shows what I know. Well, you know, like, like, like as the you know Bruce Wayne will often like die in the story and like pass the torch down to like any number of like Robins. Oh, I'm actually not familiar with. I didn't other. know that. Yeah, Bruce Wayne that. regularly or, dies, and then another. They, <laughs> yeah, they do that with um. So stupid. Or retires. America, and they do it with Thor. I think there's a couple of Thors. Yeah, I mean it's a necessary thing. Like, 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 like. Of course. Look, these 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 characters are so old that if you, they you know they go back to like. The, the the 20s and 30s and 40s in some cases so it's like if you didn't eventually like at least explore an avenue where they died and got replaced by like a newer more modern version of themselves like like there's a it is a problem that like so many of the superheroes are white like like there weren't any real black superheroes like made until what like the 70s or 80s or something like that and then they get you know those are the little superheroes I think the the the, uh, the original like uh, uh, like like squads of heroes are all white. If I think about it, I do not know. I don't know much I'm about. Trying the to prove you wrong, and I can't. I'm trying to think of like a major black. Where all the we're like, like if you think of like the Justice League, they're all they're all white, right? We, I mean, even we, the, the Martian Manhunter is green, but the Green Lantern is black, but it, not originally. Yeah, there's been a bunch of Green Lanterns. How about yeah. the Falcon? Hmm. Well, Wait, that's no, a he's that's new. a Marvel thing. Uh, Marvel fa- one? Why not yeah. when fa- when the Falcon was first introduced, though? And, and I don't know if the Falcon's minded. black in the comics. Oh, Blade, Blade, nineteen seventy three. Yeah. Uh, some guy named I want Cyborg. new Blade. Blade's a cool fucking comic. I, I want I want new Blade. Well, I, I mean, you saw the Blade movies with Wesley Snipes, right? Uh, it's been so long. I, like I think so, but. It, you remember he's like super serious. I'm Blade with my sword and I kill vampires. Like, like he took it super seriously. And you know Wesley Snipes is pretty good at like martial arts, so the fight yeah. scenes look good, especially yeah. for the time. Um, have you ever seen that quote from um, um, the actor who played alongside him in like Blade Three? He's like, "I've never met Wesley Snipes. I've only met Blade." <laughs> <laughs> like he made a movie with the man. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he's like, there'd be scenes where like. Wesley would come in and he'd he'd do all the stunts and he'd choreograph choreograph everything and he'd do all the fights and then he'd leave and the director said all right now let's film with the stunt guys come on come on now let's, <laughs> let's, let's, come now let's do the let's do the part we're gonna use in the movie now so, guys so right. Wesley Snipes like is watching it like damn I killed that scene <laughs> <laughs> probably he probably doesn't even know that like, he's like god damn I got my leg high for that I, I I remember it not looking so good. Fuck yeah, I, got, I still got it. Play four. Yeah, I, don't, I don't remember having Asian looking hands. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's crazy. You see, like the the black arm makeup ending at the elbow or something. Yeah. <laughs> um, Wesley Snipes is a. I I always liked his fucking movies. I thought he was he was cool. I uh, I like the Blade movies too. I think they're gonna start making some more Blade movies, but I don't know who's gonna play it. I like how he cheated Blade. on his taxes and he he didn't even try to mitigate it. Just held he the line. Of, he held the nut uh line all, all the way this to the shaggy end. Shaggy defense. Uh, it wasn't me. <laughs> it was not me who didn't pay thirty million dollars worth of taxes. And it's like, well, it says right here it is. It's like, mm. did he? You're gonna have to send paying me taxes jail. by going to jail. Like, it, did they give him a choice of saying like, you either pay thirty million in back taxes or go to jail for a year? And he's like, well, fuck, I'm not making thirty million a year anyway. It's my most Maybe, profitable avenue. Know. I, feel I choose like, to believe that's how it works. I feel like with taxes, the government will ream you and take every. They're they're going to err on the side. Oh, of they're going to get Wesley Snipes' future income. Good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> Three years in prison in two thousand eight and was fined five million. Whew. Three yeah. years and five million. Yeah, so he saved twenty five million according to our made up math. He hasn't yeah. been in what he owed. so long. Yeah, yes, he did. Uh, um. 
He he was so good in Dolomite. I haven't seen that. You haven't seen Dolomite? I think no. of him as the white God man can't jump. Dolomite. Guy. Is Dolomite yeah. funny? Yeah, it's really good. All right, so here's what Dolomite is. Uh, man, I wish I can't think of the 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 real like person's name and and the thing that Dolomite's about. But Dolomite was a movie made by this black comedian who made movies. Dolomite on Netflix with Eddie Murphy in it is a movie about that guy making his movie. Okay. If that makes sense. And you're talking about the movie itself or the Netflix show? I'm thinking about the Eddie Murphy, Wesley Snipes project that came out like a year or two ago on Netflix. And it's it's about the man. Uh, it's about a guy making a movie. Um, the movie is called Dolomite. Uh, the Dolomite movie is ridiculous. Um, th- this guy is just a ridiculous, like, filthy black comedian who hustled and did everything. Like, like Rudy Ray Moore might be his name, something like that. I, it, I can't think of it right now, but um, it's really Dolomite is my name is the thing on Netflix. That's what you, that's what you want to watch. And, I haven't uh, even scrolled past that. I'll need to look it up. Basically, like he 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 wanted to play a badass. Like he was like kung fu movies are cool and like 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 pimping pimping bitches is cool. So I'm gonna play a guy named Dolomite who's a kung fu pimp. And 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 they're like, all right, who's gonna play Dolomite? He's like, no no, I'm gonna play Dolomite. Well, you're making a movie where you play a kung fu pimp. It's, yeah, everybody's gonna love it. And like, he, <laughs> and like, they're like, usually our action stars are a bit more fit. And he's and like, Eddie Murphy's got this big belly and everything, <laughs> like, like just like the real guy did. And the movie is him like doing terrible cho- choreography and like knocking people out. And they they bring on Wesley Snipes to be their director because he's got some experience. And and he watches it and it's awful. And, and they're like, what do you think? Another take. He's like, I don't think another take would benefit us in any way or anyone in any way. <laughs> <laughs> really? You think that looked real? I think it, I think it looked like you were trying real hard. That That's, that's all that matters. It, the movie is an abomination, but what Rudy Ray Moore did, I'm pretty sure that's to get the guy's name, the real life character. Yeah. Rudy Ray made Moore. Movie, he like advertised his movies, blues Brothers style, like riding through neighborhoods with megaphones. Come on out tonight. The big Rudy Ray Moore movie showing tonight only. It's showing every night, you know, five times a night or whatever. Oh, tonight only. <laughs> and, and, and like he like got people to come watch his movie and he got all the money because he produced it and filmed it himself with no permits or unions or anything in like abandoned warehouses and all sorts of nonsense. This is funny. Like I'm, I'm just scrubbing around. The entire movie is on YouTube. The old. It's the movie. best thing Eddie Murphy's made in decades. Well, Eddie Murphy seems like he's been taking a break for a while, right? Like I haven't seen him in much of any. He's he probably got more money that, than God, so he doesn't care. Yeah, he made all that really shitty comedy stuff. Like I don't know, in the early 2000s, like that Pluto Nash stuff, and it seems like he was making so many of those nutty. The professor nutty professor, movies. yeah. It was like this stopped being funny after the first one, dude. Like, I, 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 did, I did like the first one. I everybody liked the first one. It's good. It's a cool idea. And and, and at first it's funny. I, I like when he goes shopping at first. He's like spandex. <laughs> All spandex. <laughs> Nothing but spandex. Yeah. And, and, and like Eddie Murphy is so fit even then. That, like, like, like he's just like in that spandex, like like wearing <laughs> nothing at all. You're like, man, he really is a skinny guy. Like, like. I remember the uh the old comic the the comedy special he did where he's wearing that red thing that like red jacket with nothing underneath it. Yeah. Oh yeah, I remember that. That was that's that's his Is best. Is that special. Raw? Yeah, Eddie Murphy Raw. Yeah. Yeah. He's great. I love the Beverly Hills Cop shit. I liked uh the Golden Child, um all that stuff. I've always liked Eddie Murphy. I like him too. I I remember like because of my age, our age, like I knew him more as like a a kid friendly actor before i like knew about eddie oh. murphy raw stuff and so like yeah. i knew about like daddy daycare and then when i watched raw afterward it was the same kind of thing as when i watched full house as a kid and then saw bob saget as an adult and was like oh oh they should not allow him around the kids yeah. in that in that house like Run they already the have they already have uh uncle wait uncle joe uncle joe uncle is- jesse Uncle Jesse's the hot one. Uncle yeah. Joey is the pedophile who lives in the basement and is bad at drums, right? That's right. Okay. Dave All Coulier. Right. Dave Coulier. What a ghoul that character was. Just a weird what a cool name. cool name that is, though. Like, like imagine, it's a sweet name. That's like French or what, something. What, 
I, I imagine him as a French Canadian. He has that oh, look yeah, about him. Yeah. He even has that like mullet that I bet he plays hockey. Oh, I guarantee Google. that. Oh, I, I remember that like came I up bet in the if show. You I bet you Dave Poulier hockey. You can find a picture of him with like a fucking like some gear under the cook of his arm or a stick in his hand or something. Wait, was Dave Coulier born in 1959? Holy shit, he has an elite prospects page. Elite prospects is like a page of stats that they use to like keep track of like young proficient hockey players. And yeah, yeah that look about him. I could see it. I could see it in Dave Coulier's weird little beady eyes. That man played hockey. Doesn't really have any stats here or, or anything. Ignore that. High school teams, Ignore but that. I've already I've already claimed victory. You've already claimed victory. You've already won victory. Yes. Well, Dave Coulier, I don't remember that George show, pushing but, this. but I do remember at the time thinking it was odd. I didn't think it was that weird that J Uncle Jesse was around because I liked him and I thought he was kind of cool. But Uncle Joey being around was like, like he he's the same age as Bob Saget and he doesn't have a family. He doesn't have his own place. He doesn't have anything. He lives in the basement of a man who's a single father of four. It was just weird. It's a weird plot well, point to include. Why include that guy? He didn't really contribute that much. No, oh, there you go. Dave shit. Coulier skating around in a celebrity hockey match. Look at him. You know who else was a celebrity hockey guy in these matches? Uh, Joey from Friends. Uh, is his name Matt something? Matt LeBlanc. Matt LeBlanc, yeah. Another a, Cana French Canadian. He's LeBlanc. another French Canadian guy who, you know, he did Friends and made all the money in the world, but then... He started doing Top Gear America, which I'm yeah. sure they threw a bunch of money at him to do that. But good God, what a terrible show. Not I good. tried watching a couple episodes. It's all You awful. know what's worse than that? After what? Friends, do you remember what his first show was right after? Joey. Joey. Yeah, yeah, I remember Joey. I didn't ever watch any. Like, like, I didn't like, watch Friends. On like the time. second episode of Joey, like fucking Rachel pops in like, hey, just visiting from New York now that you're in LA and you're a big actor and everything. Just Wanted to say hey and make sure we tied this in correctly, everybody. Right? You're gonna watch the show. Am I? All right, we're yeah. done. It failed. You know what? Do you remember? Um, um, who plays Kramer? His name's escaping me. Um, Michael Richards. Michael Richards. Do you remember his show right after? Uh, I remember Seinfeld? his really funny one <laughs> in uh, 2006 or seven. No, or that, that, that's his comedy special that you're oh. such a fan of. <laughs> that, <laughs> Um, he was like a private investigator or something. I remember him having like, really? I think he stuck with the pipe or something like that. But he was like, there was like a private investigator office setting with like, you know, maybe like a receptionist or mm -hmm. somebody answering the call. And he would like do the inspecting. And there was a whole like <clears throat> cast built around that, I think. And it, it did not make it through like maybe even the pilot. Like it didn't make it long at all. Was it called the Michael Richards show? No, there's no way they called it that. I thought it was called like Snoops or something, like like the detective of of Bry Castle. He like his IMDb Seinfeld, an episode or in the movie David Copperfield, he had nine episodes of the Michael Richards show in 2000, a voice in the B movie because he's friends with Seinfeld in 2007. Curb Your Enthusiasm, two or three episodes in 2009 because he's friends with Larry David. And then well, something that's, in yeah, 2013, a episode, yeah. show called K Kirsty, 12 episodes. Like he's done basically nothing since Seinfeld, which is fine because like you don't realize how old he is. Yeah, yeah. He was like he's, 10 years older than th the rest of them. Yeah, he's 72. Because yeah. I think, uh, yeah, when Seinfeld started, uh, he was 41 years old or something. Yeah. And all the other ones, like, I think Elaine was like 28 at the time, yeah. 29 or something. She was in a prime. Yeah, in a prime. You know, she's from like a ton of money, right? That's yeah, she she's like like billionaire level wealth with she's her kind family. of an heiress. Yeah, it's wild. Uh, I guess they're all Richard. Ex oh, I saw this really good thing. I'll link it to you. Somebody linked it to me. Uh, but it's it's Jerry. Michael. Um, it's Jerry. Um, Who's the other the co-creator um, from Kirby Larry Cruz. David? Larry David and uh, and George Jason Alexander talking about the um, the marine biologist the closing scene. Yeah, yeah. They wrote they wrote that the night before uh, Jerry and um, Larry David did, and they go to to Jason Alexander the day of, and they're like, we have this page of great dialogue, the story that you would tell, 
Mm -hmm. Could you handle learning an entire page monologue like before lunch? And Jason Adams was like, oh, yeah, that's not a problem. He used to do stage acting. So this is like, this is a, this is a thing he does. He, he's a real good actor. He's a yeah. real actor. So, so he's like, he learns it. And, and they, they, then they cut to Jerry. And Jerry's like, and somehow he like did. I think it's because he's one of those actors. Something that <laughs> I really don't know how to do. Um, he learned it before lunch. And what you're seeing is a live rehearsal. The first take, the only take that was ever filmed. It's done before in front of a live studio hey, audience. Which episode is this? It's the closing marine biologist story where George oh, says, okay. I tell you, it was <laughs> if it was a foot, it was 10 stories high. <laughs> and as the waves were crashing down upon me, I, you know, he like reaches into the, yeah. blow, the whole story, the whole bit. That's the first time he'd ever done it. And Jerry's like, and if you look at me in that scene, like I'm not acting, I'm just nodding. And and because because I'm hearing the, the lines in my own head because I wrote them the night before. And and he nailed it so perfectly. And then like when you, Michael Richards does, like like, ends that bit with a cherry on top, right? Yeah. He's the one who has to. He waits for the the laugh to die down because the laugh is crazy. They're, 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 the audience is going wild, and it goes on for like five seconds. And then Michael Richards is like, "Is that a Titleist?" <laughs> <laughs> he does it in like the like, is "That a Titleist?" <laughs> like a, a kind of George goes, mm "Hmm." He's like, hole in one? <laughs> uh, what a great episode. Uh, I had no idea that George did that in one take. What a he's a one take, actor. first take, only take. Yeah. He's like, we never went back to it. We didn't do any pickups. We didn't do any other angles. We never read those lines again. That was it. Like, think like for a show like Seinfeld to be as iconic as it is, like you need particularly George and Kramer. Like Seinfeld himself is a terrible actor in mm -hmm. every episode. He's just kind of standing. He's he's delivering funny lines and he writes funny lines for other people. But he himself is not the bastion of humor on the show. It's George, Elaine to a lesser extent, and then Kramer and getting Michael Richards, who literally is Kramer. Like he does physical comedy in that way better than anyone I've ever seen. And George, the most neurotic, the most believable neurotic person you could ever come across, like just kills it. I I need to rewatch Seinfeld again. I just did like five months ago. I'll do it again. I love it. Woody, you are muted, my friend. That explains why you guys talk. How about angry it. were you before <laughs> three seconds ago? <laughs> Not angry. Like I, I I don't know. Sometimes when someone doesn't give like recede the floor, it means they think they've got material, you know, and then let it happen. But anyway, um, they were talking to Seinfeld about doing a reunion episode. They were asking him like, Hey, you know, what would you, he's like, everybody wants to see another episode of Seinfeld. And he's like, yeah, this is my theory on Hollywood. I don't give people what they want. I want you to want another episode of Seinfeld. I have you where I want you. And that's where mm -hmm. I'm keeping you. There will be no more. I want you wanting more. I've nailed it. And I'm like, Oh, that he's literally telling me, he just wants me to have unsatisfied desire. Okay, then. Because it's it's I a hope binary. They never bring it. You back. have to be in a. St it's a binary state. You either are left wanting more, or you're left having had too much. Yes, mm -hmm. and, and he and knows that. And and I definitely thought it was clever, but it was one of the few times you see a guy in charge not customer centric. Well, they did do the thing on Larry, the Larry David show, right? Did you see the Curb Your Enthusiasm episode where they did I, the reunion? Oh, yeah. I didn't see it, but I think I heard him talk about it. So where... the premise is this. It's that Larry David, want, in the show, his character, is divorced, wants to get back with his wife. The NBC executives have come to him every year saying, hey, would you do that reunion episode for us? Here's the, here's the basket of money from last year, but with this much more on top. And every year he just says no because he's a billionaire. Mm -hmm. Well, his wife, he thinks, would be perfectly cast in the show as like Jerry's wife or, some, or George's ex-wife or something like that. He wants to cast his, his ex-wife so he can get back together with her. So he uses this, this little button that he has with NBC. He's like, oh, yeah, you wanted that reunion show, right? They're like, of course we do. We'll move heaven and earth. And he's like, move it. And they like start... <laughs> And so they do it, and it's sort of a getting the band back together where yeah. he has these these like lunch meetings with each of them in succession, and he's like telling them lies and and like they're not paying attention. So like 
they're not really even sure what they're agreeing to, but they all end up back together making the show. Michael, um, uh, uh, Jason Alexander gets pissed off, and Larry David's solution is, you know what? Fuck him, because he's been getting a little bit too close to his ex-wife. He thinks they actually might have a little chemistry going. He's like, fuck him. We don't need Jason Alexander for the reunion. I'll play George. They're like, you cannot <laughs> play George. It's like, show up at lunch. We're going to read through it. I'm going to play George, and then you decide. And so they do. They, they, they like, like for a part of the show, like, like he just comes in and reads as George, and it's pretty fucking good. It's, so it's they, a good episode. They and, talked and, to Seinfeld about it, and he had a pretty good line. He, he's like, you know, you did a reunion episode, but it wasn't the reunion episode people wanted. <laughs> he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, we didn't do the thing where we make a show that disappoints you, and everyone comments on how old everyone got. We didn't want to make that show. Smart. Um, like, Very high IQ move. Like he, Like the way he said it, I have you where I want you. You're you're begging for more of this classic show. What am I going to do? Jeopardize the legacy of this show, which is universally seen as one of the top shows, top comedy shows of all time, like top comedy shows of all time. I'm fucking with you. Yeah. It, it, <laughs> it, it, like, it's, it's just no, no, it's a top show yeah. of all time. Seinfeld is fucking magical. But, it's it's uh, incredible. What was I going to say? Oh, oh yeah. And and the way he described what a reunion show is, a disappointing look at everyone who got older and fatter. Yeah, that's what it would be. Right? Yeah. Like who doesn't get older and fatter? That, that's, it's, 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 welcome to earth. It, it's absurd. Yeah the, the, yeah, the idea of one. No, he nailed it. He nailed it. It's done. Um Larry David keeps making episodes though. I haven't I haven't started this newest season, but like Larry David is so old and uh he's still killing it in in the, in his show, in his own show. I got to I got to catch up on this season. Last season was really good. Um it had John Hamm in it and um oh from Mad Men. Yeah, yeah, Does he and still it was, look good cuz a lot of his um role is based on being that handsome leading man. You know, it's he plays himself on the Larry David show and and they kind of play up the fact that it's like you know, he's kind of a big movie star, John Hamm is, to some extent. Like, everybody knows who John Hamm is. And Larry David, Larry David just kind of shows up, and he's like, they're like, Larry, you're late for dinner. And you brought someone. Who's this? He's like, oh, this is John Hamm, you know, the actor. He's like, hey, I'm John Hamm. I'm the actor. Yeah, yeah. And he's just, like, there awkwardly at a dinner they have. And it's it's really funny. I, I love that show. The Spike uh, Store is one of the funniest bits of all time. I told you is about it on Spike HBO Store. Go? Yeah. So, <laughs> I, oh, that's right. That. Woody, Woody doesn't have that channel. I can't we'll afford have, HBO. <laughs> well, well, I'm I'm sure that like on your Plex server where 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 you do stuff, like it'll magically appear. Uh, curb Plex, your it probably yeah. is there, and that that gentleman watches the show. And if we, talk, I'm sure we've mentioned, um, what is the Larry David show? Curb your enthusiasm. Curb your enthusiasm. Thank you. He he watches PKA, and if we talk about a show, he puts it on the Plex server. He really should invite me to this Plex server because I pay like somewhere between fifty and six thousand dollars a month for my entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> I will warn you that in the last year, I think he has too many people on it. Oh, bro, we need to like. All right, first of all. You need, let's, a host, uh, let's you need a host. Restart server. this whole thing. This is like mm -hmm. I, when I talk about when I get a new debit card occasionally and the shit I don't need <laughs> falls off. That's how these extra people that you've got on your Plex are going to fall off. I'm not Me, sure I'm making the Woody, cut. and you, <laughs> we're a lot tighter than than the, the, whoever these other people. Yeah, I don't know who these other people are. Yeah. Hey, these, the, the, the what problem, has your mom ever done for you? I, I haven't seen her in a while. So right. you want to get me and Woody in there yourself, of course. Wouldn't want to mm -hmm. cut you out of this. <laughs> Unless there's only room for two. <laughs> uh, look, if, there's, if it's a two seater, you know, what? I'm going to leave Woody behind. <laughs> I need you to set things up uh, and, and, you know, hand over so the passwords, I, the keys, whatever. I literally watch shows outside of prime time now. It's like, ah, oh, it's like after midnight. I bet I could watch my show without buffering now. Like, that's the experience that we have now. Well, that's no good, dude. We got to fix that. You, you hear Woody's having an issue here with your Plex server. He's a non-paying customer, <laughs> right? He's, he's I'll wake up, if you will, like seven thirty a.m. I'm like, "Ooh, I'm gonna catch some euphoria, dude." Um, Woody's up early trying to catch his child porn, and and it's all blurry. <laughs> You're gonna have to fix this shit. <laughs> you gotta. I want you to watch euphoria. It's pretty funny. Um, I refuse to watch it. Those I, actors I, I, are older. I maybe. I won't even play video games with people who are under the age of twenty-one. I, I don't <laughs> stay away from those people. That's the safer move. 
Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, oh, I've been waiting for a no guest episode to show my Christmas present for two months now. Let's do it. Zach, can I have the camera? Hey, he did it. He did it. This is what I got for Christmas. It is a box. I asked her, like, like, hey, I have all these knives to store and such. And I was like, I want, uh, think jewelry box. Think something that's sort of easy to open and close. And, like, as opposed to on the wall that I can actually get my stuff out. And this is what she got. Nice. Check this out. The spline jewel joinery. Um, it's, it's well made. Spline glass joinery. top. See, see, look at that. It was constructed. Oh, it looks great. I, I yeah, it was a really good present. And, and those uh, are the joinery. Those are more the the collector enjoyer knives, not really daily or often use. It was kind of the point was so online. People like wake up in the morning and decide how they're going to do their everyday carry. They're like, all right, today I think I'll grab this little guy because I'm wearing fancy pants or, mm -hmm. you know, I've got my skinny jeans on. Ah, oh, today is a construction day. I'm going to grab this bigger, hardier multi-tool or whatever. And my multi-tools are like buried in junk drawers. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, eh, you know, like, I think I even, um, some of the new ones like this, this one, I have duplicates of because I didn't know I had it already. We have a storage problem. So uh, um, so I was like, yeah, it, it, it's not that they're necessarily storage or like, don't, I just wanted them available. I wanted them, I want to be yeah. able to see what I have. If you're going to cut somebody, you want to be able to get at the right tool. <laughs> are you, are you keeping it like on your nightstand or your, in your bathroom or your dresser? It, yeah. It's on my dresser. Yeah. And I don't change my tools that much, but I like that I can. Or every so often, like a lot of, so multi tools have a nice knife. But not as nice as a knife. Yeah. Like just a knife. And every so often I'll have like a knife job and I can go and get my knife knife. I like I have, tools. I have the same, I don't know what brand of knife it is, but it sits on the little like glass table in the foyer of my house, like when you walk mm -hmm. in. And it's only there for Amazon. It's an <laughs> Amazon box and package knife. And like every once in a while, it'll go missing. And like I'll be yelling at my wife, like, where's the Amazon knife? I've said that's the one. <laughs> <laughs> this I like knives that open differently. Here, I have shown. Oh, I know you like before, you, you love right? the novelty guys, of knives. The side yeah. One. yeah, yeah. So this is a it takes a little practice to open it sideways, but once you get the knack for it, it's cool, right? Is it, it actually is it actually like locked and secure? Is that more like uh the yeah, coolness no, it, of the mechanism? It does. So it's locked now. And then you open it and it snaps in and it's locked again. So oh, unlock it. Ah! <laughs> Glad you didn't cut yourself. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, shit happens. But that's uh, more of a, a fun one, right? It, you sort of, uh, yeah, well, I mean, it's a working knife, but but I will agree that it's not like the most practical way to open it. Oh, it. I know. I just mean like, like no, no shame or anything. I was just like, it's neat that like it's got a I cool mechanism, a unique one. That looks remember. more. Is that a pen too? Uh, so it is a flashlight. Oh, nice. And uh, it, up here, you have a little screwdriver. But what's cool is it opens this way. Ah. And you have a knife that, that opens and closes. So what's like that called? A full tang, right? It goes all the way through the initial handle oh. so it's more secure. Is that right? Yeah, it is. It is a full tang knife. Wow, look at you. So you anyway... I really just bought it because it's different than my other ones. And I get sucked into knives that have like a different. That action. is like that that knife you just held up and we're messing with is the ultimate get through airport security with a knife knife. <laughs> <laughs> I bought. So I have a lot of multi tools and they are of like sort of this kind of form factor, right? You open it up and there's like pliers in the mm -hmm. middle. And this is what they look like. I don't love this particular one. But uh, and then the knives, uh, sometimes the knives are on the inside. So you have to open it first, which isn't my favorite. And sometimes the knives are on the outside, like the one that's earned its way into my pocket. It should be on the outside, right? So you right, right. So that way, when I want a knife, I can get to it that easily and open a box. I, I yeah. don't like it when I have to open the middle to get to the knife. OK, cool. Um, then I found this Swiss Army knife that looks like this. <laughs> it's like an, uh, <laughs> it's that, looks like an, that looks like an ipod mini 
<laughs> but, <laughs> so it's got so many fucking knives in my knife. I, I don't even know them all. Um, hold on a second. Can I'll you try. pull every? Can you pull everything out at the same time? <laughs> I don't know. I don't even so, know if you could like get your fingers in because there's so much. It shit. has a magnifying glass, dude. That is no shit. Twice as broad as the largest <laughs> Swiss Army knife I've ever seen. What are you? What's in there? What could? Uh, uh, big flat head, little flat head. Bottle opener A, bottle opener B. <laughs> little Phillips head. But wait, wait. There's a cool one coming up. I'm trying to get this shit. Out. I mean, uh, honestly, oh, here little... it is. Here it is. Wait, wait, wait. Look, fuck! <laughs> you fuck gotta me. try it. <laughs> it has pliers. Oh, <laughs> how cool is it? The hardiest this, of pliers. <laughs> <laughs> this one has spring-loaded pliers. Yeah, you can grab onto so a normally, peanut, it around. You know, you have to get one that's this form factor to have pliers. You could have pliers that, like, might be useful. <laughs> I mean, the, the, those pliers are retarded, but the, uh, <laughs> the the little Phillips head that's actually useful. That's actually uh, very useful. Like scissors, so, and I'll tell you, even though I, these scissors might look retarded, they they do come in useful. I, I I think I have a Swiss Army knife around here with those scissors. Yes, I do. It's right here, just an old red <laughs> Swiss Army knife, and it has these scissors. And I remember once, like I had a letter I wanted to open with the scissors just to try. These are the worst scissors on earth. <laughs> they can't cut any. It'd be better to just try and intimidate the box into opening <laughs> than these scissors are. They're terrible. I use them on threads. Look at this. Knives. I used to think files were useless. <laughs> I'm like, why do I need a file? When am I ever going to break out of prison? I, I don't even smoke pot. But the files are useful for maintaining my fingernails. Like They, they get a little long on the uh. edges first. I like mine short. and I just gah, 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 gah. I take the take the fingernails down. Um just, just manufacturing uses for all of it. <laughs> no, all of it's legit. That. That's a real use. I, I don't know what this is. You see this thing? It's not sharp. It looks like a saw, but it, but it saw. cuts like not quite as well as a butter knife. I don't I don't know what the point and what's is. And that, what's that little thing on the end of it? It's got two prongs. I, a nose picker? I can only assume. <laughs> no and then idea. this is actually a sharp That's saw. saw. I wish... I should have brought a multi-tool that had a saw to Mexico because I drape my tree over every thorn bush in Mexico. I'm sorry, I drape my it, wing. If but, there's like a middle ground between that Swiss <laughs> Army knife and this normal Swiss Army knife, that's the way to go because there's a lot of bullshit on that. Like that not sharp that not sharp know. saw. What the hell is that? Someone explain that one to me. I don't know. But I'll tell you what's not bullshit. And the magnifying glass is kind of nice. If you ever want to know how many calories are in your red hot, the print's so damn small, you need a magnifying your, your glass. Your red hot? Yeah, I, I've still got this knife. Oh, Frank's red hot? Yeah. Remember, remember when we were yeah. sponsored More by that knife think. company and we yes. got these? <laughs> oh, you, the, the shape Dude, of this. Like this thing. The, uh, you the got shape. Karambit? No, no, we all got Karambits because we, this was a company that sponsored us years oh, ago. Oh, yeah, they took mine away. Oh, that sucks. Do you oh, remember that? That was like the most wild sponsor thing of any we've ever had because they were like, yeah, go on our website and pick out, I don't know, nine knives each. And I was like, what? Really? <laughs> like just nine of anything? I was Dude. picking duplicates of, of like different yeah, designs. Like at first, you're like, oh my God, nine knives. I'm so excited. And you pick like your favorite, your second favorite, your There's third favorite. <laughs> By the time I'm at the end, I'm like, maybe I only need like six knives. You know what I did? <laughs> I, I, what I must have done, I think I told them to give me nine of the same knife because I didn't care for any of their knives, and I gave <laughs> fucking them, idiot, and, and I like I gave them away because like I had a kar karambit, but it wasn't that one. Mine was like a uh, from a video game. It was from uh, CS, like like this company that made all these CS knives, like like. I mean yeah, the yeah, I, I didn't too. know this was called a karambit. I've heard that before, but I I wouldn't have been able to say it. I like the shape of it. So for the first time in many 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 years. With my wife a few nights ago, we rewatched Jurassic Park. Yeah, and like it, it must have been the first time since I was an adult that I've watched the original Jurassic Park ever because I watched it a lot as a kid. I really enjoyed it in the nineties, uh -huh. and I saw that I, I saw that scene that I remembered of uh, what is the main actor, the main guy, uh, Sam Neil. Sam Neil, I love that guy. Sam Neil is in that uh, kind of desert area in the in the beginning, looking for bones and sweeping and everything. And he's talking about the Velociraptor because he has the biggest hard on for the Velociraptor. Right. And that shitty little kid is like, "That's just a big turkey." And then like 
I used to think that Sam Neill going over there with the raptor claw and like scaring that kid was like cool. And then I rewatched it as an adult and was like going over to a child talking about dinosaurs and being like, you know what this thing would fucking do to you. It would tear you <laughs> open. It'd spill your intestines out. He said that he said, yeah. this would spill your intestines out. This would fuck you up so much. You little bitch. It'd make you wish I, I mean, would rape you. Handle on that. Is it around your finger sideways? It, I, I was like, holding it like the, uh, the handle here. The claw. I, I oh, was that's holding your that's wedding ring. Did. Yeah, oh, that's sorry. my wedding I, ring. Yeah. I, I was trying to hold it like the raptor claw. Yeah, but like yeah. watching that as an adult, I'm like, man, that is really not a chill way to handle a so, like, actively I it was threatening like a child. Knuckles around the side. Yeah. Too, the, <laughs> oh, I'm ready. Can I show you one more? Yeah, yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm oh, excited. I, quickly about Jurassic Park. That yeah. seems important because it's about his character's growth, right? Sam Neill in the beginning is the type of guy who threatens children and frightens them. Yes. At the end, he, he has a child cool. under each arm and he's yeah. protecting them, right? I, I understand the, the the character development. It's just funny to start from such oh, a yeah. horrible space I love it. as threatening to debowel the child. Disembowel. Disembowel. Oof, All right. What was that one up? <laughs> I, I don't think Taylor's pro disemboweling children like he should be. I should be. I should see those knives, Woody. On board. Yeah. This one, Taylor said that's the ultimate get through airport security. This is the ultimate. Look, it has pliers. Uh, you can see that. You the Dinklage seat? special. What are you going to sneak on the plane and fix their seat? <laughs> you don't know what you'll need to fix. That's the point of everyday carry. You got, a, you got an extra thread on your sweater? Huh? I got scissors for you, bitch. That's my nipple. Oh, God. <laughs> um... And then there's one more thing. You mean I don't have to just pull on threads <laughs> until, until my sweater dissolves? I have <laughs> a file and a screwdriver for your fingernails and your screwing needs. And then last but not least, I have a little in here. Tweezers. Huh? Huh? Okay, I actually like that. That's a good splinter solution. It is. Oh, it's a half-decent yeah. splinter solution. But the point is, there's no knife on this. You can keep this in your pocket on the airplane. I want to know Stay what is back your. Or I'll pinch the shit out of you. <laughs> <laughs> It'll make a blood blister. Like you'll not, you could believe. We must return you to fool. Burbank. He has None scissors. <laughs> weapons to me. I guess they could be weapons. Most of also, we're coming back. There's a there's a passenger with a with a mean pair of pliers, and he has pinched up Martha something fierce. Oh, I, I know this one. This, this is one's cool one of my one. favorites. Yeah, it's the cool one. <laughs> it, it's cool because it, you can like it, the up action isn't the cool part. It's the down action, really? that, like like snapping it back in. Because like there's tons of knives that you pull that little flick thing and it goes quick. Yeah, but yeah. The, the down back part, like a like a lightsaber, Ooh. is very cool. Oh shit! What is the? I want to know what's the the most expensive knife you have. Like it might the, be this one. I think it was four hundred something. Oh shit. Do you uh, use it often, or is it just a fun novelty? I almost never use it. Like, so, so like, Dirty has my address because I, uh, you know, he had to mail me. Yeah, because you made a bad decision. That fired him. <laughs> <laughs> and he was telling me, like, like, like this is like he was telling me a couple weeks ago. He's like, "Oh yeah, yeah, we were going to mail you. We were all going to chip in and mail you a bat lift for uh, for Christmas, but somebody said you'd be mad if we mailed it to you." A bat? Oh, I oh hear a bat? I'm not sure. So the batlith is a Klingon weapon, and it's pretty cool. It's like a big arch thing. It would be like wider, broader than your broader than even your shoulder. It's a big, but I don't know if you can mail one to Kyle. I'm not. Yeah, yeah, I can. I can. I can have blades now and black. Oh, okay, weaponry. okay. Wait, <laughs> wait, what you say after I can have blades now? I think oh, I've I've seen these things. Sure. These are cool, more or less. In any case, um, they they, they, they were like, oh, yeah, we're gonna mail you one, but. Somebody said you'd be mad if we mailed you something. I was like, you're going to send me a $600 Star Trek sword and you thought I'd be mad. If you want to make someone mad, send it to me to forward to him. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. would be a bad idea. That, that would actually make me upset. No, that bat left looked cool. I literally said a year ago when I was still on probation, hey, uh, next Christmas, bat left. Anybody's listening. Didn't get a bat left. Nobody Let's gave me a fucking it bat left. It's been a while. I mean, you talk about on Christmas not even like giving gifts to like parents like back and forth like you just don't do it right? no i don't no i didn't expect them to get me a bat list oh there's well, a lot oh, of different bat lists there's not just one yeah i want the good one it's like five or six hundred dollars are you on etsy get the uh, no i'm on google image search 
Yeah. So I don't like this one. So see this shiny one? That's bullshit. No Klingon warrior would go into battle with that gaudy piece of shit. Oh, to even oh. put it on the screen, Zach, take it off. Take Look it up. off. And, and, and that blade is clearly not sharp. That only, I'm, I'm only, joking. I'm joking. <laughs> only, only some kind of Cardassian patak would, would, would go into battle with that. Okay, Kyle, you send a link of one that you would think was tight, and then he'll put it up there. Um, there's one on Etsy that I saw before that, that looks pretty pretty good. Uh, would it you sharpen, like, sharpen it and practice Oh, you moves? definitely want it sharp. Oh, um, yeah, see, that $180 one doesn't look too bad, but it's I, I $180, imagine, so that, that, that's is, kind of a turn off. Is He's fighting like more. this? <laughs> He's so charge more, you know? So yeah, you, yeah. You, are you, you're grabbing both of the far sides, not so, the middle side. But, but sometimes you I, go single-handed. For, but I for imagine like, that, like, then you're, like, blocking, and then you swing it out with the Yeah, the or, or, or the like right. some of those. You know, where a you little, like whip the bottom out over or, a little or, uppercut or. blade. Yeah, lots of uppercuts. Yeah. yeah, you know how I know that's not a great weapon is because the rest of the world converged on swords independently. Um, well, they also the entire swords. world realized but, swords were better on their own. Well, there's also spears and pole axes and and hammers and all sorts. What's of other the name? Things. What's the name of that military that had a lot of success with the batleth? Well, there's a lot of those big curvy <laughs> blades, right? That's kind of cool. Yeah, scimitar is a type of sword. Yeah. Yeah. The scimitar? Yeah. That, see? See? you. These no, things, they're not practical. Kyle, <laughs> hey, if you want to be practical, you need to first become all, a Taylor, weeb and get a katana. First of all, Taylor, it's pronounced senator, and each state has two. <laughs> 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 no! <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, actually, it's called a centaur. And see, that is the melding of a man. <laughs> a man and a bee. Have you ever seen that funny comic of a centaur? This is like old internet where it was like a centaur and like comic centaur in the woods. And there's like a, a damsel out there. And she's like, oh, centaur. And then it shows like the explicit comic. And like he has just a human dick on the front. Oh. Like he doesn't have no <laughs> dick and she leaves. It was a funny old school comic. I remember uh, like seeing that. Numbers. I remember seeing that on like albino black sheep in like 2004 and being like, that's that's so funny. That's so peak. 13 year old me knows what's funny. <laughs> Did you guys ever uh, do uh, shit? Well, Woody didn't, but Kyle, were you? You were in high school when I was in middle school when like AOL Instant Messenger was a huge thing. Yeah, did, sure. did you use that at all to like hit on girls and shit? No, I didn't have many friends on there. I think I think I missed that train when I was homeschooled in middle school and nobody invited uh, me. That I was reading me. about it on Reddit. Like so so I used AOL at Cisco, but it wasn't nearly as fun as you're talking about. Yeah. Um but guys were like, Oh, those were the days. Like people would masturbate together over AOL as strangers. Oh, we I never did that. I didn't know. I mean, I, I would assume so though. Like it's a like, if only like I'd a know. Yeah, I get High school me would have really liked that experience. <laughs> <laughs> but high school you was the late 80s, early 90s. So no. Yeah, no I graduated. Like maybe a fax too, machine. Right? That, that's how I keep our ages separate. Woody. You, you graduated in 91. I was born 91. That's how I keep the math. And then Kyle, Kyle's five years older than me. Yep. That's... Yep. Graduated in 2004. And I'm an 09 boy. And you'll be, you're coming up uh, on 36. 36. 36. That's how old I was when I started YouTube. Yeah, it's time for you to start YouTube again, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> Go straight back to KLM5986 and yep. just oh. continue the dead space let's play. Dude, that would no lie. Dead Space 2, episode 27. And I just pick it up from the old save. I find it. I'm just like, all right. Well, uh, <laughs> minute, it's sorry about that. So, oh, my, anyway, my last save, uh, so January 2012. Down, <laughs> all right, let's head down this corridor and see what we find. I don't know about you, but I don't. I hope Isaac makes it out of this one. <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny because I I remember uh, that would be. Funny. I, I didn't watch no anybody's. I, I didn't watch anybody's let's plays or anything because I. I I always thought of it as like, well, you're going to fucking ruin the game for me if I ever decide to play this because I'm going to see okay. all your decisions and then I'll know which one is the right one before I even play. But I remember watching your Dead Space Let's Plays. The uh, the first one, Dead Space 1, not Dead Space 2. So these are pro this is probably 2010 content, mm -hmm. watching that shit. And it was great. That was a great Let's Play game because it genuinely did startle people. Like, it was scary. 
If, if, if someone could fake it if they played it before, but if you played Dead Space one or two through and you're a true virgin to it, you will get spooked. Turn yeah, the lights was, off. Turn the played it before, music though. up. I think I had played it before before I did the let's uh, play. Um, and uh, but 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 then your acting that, was on point. Well, hmm. I wasn't acting. That game scares the fuck out of me. Like 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 I'm I'm just afraid of that game. Like like I get invested in games and they really do scare me sometimes. Dead Space was one that has this real. It like like it made me sick to my stomach and like like unsettled and like 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 I couldn't eat that night after the first night of playing it because I tried to beat I used to always gruesome. try to beat it I used to always try to beat a game in one sitting like a single player game Jesus Christ and uh, and you know usually that would take like like the Halo games take like twelve or 14, fifteen hours or mm -hmm. something so like you can do that but I don't know how long I've been playing but it was like three or four in the morning and I just remember being in that elevator covered in gore. And it's like going down to a place where I'm almost certainly going to die. And yeah. I'm just looking. I don't have any, like hardly enough ammo, I think. I'm just like, oh, man, I've got enough for like the first bad guy. And then maybe the second. Then what do I do? If they hit yeah. me once, I'm going to die. And like then this little girl's voice comes over and starts singing to you in the elevator. And the elevator's making elevator noises. But she's going, twinkle, twinkle, little star. And I was like, God, fucking pause. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fucking pause like like, like I, I that that's the, the only game that really fucked with me that much it really did scare do, me do you remember uh, the scene that stuck with me it was from dead space 2 i think the where babies? yeah you're walking past the nursery and it's a woman in there a normal uninfected woman and then like one of those ghoulish tadpole uh, things that looks like kind of like a baby and, the, and like the scene like makes you stop there and like look in the window of it. And it's this woman being like, it's OK. It's OK, little guy. Come here. We'll take care of you. And it's this little like rah, rah, like, like <laughs> screaming ghoul of a baby like this homunculus. And then as soon as she grabs it and is like, there, there, it goes rah, and then explodes. And like all the gore comes on and it's her and the, the baby's gore. Yeah. And it was like, this is. That was the most brutal thing I'd seen in the video game up to that point. The only thing that came close was uh, not as far as brutal. I should say because I replayed this mission. It was kind of you know I don't want to say a fun time, but I you know it, remember uh, the airport. <laughs> you remember the airport? That was fucking dark. Remember no Russian. And then you just start spraying bullets at people who are putting who are taking their shoes off <laughs> at the fucking airport. And they're doing that past. thing like when a cat tries to run on hardwood. <laughs> they're just like yeah. running in place. I, I remember like walking past a guy who was like doing that animation where he's not dead yet. Where he's like, <gasps> and I was like, I'm like right by a sharper image, and I'm like, you're gonna make it. I'm not gonna kill you. And then fucking Sergey's like. <laughs> Like just, just, just at done. the beginning of that level, the guy's like, "Hey, no rushing," and then you can't run. And I'm like, "Is that what he meant? Yeah. <laughs> he meant that we have to walk slow the whole fucking time." Remember, no rushing. We're taking our time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't think about that. That's funny. Yeah, that, that was. Uh, do you remember? Uh, there was a uh, that came out so long ago. Patrice O'Neill was still alive. Mm -hmm. And he went on Opie and Anthony and there's a video of Patrice talking about his experience playing the airport level there. And Patrice was such a fucking funny individual. Like, you'll, I, I won't ruin it, but he was like, it, it's very funny. So check out Opie and Anthony Patrice, the airport level. He's not a gamer. And he's talking about how mm. horrific it was. He's like, <laughs> and I'm walking through, I'm not shooting anybody. And they're mowing down all the motherfuckers at the airport. And I'm like, I'm not involved. With this, <laughs> it was so. Patrice was was one taken far too soon. He would be making hilarious shit tonight. How Actually, he would have been can. He would have been. Uh, Patrice would have been killed a million percent, or not killed, canceled a million percent by now. But uh, would he though? Oh, I, for sure. He said wild. I, I've just listened. Wouldn't to agree to being canceled. No, that that's not how it works. If someone takes away your access to YouTube, Twitter, hey, PayPal, Stripe, website. Facebook, so like, so like, what? Like, this is a good example. Like, you you can't just choose to not be canceled. Let's say 2012, you're in the 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 heat of your uploading and you're making your money. YouTube deletes your account. Instagram won't let you post there. Facebook deletes your account. PayPal no lo no longer allows you to access those payment methods. At, that happens 2012. You're not a millionaire today in the way you are. Having a Keemstar like. 12 times and he's still a millionaire no he's still on twitter 
He has he has uh, YouTube content. I, he actually still had Twitter, but he had to restart his YouTube channel. I I said twelve times. I'm probably exaggerating, but I bet it's six. Maybe, but like the the whole like you have to agree yeah. to be canceled. That's like no, not at all. If I you are an, if you are if you are an I, online I personality, well, hold on, let me let me get like if you are an online personality and your entire livelihood depends on using YouTube, Facebook, Google, Instagram, Twitter, all of those things in order to build an audience, and all of those things remove your ability to be on those platforms. And then if something like PayPal comes in and says you can no longer use our platform, like you're all but done. Like you're fucked. I think you're right. I, there was a time when I felt like what I said was right. Like Donald Trump mm-hmm. just didn't agree to be canceled. Now he's off all those platforms. I hear you. Yep. But for a long time, he would just fucking keep going. Um, the, uh, Al Franken did the opposite, right? He's a senator. He got caught practically touching that boob or something on the vest. And, and he quit his job. It's like if you just went the way that so many other the politicians went and just decided not to quit, wait a little bit, then uh, you yeah. would have waited it out. Yeah, wasn't there I a think it's uh, in like Virginia or something who was just yeah. like, come and get me. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, look I at look like, at uh, Justin Trudeau, the governor in Virginia. Like, as long as you are, as long as you have the right positions on everything else, you can skirt by with certain things. But if like, uh, I don't know if uh, who, who's like a big Republican senator right now. I don't even Mitch don't McConnell. Know. Mitch McConnell. If, if it came out that Mitch McConnell wore blackface. Like that would be a way bigger deal, and it would, would be it? hammered on more than if the Virginia guy did. Of course, of course. What, what, would he step down? Do you think his constituents? No, of course not. Mitch McConnell is a piece of, piece of shit. He wouldn't step down. Wow. Wow. At least yeah, he he would do what I think what he was alluding to, and there is a difference between being an individual citizen yeah, being canceled. About, um, well, well, hold on, real quick, Kyle. Like, there isn't a difference between being an independent citizen being canceled by big tech versus being a political citizen a a senator who can effectively just wait until the 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 noise dies down because a sitting senator unless they're saying like shit that is truly anti status quo like trump was doing for a while like they're not going to get removed they're going to be fine on all the major platforms like they'll be okay they just have to get through the media blowback whereas an individual talking about politics any any number of those services can shut them down there's a thing happening in politics now that's sort of related so Madison Cawthorn is a member of the House of Representatives. That's the federal one. I know you know, but that's the federal one where there's 435 of them, etc. All right. He's from North Carolina. He's the dude in a wheelchair. He's good looking. Oh, I know him. yeah. yeah. Okay. And uh, he is a real, he's like the next gen Trump, right? You know, he's always talking about the insurrection, those heroes, the wheelchair. Is that what you're in a wheelchair? Yeah, he is. He's the next gen Trump's in a wheelchair. Yes. Cool. And um, uh, he's he's he partners up with Marjorie Taylor Greene. He went on this like tour with her pretty much. She's great. And he just hands out red meat to the kind of people who like to hear that the election was stolen, that the oh. people who took over the um, Congress were heroes and that we need to leave them alone. And shit like that. Th- okay. This guy's only 26. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Holy 26. Shit. No college. Um really no life experience before was he job. was he paralyzed from like a military thing no um he got into a car accident i think it involved drinking but i'm not positive about that was he doing he the said drinking? he said that his friend abandoned him and he had to self rescue from a burning vehicle and his friend is like what the fuck i saved your life why are you talking about me like oh, wow. this wow and he's like, all right, well, okay, actually, that is the truth. <laughs> well, oh, like, shit. <laughs> well what, what an asshole to his, fri- his yes. friend. Yeah, yeah. All right. So anyway, the, uh, he, there are people that don't want him to run again. And there's redistricting happening anyway, having to do with the uh, census. Um, I think North Carolina might be gaining a seat. So they're, they're redoing the lines. And they're trying to get rid of his district. So he needs to go somewhere else. Well, he's going to do that. So now he's going to win probably in this red area of, of yeah. purple state, I guess. But it's a really red area, so he's going to win. And they're trying to prevent him from running by saying he violated the, I think, 14th Amendment, which basically says that, like, if you've ever been an enemy of America, if you've tried to start a civil war, <laughs> then you can't, uh, so you can't run. Okay, Wait. okay. So when I first heard it, I'm like, 
and they they want to use the same rule against Trump. I'm like, maybe they're onto something because he, if you hear what he says, to my ears, he sounds guilty of this. Like he's legitimately saying we should take over America, we should fight, we should, you know, he, he rallies people against his fellow House of Rep and senators, and like with violent talk, like he's he's the what does he say word. that's that's violent. I want to get the quotes right. I don't want to misquote him, but he'll definitely say shit like, you know, involving fire and burning shit down and the buildings. And it, like, it's pretty irresponsible for someone in his position. And uh, at first I heard it. I was like, yeah, they should stop him from running. He's really using his platform. He can't run. <laughs> to be <laughs> Well played for, for civil war. But then I heard another guy, a reporter who was like, you know, you don't, take away a person's right to vote lightly. This is the will of the people we're talking about here. And it's like, ah, strong point, strong point. You know, if, if, if the people in that area want him to be their representative, then I guess they should be able to have him. Well, not, not I guess they should. If that's who they really want, up to us, is it? Then, then it shouldn't be up to us. And so little like meandering, like, well, you shouldn't be able to run. Yeah, I don't like that. It doesn't sound yeah. like I agree with this guy. He sounds like a pretty cool guy. He's, but I, I, I'm on his Wikipedia page right now. This uh-huh. this guy is like an, a very attractive man. Yeah. Like he's got. Well, Link, I, I, is, is that your first? I, I'm shocked that that's your take. Like, I got to say that this, this pretty man that you're. Oh, he's attractive. This undeniably. Here, and, here, and there's a photo. Look at this guy. Uh. <laughs> Captain America over here. He looks like he, he's yeah. He's the strong <laughs> jaw, the blue eyes, the the nice they hair. That, they made that psycho in a fucking lab somewhere. That's a Can fucking Nazi some... plant. It's a fucking Nazi plant. Is Can that Tom Brady? Can, yeah, he looks like Tom Brady. He, he looks a, like a more hunky Tom Brady. <laughs> I don't he, think he's. That looks like a military that, uniform. That's he's, actually a good comparison. That's like buddy. a hunting Tom, Tom, Tom Brady. Especially in this picture, you can you can see it. That's a good comparison. I'll say Dude. this though: bitch he, skips leg day. <laughs> <laughs> he tells the story of how he was going to go to the naval academy, but he had this horrific accident as an anchor. Denied. The thing is. <laughs> He got rejected from the Naval Academy before he got hurt, but he tells us he just changes the order. It's like, I, I wanted to go to the Naval Academy and I okay. got hurt. Uh, and it allows go you to draw that back. connection. He, Woody, he was gonna go so, back. so he's doing something that no politician has ever done before. They're trying to take credit for things they haven't done. <laughs> curious, uh, curious. He calls the rioters on January 6th political prisoners and says, he warns of bloodshed. Warns you know, of bloodshed you know, I, about what? Is that a red, white, and blue wheelchair? If our elections continue to be rigged and continue to be stolen, blue. then it's going to lead to one place, and that's bloodshed. I'll tell you, as much as I'm willing to defend liberty at all costs, there's nothing I would dread doing more than to pick up arms against fellow Americans. You, you know what's really easy to do? is to talk big about that when you're already in a wheelchair. <laughs> because yeah. like, like he's not, in his imagined reality... He's not the guy wheeling on the front lines. Right. Like he's the guy in the back, like, hey, yeah. Like, like, like <laughs> they that, should come absurd. to him, like, sir, we built you this battle chair so you can lead us tomorrow at the Capitol. Uh, oh, oh no. <laughs> I'm, we're going to go for it. We're going to take everything. So you but, have I have, but I have <laughs> diarrhea, so I will be staying home. If anyone approaches you from the side, sir, these blades will just <laughs> chop them in half, and then you've got rockets up here. No, no, none of this. Dude, if, if this guy if this guy could walk, he would be tearing it up for sure. Like, I bet he'd be way more popular if he could walk. Maybe. So I'm from North Carolina. He dominates my... Um, vision i don't know how to say it better like he's huge in my universe yeah but maybe yeah, it's he, he's, I'm he's nothing in my universe yeah. how far away or do you think we are from some sort of mech suit that would allow him to not only walk among us but indeed to overpower us at will hopefully not too close because like he's a very a good issue we guy. can do that why no that, you what? you strap him in a mech suit like He's the best looking man in America, and now he has robot legs, and he's too and, powerful. And look, when to I stop. say mech suit, I'm not even like talking about something that's like 
like crazy. Like, like remember um, Edge of no, Tomorrow? No, like a reasonable that, mech suit. A reasonable mech suit. <laughs> Edge of Tomorrow, that was reasonable. Like a, kind, of a, kind of a business cash. <laughs> so I don't mean it like a crazy mech suit, but you know when Spider-Man says instant kill and all the legs come out? <laughs> and then just tapping everyone. That was awesome. He said instant kill. Yeah, yeah. I love that part. Those movies are good. Um, no, 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 no. Like, like oh, God damn it, I lost my train of thought. A crazy mech suit for Madison Cawthorn. But not oh no crazy. no from the Tom crazy. Cruise movie where the yeah, where he yeah. fought the aliens that like a mech suit like that look why don't we have like something basic so he can just kind of walk around like even if he's kind of like don 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 well because his because like it's not like he still has movement like you can't you could strap blade legs on him and that like, might look neat but he can't use them no 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 like like look, like, at, how, like, look at how little his fucking crippled legs are man well no no he's, he you actuate them with other muscles like like whatever he does have access yeah, to. i feel like he should be operating a joystick that works his legs and as a gamer you know how fucking good you can get at something when you put enough effort into it a guitar hero shouldn't be possible but those people do it i mean if, if, he can work. He can fucking get legs to go. Probably dude needs a fucking mech suit. Is all I'm saying. It'd be sick. And at the very least, y'all He'd be remember president that. with a mech suit. If, if we if we give Madison Cawthorn a mech suit, got... he's going to be too powerful to stop. I choose to believe that he's taller than his competitor. <laughs> just, wait, just oh. Just choose a oh, mech suit. oh, oh, wait, I, I, wait, I, 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 I bet this dude was like six four before, like like rise up above him <laughs> in the suit. Yeah. Oh yeah, how long? How how long is he? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's bad. How, that's that's so ableist. No, first of all, two gay points for you using the term ableist. Two, Kyle, <laughs> great joke. <laughs> how, like he's a fish. They put him on top of a cooler. <laughs> See how long he is. Uh. Sorry, Madison. Don't when you get your mech legs, don't take vengeance on us. <laughs> Fuck it. His Wikipedia yeah. page doesn't list his height. We're fucking allies, brother. <laughs> oh no. Ooh, ooh, ooh. This he's five. Says it. Wait, no, five six sitting down. How big was this dude? <laughs> Holy hundred, shit! <laughs> this five is... foot six. No, sitting down. That can't be true. Because look at his legs. He doesn't look like a little person in that in that seat. I bet he was 5'6". For all we know, that wheelchair has done him a favor. Edison it's Cawthorn. removed his height disadvantage. Pre-accident. Let's see. What do we have here? This guy is stupidly good looking. He's worth $18 million. I'd still prefer to walk. How did he become? How did he, how did he make his fortune? I don't know. I choose to believe it was the settlement. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. This guy, this guy is not five six. This guy's way taller than that. You think? Like, I'm looking at photos of him, like, using his arms to, like, stand up on those, like, standing things, and he's bigger than the people around him. Let me try and find a better one. I would but, at least want some sort of, like, puppeteering sort of thing going on, like a marionette. I'd want. I just want to be upright. I don't want to be in that chair all the time. Give me up. Give me standing up some. This site being, says he's five seven. Yeah, that's when he sits down. And it says his net worth is one and a half million. That's pretty off. Yeah, that's not even what that other website says. Sounds like <laughs> some fucking liberal propaganda to me. Yeah, it's, it's, it sounds to me like the internet doesn't have their shit together. One site says eighteen million. The other site says one. That's a pretty. Ask big those spread. commies how much money he has in rubles. I don't know how many. How many rubles do you need to be oh, rich? It'd be like ten percent, I think, something like that. If Tarkov's any any measure, uh, yeah, I'm sure Tarkov keeps just in line with the ruble to dollar. They, they, I think they do. They use. Uh, I don't know. They, if used, they, still they used to do. keep the Bitcoin like like uh, along with the market, and it was like it was pretty interesting. They used to keep the weather along with Moscow. Yeah, and then it rained in Moscow for like two fucking months, and <laughs> I wanted to quit the goddamn game. Oh, did you play at that time? Yes, I remember like like weeks of rain. It was it horrific. Must, and rain in that game is started. punishing. It's like in your headset, it's just it's rain pouring noises, like like the white noise that puts you to sleep. I like I that think noise. You played Tarkov about three months, maybe before I played the first time. Possible. Yeah, it must have been in that gap. Because to me, I only heard the stories of it like raining for weeks, and it's not rain is an interesting change of pace for non-players in the game. 
but an hour later you're done with the rain in your ears and you can't hear footsteps properly you can't see very far it sucks yeah it's it's not a fun way to play the game i've been i've been having a great time on the game um just having so much fun it's been it's a really good wipe the changes they made are excellent voip makes for such a cool experience the interact every game you have interactions with other people and they're always different sometimes i show mercy sometimes i negotiate sometimes i lie sometimes i tell the truth it's uh it's it's always different and it it's just hilarious results people will just believe you they just believe you when you tell them a thing it, like if you just say with 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 no bitch in your voice yeah come out i won't shoot they'll come right the fuck out they'll just walk right up to you and of <laughs> and course give you your things give of you... course i'll shoot i've got that's <laughs> what, what's what i'm fucking here for i spent 30 minutes figuring out what kind of gun to bring here to shoot you and you think <laughs> i won't shoot you <laughs> <laughs> We were I got talking the special bullets in it. Like, what are you talking about? I, I crafted these myself. So I'm it, not it, gonna shoot you. It's not Tarkov, but we we were talking about Madison Cawthorn being potentially the best looking in the face, in the face region, you know, for, for guys in, in Congress. I can't think this of a guy, guy or girl who rivals him. Do you have one? No, no, I I think he's probably the best looking person in that in that area. I was also I was looking for the ugliest. Do you know who Jerry Nadler is? Gets a picture. I know the name. I'm gonna look him up. Yeah, I'm gonna he, recognize. Oh, him. He's, uh, he's the Hands free. He's the representative from New York, and he is five three and bulbous. <laughs> he is a, a bulbous, bulbous man. Geez. He he pulls his pants up liberally. Oh my goodness. Yeah, you look like Dude, I've king. seen Jerry Nadler a lot. Looking at him right there. I mean, he's not fit, but you don't know what he's packing. That's his best angle, eh? That's oh my his God. absolute best can angle. Can I ask you this real quick? Why does why does he look fake? Like he looks like a cardboard cutout of a human being. <laughs> you, know, you know what? You know what he looks like is one of the banker goblins from Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> a bit. Take an image of this guy before Zach goes over to. All right, oh, and Zach's gonna, gonna pop money, over. Boy. To, Kyle, you don't know what this guy looks like. You, Rotom. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Bulbous. He is a round Please man. Oh, he's he's bulbous. He needs some, look at that. Look at that belt. He, his face says size Zach, Zach, 38. Put, Zach, put the one I just put 50. out there up. Okay. You will... Th this this is Gerald Nadler. Yeah, see. <laughs> He's five foot two. Look, and look at his pants. And look at his shoes when the picture comes up. Look at how much height Whoa! he's trying to add from shoes. <laughs> look at those shoes. He looks like an Oompa Loompa. Oompa Loompa. I have Oompa. weightlifting shoes. If people aren't familiar with weightlifting shoes, they're unique in that um, the soles are really hard. They're They're almost wooden. And when you walk in them, you're so stable. Anything else feels like walking in marshmallows. Also, the soles is, are, are kind of wedges in, in my weightlifting shoes. And I, I guess people with mobility or something, they squat better when their heels are a little higher. Some people like to step on weights. I have these shoes. In these shoes, I am Colin's height. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like Kim Jong-un in my weightlifting shoes. I, I step things up a notch. You remember? Mm. I, I got these uh, these shoes. Now, the front of them is kind of this round pedestal, and, and so your heel never touches the ground, and they're kind of weighted. So you walk around all day in these things, and it's, it's a calf workout. You're, you're oh, vertical. I've, I've heard of those. Yeah. Uh, this guy named Jimmy. Yeah, he turned me on to him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jimmy, <laughs> Jimmy scams, right? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> it's Seinfeld episode. Remember Jimmy with the shoes? The, the George. Yeah. <laughs> the, the George, Jimmy likes his shoes. Jimmy helps. Jimmy, Jimmy likes his shoes. Jimmy's, his shoes help Jimmy jump real high. Jimmy's glad that Alex found someone. Jimmy isn't intimidated by Alex's choice. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and now we're just making jokes to each other for nine people who've watched yeah. Seinfeld in the audience. Look, if they haven't watched Seinfeld, then they're classless savages who have no taste anyway, and they shouldn't be here. Yeah, if you don't think Seinfeld is funny, it's on Netflix, then, boys. Then you're you a doing? silly bitch. Because it is hilarious. Get a little bit of culture. Like I'm not trying to t make you go watch Cheers. This isn't about fucking nostalgia. Cheers was good. Where everybody I knows your name. Cheers, Cheers had a good song. And they're yeah. always glad Cheers. Cheers might have had the best song for like that genre, like that sitcoms. 
Like I, I really like the Cheers song. I watched like the first season and realized early into Cheers, like I'm just too young to get a lot of their jokes, so I stopped. But um, I wonder if the Cheers song was ever popular because the Friends song legitimately topped the charts for a while. The Friends song fucking sucks. No one I knew you'd hate it, but I liked it. Be this oh, way. Cha 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 cha. It's the it's the it's the clapping I don't like. Love laughs we all wait. Yeah, I don't like the clapping. It's like I, you're always stuck in second gear. I know the song. Don't full screen Kyle the singing. Off with the singing. No, Kyle, come on, come on. When you're dead. <laughs> when you're near, I'll be there for you. <laughs> no, and now I'm blacked out on here, apparently. <laughs> um. Yeah. Oh, I like songs that cheer me up, and that that for a time that song did it well. You know what I always liked, and it's not as big of a sitcom, but the nanny. The nanny had a good uh, like 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 jingle to the beginning. Of, she was working in a bridal shop in Flushing, Queens, till her boss threw her out in one of those crushing scenes. Where was she to go? Where was she to do? She was out on her fanny. Oh, I've, never, I've, I've, voice, I've never even heard of this. Yes, show. Mr. Sheffield. Look, oh, I know you hate things the whole like that. Song around that, they based the whole show around her dumb voice. Yes, they did, and and there's a really good episode where she um. She's at a Japanese place uh, getting sushi, and she's never had sushi before. And 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 she's like, "What's what's this?" And he's like, "That's wasabi, nanny. Fine." And you put it on the fish. She's like, "Oh," and she just takes the whole glob of it and puts it in her mouth, and it like knocks her out. She's like crawling on the floor, very dramatic. She gets up and she goes, "Oh, well, that was an interesting flavor." I feel. Wow, I feel so I don't feel congested anymore. Like she like <laughs> drops the whole accent and she's got a beautiful voice. Like like it, it and you're mm. just like, what, what, what? And the, the other lady's like, what did you say? She says, Oh, I was saying, oh, oh. And she's like right back to the character again, right back into the voice. I mean, we saw that with <laughs> Cool Urkel first. Yes. Do you remember what Cool Urkel's name was? Oh all right, hang fuck. on. Let me just say this thing. This will help you. This will help you. So the Urkel's name is Stephen Urkel. <laughs> Ur- the cool Urkel's name Steve? is. No, nope. wait! Don't, don't say it yet. Fuck! I'm fuck, not gonna. You'll fuck. get there. You'll get. I watched so much Family Matters. I should know this. The real name. No, don't look it up, Woody. We have, we have to figure it out. I'm not going to. I'm not looking at the bottom right of the screen. I'm trying to think of this shit. Do that done. All right. I, I see I, the answer. I would have never. What was Stephen it. Urkel's alter ego? I don't remember. Stefan. Ah, fuck. Stefan. It yeah, was... I don't know how to pronounce the second name. I'm going to paste it for you. I'm not sure it's straight up Urkel. Stefan. It was a. Uh... Urquell? No, no. It was oh, supposed to be a, a fancier name of Urkel. Like instead of. E- I think that's just how you spell it. I think it's like with a K. I didn't know. Oh, I thought it, that it, that was like a joke with him. Name. No, so this is how you spell Urkel. I'm, I googled it. I don't know how, how anybody would know how you spell Steve Urkel. Steve Quincy Urkel, U R K E L. But it was pronounced. He, he was like, "Oh, now I'm Stefan." So uh, this is the Family I, Matters. This is look, 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 There's there's no reason for a Family Matters deep cut right now. Anyway, I'm trying to, <laughs> to, watch, to watch Seinfeld, I, and I was just pointing. No, out that, there is a reason I'm because I got to correct you, Woody. Cheers. I am I'm on the Family Matters. Family Wiki. Matters. And his last name is U R K E L, unless he is Stefan, which is U R Q U E L. That's agreeing with me. Oh, I thought you said it was Urquell the whole time. Who no, that wasn't there? what I was going for. Oh, I was, okay. I was, I just wasn't sure how to pronounce Urquell. I'm sorry, I'm passionate about this. <laughs> <laughs> we need to. I, I thought in like the mid 90s or late <laughs> Kyle, 90s when I was one of the different topics he wants to seven, he wants eight. to pitch that bullshit comedy that, that <laughs> that's over that had bad writing but it had good acting I, I thought that Steve Urkel was the funniest character on TV other than Will Smith that's in the in the mid 90s it's because I was a stupid child when it no, came I, 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 I was like, like eight years old like yeah this guy's tight. <laughs> black, like, like, like it seemed like all of the comedies that that I liked as a kid were black people. Like I watched the Martin Lawrence show. I watched. Um, I actually watched the Queen Latifah show for some reason. I don't know why. I watched I was, that. Never yeah, saw that. it was not great. I mean, it was just Queen Latifah and her. But I mean, Family Matters, about. right? Family Matters and um, Martin and, and Martin. Yeah. Um, Fresh Prince. That was Cosby show. Yeah, yeah, I pretty much. I never watched watching... Cosby. I've never no, I watched the Cosby show. show. Like I, 
I guess, yeah, I guess I was mostly watching black sit- sitcoms. Yeah, yeah. Because the only think- white one I can remember is uh, uh, Full House, because I didn't watch Seinfeld until the series was over and I was in like middle school. I, I was watching when, I'm almost positive I was watching when the Shrinkage episode aired. That's when I started watching. Oh, okay. So, like, so whatever that was, maybe 90s. Late 90s, yeah. Yeah, some point, somewhere in there. I remember, I, I definitely watched that episode on television back then, whether it was airing then or it was a rerun. I thought it was airing then, though. Uh, I was getting into it um, at the time. And Woody, you didn't watch Seinfeld as it came out. I did. You did? Yeah, I watched Seinfeld. But I never liked Friends. Um, you know, like growing up, like, Kids won't understand this, but there was only one screen in the household, and you didn't get to decide what was on it. But, <laughs> so I ended up watching a lot of fucking Friends. You know, Mom would watch Friends, and I'm Friends sitting, suck. There like, sitting there like, this shit is not funny. It is not funny. And by the way, Rachel would have so many fucking STDs by this point with all the fucking hot loads she's getting rammed into her cunt. We don't on know the if she used condoms she, or not. They talked about condoms. Like, 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 oh. Oh, actually, so so I, I mean, sometimes she did, sometimes she didn't. All I know is that Rachel was a dirty whore, and so was Monica. She was. She's got a yeah. fucking both of them like petri dish pussies. Oh, and, and Ross, and, 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 really and their, their husbands have been friends with them for the entire in, entirety of their whorish ways. Like, like I think most guys like settle down. Like, like maybe if you're getting married and you're like. How old were they at that point? Like, and they're in their like late thirties or whatever. Yeah, like you're getting married in your late thirties to someone who's your age. You, you're like, oh, she's probably had a few other lovers, but like they were there the whole time. They like, they like, yeah, I remember when Tom Selleck was fucking you. That was a fun time, huh? <laughs> Rachel, why are you getting fucked by all these guys? <laughs> How many guys do you think Rachel slept with? Probably uh, six. In the show, my guesstimate would be thirteen. Taylor, I don't know, a lot. Uh, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say hi. I'm gonna say twenty. It's nineteen. I, when you guys were talking about her, like really fucking her, I, I thought you imagined a higher number. How many episodes do we have a, a year? You know, and, and like like because it's yeah. the kind of show where like she would date someone for like many episodes in a row. Like having nineteen is a huge number. Hmm. Although, like Jerry, like how many? Like it was almost part of the the funny of Seinfeld that every episode he had a new like beautiful woman to like find a flaw in. So, I don't like, think that it was implied he slept with every one of them either. I, yeah, not uh, not the joke was that he didn't, you know, with the Virgin, yeah. for example, that JFK scooped up from under. Yeah, him. I mean, like, there's the Virgin one, there's the masseuse, where, the like, masseuse. The, the masseuse keeps wanting to fuck, and he's like, if you could just, you know, I got a lot of tension. He's, like, grabbing <laughs> her arms to put them on his shoulders. He, I don't think he Honestly, ended up fucking her. You know, a tons in, in real life... Lots and lots of guys want a wife that can cook. That's like a common thing, right? Definitely. Yeah. I feel like masseuse is undervalued. Like if you could get a, I feel like it'd be a legitimate quality of life upgrade. What is the take- best? Prof- All right. So without like going to something that involves lots of money, like uh, money aside, okay. uh, income aside, what is the best profession for your significant other to have because of the perks that would come along with it mm, or the services that you're that, that she could provide to you perks and services prostitute well you've already probably wh- wait no bad, bad is answer. that not allowed bad answer all no. right i feel like you are possible. every wife has that service <laughs> i didn't I, there, there was no way to fail but you <laughs> you really right, your way to fail she could have been a cook. Uh, she could have. She she could have been a masseuse. Could have been anything. Yeah, right. We could even How, make a I, joke answer. Right. You can't even hit it back. What I'm, well, that's all I'm saying. All right, all right. I don't know my answer, but Kyle's his attorney. <laughs> um. <laughs> Uh, fucking doctor, doctor, doctor is what was in my head too. I was afraid it wasn't. Fun. It just seems like a really handy life skill. Do you know how yeah. often I get injured? My shoulder hurts right now. I'm lifting light. I need to. Need- well, it depends on the kind of doctor then, because like dermatologist would do you no good. See, I was gonna say lawyer. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. You Imagine win. that, like, like, like Kyle would have saved six digits easily. Yeah. But 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 moreover, like imagine how often you have like a little thing 
that you would love to have like a oh, yeah. lawyer take a look every at, time your you contractor like misses his date or like remember when yeah. we did our house he'd actually my brother came in big you know what would happen is he'd like talk about a thing right like yeah you know what like we should that banister should be this and then i get a bill for like thirteen thousand dollars and i'm like we didn't agree to that we didn't, i would have said no like it yeah I, th- this looks nice, but it doesn't look like um, it was not what I would have. I, by the way, I talked him down to eight hundred. Yeah, they they see your but house and they're trying to take you. You talked him from eight, from thirteen thousand to eight hundred. Yes. Do you it, my it, brother it, helped me. He was <laughs> like, "What you have is called an unauthorized change order." He's like, "You didn't agree to that. There's no contract. There's no invoice." He just went in there and started doing work without authorization, and now he wants to bill you for it. And. Uh, when I used that exact term, I was like, this is an unauthorized change order. We don't have any agreement to do this. Is, yeah. is your brother an attorney? He's an electrician. Oh, so, so he would no, know. No, but that. he stayed at a Holiday Inn Express last night. <laughs> <laughs> well, as an electrician, he would know. Like, You have to get your, um, <laughs> your upgrades and whatnot agreed to and signed off on. <laughs> <laughs> that, um, kid, that hit like, me offside. That was a good show. Like, <laughs> there's so many times though that like like maybe a contract or just like like a, a, a minor annoyance with someone where like um I listen to Clark, you ever listen to Clark Howard or do you know who he is? Yeah, yeah. Finance um, guy on radio. Clark How- yeah, always amazing advice on like everything. He's he's he's, he's a good study, so he knows what is his stuff. But he talks about the lawyer letter. He's like he, he's got that voice. It's a little annoying, but he's he's like anytime you've got a problem. Good worded lawyer letter solves it 75 80 percent of the time. It's just a, a well worded letter with a legal stamp on the top and the bottom, and it says, Hey, we don't like what you're doing, you need to stop it now. And most people are terrified when they get something like that, when they get a thing from the off from the from the law offices of Cliff Hutchinson, the law yeah. dog, and it says cease and desist immediately. Or, mm-hmm. or consequences, consequences will be coming forth with. You're like, fuck. Fuck. Do I need to call an attorney? I don't even know one. Do Is I have he, an attorney? Have you had many lawyer letters, Kyle? Do you get those? I've never received one, but I've sent some. I've received like three. I wipe my ass with lawyer letters. I don't give a That's flying That's because you're a fuck. white man who has monies. <laughs> Last one. I, I, did, I got a lawyer letter because I repaired my paramotor and made a video about it. And he didn't like the way it was like going down. And I'm like, dude, you're about to launch a fucking video series on me getting sued for telling people what my experience with this motor is really like. And I'm like, I, your best move right now is to just not. (laughs) (laughs) They don't get it. You're like, you're like, let me explain what the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to come to your house. And I'm, I'm going, going to make you. a video called I'm being sued because I made a video about this. About this. Now people will actually care other than the 3,000 people. The 3,000 people have seen about it. Oh, add some zeros. This That's is going to be nothing. fun. Yeah. No one gave a shit about my like fucking piston seizing or something. Now... Now it's about the oh you know what you stuff at court fucking in your suit you're like all right we're going into court guys let's, <laughs> let's, get, let's get this trending on Twitter hashtag oh yeah it would be like uh, para, para like, I, uh, I understand Mr. Joe Johnson that you're an attorney but how would you feel if hypothetically anybody typed in Joe Johnson all that came up with child pornography you know <laughs> something out, outrageous that could happen <laughs> those, uh, that, that, those reviews that that y'all left on that 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 motorcycle place apparently got so big that like google congratulated me on like my post being so well said. <laughs> <laughs> i got like an email from like google like congratulations on a really popular review you're in the 0.001 percentile of like reviews Whatever you said, people are responding to it. And your in your review is like, you're gay. Give me my money back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was yeah. It, they were doing you dirty. Yeah, you it were. was so funny when that guy called me. That was that was really funny. I was I'm literally like sweaty with my new motorcycle gear on. Just rode my new motorcycle, and he's like, "We'd love to get you in and try to earn your business back." And I'm just like. I'm literally on my new motorcycle. <laughs> like, like you yeah. lost me. Yeah, and, and fair and square. They got first shot at you, and they tried to fuck you. 
yeah, I don't know why that guy was such a jerk, but uh, it worked out real well. Thanks. Have to you written that. lately? Not since it gotten cold recently. Like I, I said it the other night, that I was, it got warm. I wrote today it was sixty eight. Today, as I was gonna say, like today, I, I was like, I walked outside like big coat on because it's been cold, and I was like, fuck, it's fucking. Oh no! And I remembered I had to do this, but I was going to. Oh. I might ride tonight. I bet it's still good. Like, like I think. Um, let me see what temperature it is right now. I have a motorcycle hoodie, so it, it, dude, it looks like a hoodie. It really looks like a, any other hoodie you would own. But if you went up and like touched my elbows, you'd feel the pads, and it's also made of a material that um, could slide across the asphalt. But it looks normal. Yeah, and uh, it was warm enough for that today, and I was really grateful instead of my astronaut clothing. It's mid forties here. I'm good. I think I, I think I will go for a ride. It's not exactly the sixties that I was hoping for, but FYI, um, tomorrow's beautiful. Maybe I'll wait till tomorrow. I don't know. Yeah. I, I really like riding at night. Um, for the I same reason, summer. I feel safe playing Tarkov at night. You know, like like all the players feel, are gone. Uh, no, not that. Like like. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> we get some juiced raids at night. Like like it, it's pretty crazy. Um, although we do go to dorms, it doesn't matter. Um, I like I like riding at night because if you don't see a light, there's nobody there, right? And you can see lights around corners and stuff. Like like if someone. It, you get a lot of extra warning. The only oh. problem, obviously, is critters and, yeah. and stuff. There's um, a critter, per- and perhaps road hazards. Uh, I'm talking about potholes. Yeah, not not and... particularly where where I'm going because I I do a route that I I kind of do the same route over and over. Like it doesn't like, accumulate. Yeah. yeah, but no, I, I I've been I've been digging the motorcycle. I uh, I still haven't got my garage door open, so every time I go to ride it, I have to do my uh, my little squat exercise out there. It's, uh, <laughs> my sleep schedule is bad, so like I know that when I schedule it, I'll have to be able to get up early in the morning and be prepared. And I don't want to be an adult as much as I want to like be able to play Tarkov whenever I want. So I tried to replace the chain and sprocket on one of my motorcycles today, and uh, it turns out that when you replace the rear sprocket, you're supposed to replace the nuts and bolts that hold it on. Okay. I didn't know that, so I have to order them. They'll come huh. tomorrow. Wonder why it matters. I don't know, but I can tell you they were um they're like aluminum and they were aluminum doesn't rust rust, but it kind of corroded together. Mm. And uh some of them I I had to damage them to like get them off. I use vice grips and stuff like that. Oh, you need some more anyway. Yeah. Yeah. And like maybe it's normal to not get them off that successfully, but I couldn't. Yeah. I told you my friends got that Harley. That that motorcycle's really cool. Is uh, it the one with the new engine, the Sportster? I think yeah. you might have said that. The yeah. Brand new one. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, That's a really cool motorcycle. I haven't seen it in real life. I have ridden that engine on the Pan America and I loved it. Yeah. So I I would only like it more on a lighter bike, I'm sure. My uh my neighbor's bike got repossessed, I think, today. I like, watched it happen out the window. Ooh. I had no idea. He's got the same fucking bike. He's got the same fucking bike. Maybe not a anymore. year old. Um, <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> no, 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 you don't, you don't look I, but, but you gotta imagine, like I looked out, like like I came home and there's a, a truck, like a, a like a, a rollback or whatever, with a red fucking Honda crotch rocket wheeled up on it, and I'm just. I like, love that you don't know what bike you have. <laughs> what did I say? You just said a red crotch rocket, but I think you don't know the like CB oh, six fifty R or whatever it is. It's fair. What, what's it? What 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 is the classification of my motorcycle? It's a naked it's a, street bike. Uh yeah. Is that what I'm, what I'm supposed to say? Anyway, my bike's on a rollback, like like being wheeled out of the neighborhood essentially, and I was just like, what? But 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 but. And then I noticed <laughs> it had like. Oh, you uh, did finance it, didn't you? And part of it was to improve, like it was a little yeah, credit score yeah. fix up. Yeah, yeah. But. There'd be no reason for him to be taking it away anyway, right? <laughs> like, like so there's like big like lipstick kiss lips on on this person's bike though, and I'm, so I'm just like. But when I got home, I was still just like, "All right, all right." They didn't steal my still money. Still there, so making sure. But but for a minute, I was like, "Do I do I say something or do I get?" But what what if I get home and like like <laughs> like my bike's gone, but but now they're gone. They've like escaped. I'm a... <laughs> Have you started it lately? Has it been over a month? No, it has been over a month. It's maybe oh, okay. a week. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, I no, I done I, my archery all winter. All, I went to it was Mexico, fun. and when I came back, one of my bikes wouldn't start right because mm. it was like I'm, I read the other one, and there must have been like I didn't. I waited a week after I came back, and I hadn't ridden it a week before. It was two weeks. It was like a month, and it didn't start. So that's 
thought maybe yours. Yeah. yeah let's make sure it runs. But you're Well, fine. you want to wrap it up there? I think it's time. Well, thanks to our guest. Uh, we appreciate you not showing up. I think. <laughs> Thanks, okay. Dick. It wasn't. No, Dick. no, it wasn't Dick. I was saying thanks, Dick. Oh, Dick yeah, is in being okay. mean. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Okay. Thanks, Dickhead. That's just you it. can guess who it was. If you can guess who it was, then you can click the lock and load link below. Enter code PKA twenty percent off just for you. <laughs> I think um, we might have said who it was on PKN. Uh, I I doubt it. Oh, I don't know. Okay. Let me remember it wrong. Anyway, PKA 582 with nobody.